V-E. The lag for a about second there, and I was like, today. don't you fuck up now. Yeah, the computer's like, turns out none of this mattered. <laughs> no. But it must matter. It simply must. We got how many? We we've really taken advantage of this uh, this wonderful work of the the EFAP Halloween skin this year. We've had like six episodes of something. <laughs> or what wow. we will have. We got today next week. I'm a big fan of it. I love it. I love it, it looks too. Good. It looks so good. Looks so ghoul. We'll try and get the uh, the Crimbus one. Yeah, one for, for November. A, a Thanksgiving. The November just one. Just autumn. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's yeah. a do that's a film one? we need to do at some point. That's a real the, thing. the Thanksgiving horror film. I mm. think was it Robert Rodriguez produced it or something. The Killer Turkey or something. I don't know. Sure, why not? And 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 <laughs> uh, I hear it was not cringe. It was it was fun. So you know, fun, we like Whoa. fun, right, guys? Hello. I have fun? been known um, to enjoy fun here and then. Yeah. Yes. I've like the internet that I fun. hate fun. So oh. I've had fun before. Well, if you hate fun, what do you like? Pain. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> Ask them, not me. Misery. Well, while we're uh, setting up and waiting for possibly more people, who could say? Uh, well, how was um, how was how was your darkest dungeon video gone? Do people think oh. you're right, wrong, or somewhere in between? Generally, right, and people are happy. But there's there's more people out there with opinions on randomness that I would consider to be weird than I had maybe expected. <laughs> mm. Yeah. What yeah. like um, so your videos about the I haven't seen it yet. Uh, it's about essentially is randomness good in games or just specifically talking about Darkest Dungeon? Specifically, the way randomness tends to affect us when we are like affected by it or affected negatively by it. We have a tendency to like give up on our own agency to quite a large extent when things don't go our way, as if mm. like the die roll that happened is the only thing that mattered in how our fate turned out despite the fact that we have loads of game actions we can take in these types of games, usually. If the luck doesn't go my way, it's bad. Are you going to do a video responding to Zamola's claims about XCOM? Oh, as if you can remember what my claims on XCOM even are. has claims about XCOM? I didn't even... Oh, I remember those claims. Oh my god, you don't know. I have no idea. I remember I'm these unaware. claims. I, I mean, it's way, the way my brain works. I was playing Battlefield One at the time he made these claims. Yeah, oh you, you ain't, you ain't escaping. Yeah. One of them is airtight, and I'm pretty sure Fringy had to experience that airtight criticism of it's dumb as fuck to have animations where your shotgun goes right up to their head and you miss. Like this. <laughs> uh, I agree. Animation wise, it's dumb. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, excellent. I think the. I think the <laughs> attempts at abstraction are not doing good justice to the fact that what's going on there, like, if you try and see through the abstraction, probably isn't a motionless alien having your shotgun well, it pressed directly of, um, to its temple, you know? It's a hard thing to solve in uh, turn-based games, where you have, like, guy with axe, he's like, do standard attack, he runs up to the enemy, he goes, Hurrah! and just misses, and you're like... Yeah. There's a stand in there. What okay. do you mean you missed? What just <laughs> happened to make you miss? My favorite thing that ever happened uh, in those games is uh, your character's confused, attacks himself, and then misses. That's so funny to me. It's like, oh, I'm, uh, damn, I missed myself. But I guess lucky I missed myself because I was trying to hurt myself because I'm confused. I'm just having fucking... <laughs> what is it? Why have I forgotten his name? Oh my god, the, the dwarf from Third Age flashbacks. Uh, Ad Hod. Ad Hod. Ad Hod fucking hit something, <laughs> god damn it. You just <laughs> miss constantly. <laughs> piece of shit it's, so it's just annoying in games in general <laughs> to miss i would rather that enemies just had more health but i hit them all the time <laughs> than having randomly like whoops sorry your turn didn't do Dude, anything you, you're fighting like that a weasley little I'm weasley like, little goblin you. who can't do anything with one hp and had or just misses a hundred times <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, so it's so funny how much he missed <laughs> This little scrinkly goblin does not <laughs> want to die and so he's just running away constantly yeah He's fighting for his life, yeah. <laughs> Had on eventually I've never, like a um, thing he ever does. Something. It's weird. I I guess it's um it, it's all strange because I'm I've never really had that issue for the most part with like the graphics being used as sort of an abstract representation of what's going on in the game and what the numbers sort of represent. Uh, but I can definitely see how that can be yeah, really frustrating and annoying. Tim based games are the ones that get afforded, I think, a hell of a lot of benefit of that doubt because it's like how how are they supposed to do it it's, otherwise? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the amount of animations that you'd have to use in order to kind of bring things into line with reality would be, or at least the reality of the game, 
Like, you'd have to make separate an attack animations for every unit missing, or that you just do the golden sun thing where the little sprite just kind of whoop, just sort of jumps back just a little bit. So they don't actually mm -hmm. have to like do an entire extra animation, they just kind of mm. move the defender. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know, I, I, I understand why people have that issue. Star Wars I don't really have. Okay. Who's this asshole? Hey. Actually, I don't know. Hello. I don't know. I don't know. How's it going? No. <laughs> oh, it's Dev. Oh my God, Dev. Ew. It's you. It's me. Ew. We're Dev. barely alive. Which means we're, we're only about Star Wars Outlaws. Two members short. One of them is on the way. The other one may actually just be dead. We we can't be sure. So. <laughs> we're two members short. Twenty two minutes late. It's raining, and we're talking about Star Wars Outlaws. Fuck yeah. Hit it. Well, I was about what to say, we actually do need to hit night. it, because this is a 50-minute video, right, folks? We oh, gotta... shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the... Sorry, this is how long? Nothing. 52 oh, and, hard and a half minutes. This video so we'll be called... here for about 12 hours? I didn't say nothing. Yes. Okay, yes. so this Star Wars Outlaws is better than you've been told. Yeah, isn't that an interesting claim? So that's a fucking individual. bold claim, yeah. Well, so what's what's so funny about that as a, as a star is that I would probably go as far as saying it's worse than you've been told. <laughs> like, it's probably, <laughs> yeah. As much as it's well, got a bad IGN rap. Well, I said it was a seven, so that's definitely not true. I mean, for <laughs> those involved in the discussion online or that sort of thing, I think that it's, it's the kind of thing where, it, it, generally speaking, the vibe is not a great game filled with bugs getting fixed and uh you know eh. seems to be in the probably wouldn't recommend it territory while i'm all the way down in like it's a fucking terrible broken game and everyone should get refunded shouldn't have been sold awful so from my point of view it's worse than you've been told but uh, apparently it's better from my point of view outlaws is evil well, you are <laughs> right <laughs> well, then you are correct <laughs> and then it's like oh I'm oh, fighting oh, then. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. It's very aggressive here. <laughs> ah. just, I don't know. It's very angry. Angry the planet. music, you know, Anakin. It's really, really gets me in the mood for a fight, you know. So, you guys want to watch a, a movie film about how we're wrong about Outlaw? A movie? Oh, you're going to make sure that's we're watching a movie. <laughs> the Jedi Council cancelled Star Wars 1313. <laughs> Has been remade. But in something horrible. A Sith horrible. developed 1313, Anakin. I'm sure. This maybe the Sith good. have a few good ideas. No. <gasps> be careful what you say, Anakin. No. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do the Gooba voice of like, maybe the Sith have good ideas, Master. Master. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anakin couldn't. <laughs> Anakin couldn't play Star Wars Outlaws because he'd never be able to find a speeder he liked. No. Yeah. But you know what? You should be thankful you can change its color. That's uh... Sorry, Master. I couldn't find a speeder that I liked. That's, uh... That's all the speed is Anakin. Funny, but... I know, Master. Even... Ryan, other speed is... Anyway, you guys I'm ready? Uh, check out this, this video. So, Wait, what did yeah, he start yeah. off by saying? What were his I don't first know, because whoever pressed mouth? play was a fucking breaking the law. We haven't started yet. Oh well, my if people God. put in their real names, we'd know who to blame. But everyone's like... I, was... X -J I think it was me. It was an accident. Sorry. Whoever, know, whenever it happens and no one makes a claim, it's Dev from now on. That's, how it <laughs> yeah. That's right. I'm kind of so used to that at this point. Good. Dev will be our lightning rod of hate. Normally it's Yay. metal, but now that Dev's here, you're off the hook. For well, not increase right. frame is, like, I, would I don't even know what to do now. Why, why am I here? <laughs> lightning rod. Like he's a lightning rod of like tism. If anything retarded happens, it's usually metal. If anything bad happens, it's Dev. We'll, we'll I don't know which one is yeah. worse. Um, That's usually how it goes. You get, the, you get the clown work. aspect, you know? Just right. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> hey, you're the one who watched Terrifier, okay? Let uh, me let me call Joker. Star. Maybe I can go and lock Ooh. all out now. You made sure to watch Sweet. all the clown movies this year. I did. Oh, God. Video one of them people, was better he, than the others. Yeah, I was about to compliment the man. He put more work into the lighting of him here with the bluish on the left and the reddish on the right than the people who made Star Wars Outlaws cared about the lighting. Yeah, that's definitely praiseworthy, but the, the low-res faceless uh, oh, YouTube yeah. critic staring me down is kind of disconcerting, <laughs> I guess. <Yeah>. You <laughs> will listen. They're like, oh. <laughs> I just don't think it's a good game. I'm not interested in whatever it is you're selling. <laughs> well. I'm trying to sell you Noom. I thought you were going to say nudes. Noom. Yo. <laughs> so. There's too many free nudes on the internet for me to pay for them.
that, there's not much preamble. You guys know if you've watched the prior episode, this this is back in this the second part of our Outlaw arc, I guess. And we're going to talk more about Outlaws being really, really good. So we'll Whoa. check yeah. this video out. And with the subjects okay. he prompts, we'll probably give you some of our insights on it. Because unfortunately, we've played the game. And so yeah. lots of things come out of that. But then we'll also probably talk about the structure of this video and whether or not Hooray! <laughs> motherfucker my is lied or not. Yeah. <laughs> I want my childhood memories back. Yeah, that. Anyway, let's go! Star Wars Outlaws let's can go. be a great game. Oh, that's a cool detail. When? He's the worst of them. But it can also be hilarious. His, so his example for it can be a great game is it's a, a low-res JPEG meme. Oh, it's a meme. Okay. Well, no, I'm that saying shame, that... Because I would have... I would have had like an actual great. Yeah, thing about I'd it. say opening gambit. You probably want to put video. something in there, and there are probably things in isolation you could put in for a few seconds to be like, see, it, it's pretty cool. But um, oh but, no, you said great. Oh yeah, maybe not that. I don't you know. Is, better than pretty is cool. there anything in Star Wars Outlaws you could take out of isolate, or rather, in isolation, and say that is great? I think it's the. The, the wonderful, happy smile on Nyx's face after he watches Nyx get murdered, or after he watches K get murdered for the 17th <laughs> time. You don't even have the layup of, like, graphical fidelity because of the way the game looks really jank with its, like, mocap. Yeah. I, th I think that would be the thing. It would be a landscape shot. That's what people would do. Yeah. Like, see, look how great that is. And you're like, mm. now, here's two <laughs> seconds because we don't want to give you more time to look at the details. Don't look at that tree. And here's the game panning around by itself to take it all in for you instead of letting you do it. Fucking hate that shit. The lean, the sit down where it's lean. just like, look mm -hmm. at the place. Like, I was already looking, but that's fine. Yeah, I was lean looking. Thanks. You saw. Isn't that fun? Do you like it when we look for you? No. You know, as well, Rags, on what you were saying, um, Nick sometimes will like do a little panicky noise when Kay dies, and I did feel inclined whenever that happened when playing to be like, Nick is fine. Like, you'll, you'll be fine. You can, you'll move on. <laughs> you <laughs> deserve better. So you will no. move on. You deserve way better. You'll be fine. Especially if Kay makes a funny sound when she dies. It's like, Nick, celebrate. It's so, it's, she had a golem death. Good stuff. <laughs> she had a golem death. So unmodded. <laughs> Nick celebrates when Kay dies. Like, oh, the demon lady is going to be doing insanely dangerous tasks over and over. <laughs> I don't want to set another grenade about... off in someone's pocket. This has got to be a war crime. This has to be a war crime. I, will... I think the worst part about the whole the whole lean thing is usually when you press the button to lean, it puts your camera in a worse angle, so you can't even yeah. enjoy whatever landscape you're supposed to enjoy. It's, I, like, I, I could have just done this better myself. Yeah, it's fundamentally almost dumb as fuck because like it doesn't give you an angle you couldn't have gotten, so you're just like, oh, this is just worse, because I could have moved. <laughs> but okay. Cool. Um, also, I will say, uh, you know what? Points for uh, style or whatever this is. Putting himself yeah. like yes. this. Points That's for cool. style. Yeah. Seriously bad. Why not just go for a little swim? Oh. There have been tons of Star Wars. You know what's funny about choosing yeah. that as a bad is actually not one of the best things you could have chosen. Because there's plenty of games where you jump in the water and die. It's, yeah, it's, the water it's is just, yeah. Complicated, right? Mm -hmm. Um. This game, what would you guys say? Like, because people had this conversation. Is, is there's some games I think where it feels worse than others because you expect to be able to swim. Some games well, you don't. I think one of the things that makes this one really bad is you just sink down into it's the water and the way yeah. you fall. <laughs> it's very funny. It's not even yeah. like an animation it's un, it's, for it. Yeah, it's unfinished. Like, oh yeah, it's like right falling down. to your death, uh, terrestrially. Yeah. It's just whenever you jump off and you die from falling, there's no, like, animation for it. You just there's sort of, like, like no stop, and there's that split yeah, second the where you didn't the, ragdoll. You know something's wrong, because every if time anything the, happens. anyone does it for the first time, they always laugh. It's like, oh. Something's right. right with <laughs> it's that. like yeah. golem nets. It, it, yeah. it feels like jumping in the water in Sonic 06, where it's just a pit. And you just go, right. oh, I'm done. <laughs> wow. yeah. But the thing is, wow. like, why would you... If there's a planet that's got a whole bunch of space that's water, like, you kind of are obliged to, like, you know, make it react like water yeah. there's too much of it for you to just be like well we didn't have the there wasn't a need to put more effort into integrating like the water and its interactions with the character like well then i don't well, know if they'll me... make a planet full of water well, let me <laughs> give you an it. example <laughs> so an example would be battlefield 2042 uh in a departure from uh pretty oh, much man. all the battlefields before it there is no swimming in battlefield 2042 mm. at all swimming doesn't exist um, however, you don't really think about this because the game never puts you in a position where <laughs> yep. you need to or want to swim. So it's just one of those things you realize after a while. You're like, oh, we haven't done any swimming. We haven't swum yet. Because, yeah, the maps are just like, no, swim. there's just no water to swim in. So, yeah, now we don't have to worry about swimming. 
Yeah, well, and, and especially with how um, I don't th like. I think this game wouldn't have been hurt by including swimming, and they just clearly didn't have the time. Whether or not they thought they would add it, it's like, no, nah, we're not doing that. And Akiva's like annoying because when you get there, it takes what like half an hour to an hour to learn to not be, like to to get your speeder on the water successfully. So it's just like. Why did I have this whole hump? And then, of course, if you crash at all, or if you fuck up anything on the water while you're on the speeder, you just drown. It's, it, it's not... There's nothing about it that feels, um... How do you put it? Like like a fair punishment for failure. It's, it's just annoying. Yeah. When and... we, I think when we all first got the Hydro Repulsor, and we had to go down the little, like, river, I think all of us probably hit the yes. wall or yeah, a rock I'm pretty at sure some all point, of us and did. we just went bloop! straight in and had to reset well, <laughs> we got, we got, uh, i think all of us were struck future. by um the speeder would go over water right and it doesn't and you're like okay and then you're like oh there's because a mission there's a mission for it and you're like yeah, yeah. Or you there have a... to get a, a part to let it yeah. repulse off water and i'm like, like don't worry okay. it'll happen soon you're like why not <laughs> just let me do it <laughs> in some ways it makes me think that it was something that they had at neutral that they were like wait if we just take an ability away we can make that seem like something we took time we to put make in it a mission yeah. yeah yeah instead of just we using it as like part of the content. world building like like k might say hey can the speeder you know go over water and then the other guy on the radio says yeah it's got a hydro repulsor equipped on it so so you're good and they're like okay that's like oh that's a star warsy thing people might ask or converse about <laughs> They're going to take away like your ability said, to climb ladders whole, like and then mission. make that a mission so that there's more stuff. Do you have, a, do you have an anti-gravitational um, rung uh, attachment <laughs> uh, protocol module device? Like, what does that do? It's like, let's climb ladders. Let's you climb ladders. Oh, that's incredible. That is really cool. Years, and somehow, none of them have been open world until this one. The only problem... <sighs> it, 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 not to nitpick, but I'm just like... Build. <laughs> open world is grumble, such a grumble, meme to grumble. me now. When I <laughs> yeah. hear open world, and was like, open world oh suck. god. Open is it going to be one of I those mean, that I has mean, something to do? My or grumbling, is it going to be one? Also, yeah, and my grumbling is just whether or not I think it should even be considered an open world game with how shit it is. But then again, I wouldn't say, <laughs> like, an FPS that has awful gunplay, it's not like I say, well, it's not an FPS anymore. It's like, I guess it is an open world, it's just a really, really, really bad one. Mm-hmm. It is I mean, a massive it... sliding scale of like whenever you hear open world of how big is the playable area, how seamless are the transitions between the uh, between these big areas, um, and like what does it do to take advantage of that being a thing? Outlaws does not take advantage of it at all. If anything, it, it hurts it. And other it games seems to do actively a good job. resent the huge amount of space that it's given itself that it's not really interested in, just because it felt like it had to be an open world game. It just wasn't. Yeah, mm -hmm. it wasn't. It wasn't full of interesting things. If the no. play space was that size, but everything you end up going to, which is it's not actually a big play space. Things are like what because you have fast travel points. The furthest you ever have to go at one point is like what two kilometers or whatever. Um, but if it was full of interest, if those were interesting things, you'd be like, okay, this is my little break between things when I'm just kind of cruising through the world. You know, I, I appreciate that a little bit of downtime, but there's never anything to get you excited about. It's no. all th th those aren't the valleys in between the peaks. It's all just a, it's all just a, it's all a valley. It's all a, a plain, an empty, <laughs> awful, terrible plain. If I may uh, compliment the naming here, Lego Star Wars Solo: A Star Wars Story. Yes, <laughs> Lego Star Wars Solo. It's very Star good naming. It's what not even the end. There's more. There's more to it. That's I assume cut off. chapter or, or chapter some shit. One? Yeah, because of it's a DLC for the Lego game. But whatever. It's or just... maybe oh maybe it says like Chewbacca uh, rescue. Or it could actually Chewbacca, be Chewbacca. <laughs> that's true. Chewbacca, <laughs> Chewbacca included. Game. Yo. Star Wars games over the years, and somehow none of them have been open world until this one. The only problem is that true, by the way. Oh God, I mean, uh, not really, because this 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 game is an open world game in structurally kind of the same way that Stellar Blade was, because it has like open world sections where there's quests in it, but it also has linear sections where you do the main story. Yeah, and it's like if that counts as an open world game, then surely Stellar Blade also counts. Dude, I'm well, happy um, to I mean, it, it's, like it's, put um, it in the. To put in the category, I, I, yeah. I mean, this is an open world game. It's just not a good one. Um, but like, as for well, whether no, or not there have been other Star Wars yeah. open world games before, it's like, well, I guess it depends on what you define as an open world because there have been other Star Wars games that have big open areas that you can explore. Mm -hmm. 
there have been plenty of Star Wars games that have had yeah, hubs. Yeah. Um, so what's the meaningful oh, difference between, you know, like Tashara as a play space? And I guess, the, I guess, I guess, I guess it would be that you can go like anywhere at any time, kind of, you know, I guess. <laughs> well, so did the video say, um, other Star Wars open world games specifically, or did it just say other open world games this year? Cause I heard no, no, this I think year. He said no, 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 no. It's, it's about, um, Star Wars Outlaws, the big, like selling point, essentially it's been part of like basically a huge amount of the marketing for the game is this is the first open world Star Wars game. They've yeah. said that over and over and over again. Which is going to be a oh, selling this... point for sure, of course. I don't know why well, Star Wars on. Galaxies Isn't... doesn't count. Isn't that an MMO? Or well, what about uh, the Old Republic? Like, you can probably go, like, that. that's got to be, like, you know. Probably in the same way that, like, Mass Effect is, where you go to different well, I guess that's the thing, right? it's like, Yeah, is it because those are RPGs that it's like, well, no, that's an RPG. That's not, like, an open world game <laughs> or something. Also, but Jedi Survivor had open world segments, too. I guess they'd say, well, no, those were hubs. That those were hub worlds, and there's a difference between a hub world and an open world. This is where you start to get into the semantics argument, uh, which seems pointless to <laughs> so, me. So does it you let know? him finish? <laughs> uh, it's not even a. It doesn't have anything to do with him anymore. <laughs> At this point, yeah. it's just yeah. the, the annoying vagaries of what goes into making a game an yeah, open we're, world. We're, we're, we're moving into the, a lot. the genre discussion, which is a hellhole. Like that's uh, you almost never want to be there, but we go there every once in a while. Have a little look, have a mm, peek, yeah. dip a toe. Tourist in the uh, in the conversation about genre. Maybe for a lot of the away. a lot of the stipulations, you end up like wanting to draw. Witcher Three is sort of annoyingly leering over your head with the because... fact that it's an open world, but it's very separated within itself. There are parts of it yeah. that are because like, he's not. Um, it's it, got like yeah. It's perfectly fine that he's introduced the game this way. I'm I'm just thinking about yeah, you know, categorizing that fucking worthless piece of shit game as an open world game. <laughs> it's like, because hmm. mm. it's funny, you know, you say like there's there's open world, there's also linear parts. When you get to the end and you have the Rico thing of like, you know, you sure you want to commit to the final mission now, you won't be able to do some open world stuff. And it's like, as if as if the rest of the game doesn't operate that way for every single mission. Yeah. Where if you go off there fucking track just a little bit, it'll be like, ooh, go back, go back, go back. <laughs> the, the most funny thing to me is it'll do the 10 second countdown, but if you move slightly further, it just fucking stops you. It's like, no, go back, that's it, stop. Dead in your tracks, you could have 8 <laughs> seconds left. It's so mad. The whole, uh, the devs pulling you back, being like, hey. Because um, something I was curious about was when, you know the mission where you got to fix Andy near the end? Um, he and Gadika following you around in Akiva, and it's like, what if I... What if I don't do the mission? What if I quit it? Or what if I go somewhere else? And of course, the second you step slightly out of out of turn, the game is like, whoa, return to the quest area, buddy. <laughs> what are you and thinking yeah, this was your game? The idea that it's like, oh, best be careful because you're about to do that at the end. You're like, he's just normal. That's how it always fucking goes. What are you doing? Are you trying to have fun over there? Go back to the Stop mines. That. <laughs> Stop no having fun, you prick. Jerko. Star Wars games over the years, and somehow none of them have been open world until this one. The only problem is people seem to hate it. It's so easy to it judge sucks. an entire game yeah. based off of just one 30 second clip you saw online. It's, what about a thousand 30 seconds? It is, it is in fact things. easy to do that. I don't disagree, yeah. but there might be a little <laughs> bit more than one 30 second clip going around on the internet at the moment. I wish I would have stopped at 30 seconds for fuck's sake. Yeah. We'll do it. <laughs> I get it. I mean, this game has some flaws but there are also some really great moments in this game and after spending 40 hours in the world of star wars i don't know categorizing see? that's it <laughs> well i don't, we, I don't want to be rude because he's like putting a lot of effort into this but is he just like aping angry joe's bit here kind of with the, um, with the presentation i feel like this is more complex this than is angry better joe. than yeah. yeah this is better than angry joe sure sure um, and I don't know. It's, it's it's actually kind of like a flare that's making me more yeah. interested than I'm usual. I'm down with it. Yeah, I like the flare. Yeah. Uh, sure. But what I was gonna say is, it's just <laughs> interesting to categorize the the flaws in the because you know, like seeing a glitch is is a bit different than the reality, which is uh, seeing a clip that's representative of what you get. For example, the the long grass clips that go around. Everyone has seen those. That's consistent. It was funny when when I was streaming, people were trying to decide whether or not it's a bug or a feature. It turns out it's a feature. It's not. It's not the game not working. It always works like that. It, I guess, was... I was about to say designed to work like that. It's like, <laughs> why would anyone design it to work well, like Conversely, that? it always doesn't work like that, you know? Like, 
it is a facet of the game that is non-functional, but it is consistent in its non-functionality. So yeah, like that's what you get if you do those things every single. This isn't time. some freak one-off instance. A lot of the things people point to aren't like freak one-off instances, but there's plenty of those as well. A lot of this is just how the game operates, which is not very good because that means it's reproducible by you, yes, you consumer who's looking to buy the Me? game as well. Me wow. too. That's right. You too. <gasps> well, uh, yeah, like to categorize that as it's got some flaws, but it's got some great stuff. I'm looking forward to finding out which things are great. Uh, I'm t I am too. I'm excited. You want to put a place yeah, at anybody on what the great things will be? Nix. Uh, Nix, probably, yeah. The story. <laughs> um, the story. Oh, it's God. the big no, pile of movie stuff money this guy got. Uh, graphics. Graphics. Definitely graphic. Yeah. Yep, that's uh, probably it. Uh, yeah, I, I will say, though, it is legitimately odd that this much work and effort went into defending a game when he only has 40 hours in it. Only, well, I, is, mean, I don't know if I'd I call it own, 40, 40 hours, hours only. Why, yeah, um, why are you saying it like that? I think that, um, I don't think that's, for this level of what the game's supposed to be and the amount of look, what looks like passion and interest that went into making this, I would expect for him to have played a lot more than that. Um, 40 hours probably would have gotten him pretty close to like 100% completion, right? Depending on how you play it, it would have gotten probably. you pretty, pretty yeah. far. He's almost certainly... I don't certainly... know why we're saying that 40 hours isn't like long enough to want to make a video about it. Uh, I didn't say it wasn't long enough. I just, I just, I think it's a little, it just, to me, it seems a little odd. I would have expected more. It's, it's odd because why? Because it's I, not I long enough? I would have expected more. I guess when I think about a game that I'm really yeah, because yeah, I just want to think about a game that has uh, a lot of like like a video that's edited like this and a lot of thought and everything and defense and stuff put into it. I just would have thought he would have played it more. Hello. Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, sorry. Like it's forty hours. It's a strange like take, me, but we'll all. allow it because we're yeah. we're very uh, progressive here. Okay, you can say anything almost. Outlaws, I can honestly say this game at very least deserves a closer look. And then maybe you'll at least under Oh look, he's doing a thing that you cannot do in a game, which is go to a bar and have a fucking drink. You think he'd know that after 40 <laughs> hours. I'm sure, I'm why. sure he does, but <laughs> what are you gonna do? I don't know. I don't know if he does. This is actually one of my favorite Star Wars games ever made. Oh. Fuck me. Oh, oh that's, that's fucking, Wars games that's fucking that is, depressing. That is, uh, that's surprising. Yeah, I would say I, I wouldn't expect anyone to say there. this is one of their favorites. What I guess does the list look like? Uh, Shadows of the Empire, Coder, um, Alpha Battle, Two, man. Battlefront. Yeah. Battlefront Two. Yeah. He just it's understood Alpha Two. <laughs> like, sure. Well, there's probably like a Star Wars janitor that would be way better than this, where you're just a guy. Fuck it, that sounds awesome. <laughs> you're, a guy, you're a guy cleaning up after all the big battles between the Rebels and Empire. I think we've talked about that notion before. You're just an alien dude who's like, ugh, he cleaned up like the armor and little bits of blood, blaster shit. Because he got, uh, what's the game where you do the cleaning? He's like a mop. <laughs> yeah, what's, uh, Mel, it's the game I played a whole bunch on Twitch. Visceral, uh, visceral cleanup detail. Yeah, that, but Star Wars. It would be fun. <laughs> a little bit I'm sure someone... that you can hear the music of, like, the scenes happening in the other room, like, muffled through the door while oh, you're just cleaning so up fun. after them. <laughs> <laughs> you, like, you hear, I am your father or whatever, and you're just like, oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> you can, like, look through the keyhole, maybe? Yeah, that would be <laughs> like, great. Ooh. God, I Thank fucking you, hate that sound early... clip so Thank much. You. He got an early Thank copy you from you this the early copy. Mm. Thanks, Ubisoft, oh. for the early copy. Um, it makes you think, mm. does it not? It does Why indeed stimulate the brain. Why did you just say that at the, the beginning? He is. This is the <laughs> Technically, <laughs> that counts, yes. This is my favorite early copy Star Wars game. <laughs> also, there should be a comma before Ubisoft. Da, 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 da. By the way, this video is sponsored by Factor. Now, sometimes <laughs> I'll do yeah. Thank you, Factor <laughs> and Ubisoft. This yeah. video is sponsored by two corporations. It's so this funny. I, I, had, I had one of these days today when I was watching a video and then the, the usual, like, sponsorship thing came up. I was like, oh, like I stopped and groaned loudly. I was like, God, like sometimes I have these days where I just fucking want to yell at my screen. It's like, I don't care. Leave me alone. <laughs> I will give this guy a little bit of credit back after his dog shit opinion about this being one of his favorite Star Wars games. If he does the factor thing and it's like the eating mini game 
from Outlaws. Oh, oh yeah. that would be great. That into this ad, if he does that, mm. he will legitimately get like I will be I will be really impressed with that That'd kind cool. of effort that went into right. it. So the stakes are the higher than they've points. ever been, guy. Oh my god! Yeah. Yeah. Come on, not yeah. to see him. You got to get your points in where you can, my dude. Okay, <laughs> do this. Right. Where I'll get so focused on what I'm doing during the day that I yeah, literally yeah. forget to eat until Everyone my body starts spiel. screaming I, uh, at me. I would way prefer <laughs> if an ad just said, I'm fucking lazy. I don't feel like cooking. Like, yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> that's what it is. And it's okay to say that. It's okay to be like, I don't like cooking. I don't enjoy well, it. It's not something every, I want to do. Every ad in the story is, man, I'm so busy though. Oh, it's like, somebody... I mean, like, I'm busy too. I still cook my own meals every day. You're lazy. <laughs> Loser. It's fine. Be be honest. It's you okay. Don't feel like I don't like. It's cool. You're a it's okay. Liar. Yeah, fine. Liar. But that's not at a talking point. And, so and at that point, right. I'll ravenously tear through the kitchen looking for anything, and I just I end up tell. with something I don't even really want. But having factors fresh never. Why do you have things in your kitchen that you don't want? Why do you buy it and bring it home if you don't want it? <laughs> it's, it's for the aesthetic. Look, the kitchen, this kitchen is. This Sometimes kitchen is full of like things that, that I don't want to eat. How did it get here? <laughs> well, maybe you bought it in bulk and then it's in your kitchen and then that yeah, day you don't want to eat it. I'm um, so, yeah. Oh, okay. Like maybe he's had too much of the same thing. That's where you get a variety, you know? You get a oh, variety yeah, sure. of some stuff. Maybe you're left with like mismatched parts that don't really go together into a meal. Oh, that's what want. some of the best, that's what yeah, some of my best yeah. things then are. Then you make a stew. Uh, we, we're going to put some chicken mm -hmm. drumsticks oh, in the oh. air fryer i'll have some almonds maybe a little bit of popcorn and then uh like a big thing of like greek yogurt yeah. and then i'll have some iced tea and it's just like a it's like a mismatch it's like a, or yeah, a, it's just, a just left, left basically like left over it's just like put a, it all together yeah. and like oh, yeah but... it's like a charlie brown thanksgiving <laughs> so it's wait so it's fried chicken popcorn and and yogurt what, and what almonds. is that in the drink what, what, what I, that, and almonds don't forget the old I, I i explained what it was were you not what do you listening? mean what is that i, I guess That's what the... it is like is there a name is that like a oh, you don't a put name? them all together it's, it's just called uh, chickpea grumbo <laughs> it's, it's, it's the chickpea grumbo recipe <laughs> sometimes you're just kind of cleaning up whatever you've got left before you go to the store again and you just yeah. sort of make a little medley of all the stuff you have and you like all of those things it's just an odd combination to have all those things, but you like it all, you know? Mm -hmm. You get your you get your stuff in. Mm. Mm. You can meals. basically stir fry anything, you know? Just put it all in <laughs> the same True. Stir fried fry yogurt it. is really fucking good. Or oh, rocks. Scotland, you can stir open up a rocks. can of the, yeah, the oikos, like Greek yogurt, and you just put that there on the pan, and you heat it mm up, mm, stir it around. That's good stuff. Mm. It's easy to just run to the kitchen and get a restaurant quality meal in just a couple minutes. <laughs> oh, that's a lie. Down. I don't that's know about that. that. Yeah, that's, that's a lie. A, You're, I've heard I that. I don't believe you. Yeah, kind of thing. I, 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 I wonder if you were, if yeah. it's contractual <laughs> that you have to describe them as restaurant quality or not. Oh yeah, so, it's yeah, in every factor ad that I hear. They say that for the it's just ship. It's one of the it's one of the talking points. One hundred percent. I like the idea that you go to a Michelin star restaurant and then you go in the kitchen and it's just them putting factor meals <laughs> in, got, the in the microwave. <laughs> then they've got the factor menu. And then the they bring it out menu, to the table. Yeah. They bring it out to the table and that's where they pull the plastic off the top. You have me served, monsieur. <laughs> have you seen the videos where they serve Would you like pasta, a Capri Sun to go with but, you know, <laughs> The pasta in a wine glass. Have you seen that? Where they, oh, yeah, yeah, they yeah. spin yes. it and twirl it up. Awesome and then you see like the parody oh, videos where someone just fucking slaps like a concrete block on the table and then starts... You know, <laughs> flipping and juggling meat, and you're just like, just put my food down, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I will say, not to, I don't want to, this isn't a poo poo of um, uh, mac and cheese in general, though, because I used to work at a restaurant and we had a killer lobster mac and cheese that was really, really good. You can do a lot of good stuff. Lobster mac, mac and, and cheese. cheese, interesting. Mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, and it had like, like crumbs on the top, and it was really good. All right. I thought that was part Yum. one of three of a story, but it was just one. No, I'm just standing up <laughs> for just, mac and cheese. Good food. You know? You can choose from a weekly menu of 35 different options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan what, where, is, Where's Fat Fog? Yeah, where's is, is, is there the, yeah. I just want to pig out, you know, give me yeah. a bowl of sugar. <laughs> Yuck. Where's the, where's just the, the deep fried I'd almost appreciate one. that. Do you remember that, because there's that restaurant in America, the Heart Attack Grill, where it's just like, oh, yeah. you would kill yourself oh, yeah, eating yeah, yeah. here or whatever. 
There's also more than 60 add-ons like breakfasts, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and huh, beverages to help you stay fueled for my and food? feel good all day long. Hell yeah. Crested chicken. Feel good all day long. That's pretty cool. And I got right here is much better than anything I'd get from a drive-thru and is actually more co- Wow. <laughs> I, I'm not, I don't know if I even believe that. I I'm feel not like sure. Just One, me, low bar. Like two, I don't believe you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's microwaved. Like, I don't know. I can't resist you know the notion, by the way, that he's about to dig in, that it cuts, and you just do the yeah. crusty meme. <laughs> 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 yeah. mm, mm, and mm. cut. <laughs> Blah. 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 Some of the juice. Oh. <laughs> Look at his expression. Can you not see the reticence in there? Yeah. Head to yeah. factor75.com, click in there. the link below, and use code BISLY50 to get 50% off your first factor. I don't mind not the taste. <laughs> I, yeah, I, uh... I don't know about that nodding. I can't remember the last time that I ate and I nodded to myself like, mm, 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 that was, mm, 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 yeah, no. I need to, I need to Maybe express Maybe if I made it and I was really happy. And I'll say that the, the nodding yeah. is better than when they go, mm. Mm. Oh, I, I, I hate that. That's actually like the worst <laughs> thing ever. Like, yeah, you just want to kill him. I can't stand that. <laughs> Maybe he's just got some music playing and he's just nodding along to that. Maybe it's oh, not yeah, the food. That's, that's possible. Yeah, that's true. The box and 20% off your next month. Oh, uh, that, that was a bit That's more of a that, yeah. that was that was awkward. That, that was, like, he was yeah. gesturing to it. That, 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 see, it's not poison. Yeah. That, that was yeah. I don't mind the taste. Yeah, that <laughs> was I don't mind the taste. That actually was. was he was yeah. gesturing to the, the rest of them with his fork, like, see? It look, yeah. I can it definitely it, it definitely felt yeah. like you know it's sponsored, but it's not the worst. Yeah, just, just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Factor75.com to get 50% off your Why first are you box leaning down so much? 20% that... off your next yeah. month. Is his, uh... is his hair not get? Is his hair not? Oh, I was about to worry about his hair there. Bending down and. I would say, yeah, that's a low table. Why yeah. are you not oh, raising up the food to your mouth instead of like bringing your entire body? Maybe down he's on a really high food. chair. Well, <laughs> I think it's just a really low table. Like, look mm -hmm. at where the table is. You know. I don't know. Well, but how can you? Yeah. How do we know? How would we know if it's a high chair or a low table? What's the way do we? Well, know? part of it is that it's uh, quite far away from the edge of the table as well. It's like you've got to lean forward in. In you know, I, yeah, I don't know. The whole thing's bizarre. <laughs> this expression is pretty funny though. Yeah, <laughs> it looks a bit. Uh, it looks a bit like the um, the the new the new people oh. uh, the stare right, but it's a little bit more like um, mm. despondent, I suppose, <laughs> or something, or like trying to force a smile. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I think he's doing it to try to fit in his green screen. Oh, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. That could be it. Month of orders. <laughs> okay, now watch the video. In Star Wars Outlaws, you play as Kay Vess, a street thief with a target on her back. She recently got in trouble with a local gang and needs to disappear before they catch up to her. But disappearing is gonna cost a little change, so she took a job to rob the mansion of a wealthy crime boss named Slira. I don't know. Like, these, it's these funny how she's like, like, acting wait, wait, like it. Wait. Isn't that backwards? I thought it, I thought it was backward. That's that's backwards. Unless isn't it? he unless hey, she is he he's starting she, out with the very uh, very first tutorial like well no 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 I'm saying, I'm saying like I thought the premise the premise is backwards. She gets the mark from doing the job at Slero's like that's how she gets in trouble. Well, she get, yeah, no, that's he, the he, to be fair, right. she gets in trouble with six kin, right? The the ah, right. Yeah, yeah, right, right. and first, yeah, Bram yeah, says right. get out of here so that you don't have to deal oh, with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, my bad, my bad. But disappearing is gonna cost. I also just how quickly all of these are going by, which to be honest, each of them are kind of like cute. You know, good, good for you yeah. making these. I mm -hmm. like them. Will change. So she took a job to rob the mansion of a wealthy crime boss named Slira. I don't know if that would have been my first choice, but I mean, do what you got to do. Now Slira's the leader of a crime syndicate called Zarek Besh. And how did you know that? Was it when they go? Ah, Zarek oh, Bash. Zarek Bash. Bash. <laughs> <laughs> that scene is horrendously so written. <laughs> I, I just remember starting the game, this scene starts, he says that's like, and I think I immediately said, oh, thank you for telling us. Are you going to just yeah. tell us everything now? And it's like, as you all know, you were saying, oh, yeah, there we go. And then, and then you're like, who are these people? Then he goes, ah, oh, the huts, ah, oh, the, the uh, Crimson Dawn, ah, the... Oh, the pikes. <laughs> God damn it. Now that I still now that I told you everything, I'll die. Kill you. Yeah. <laughs> it's so bad. He's also the main antagonist of the game. Kay's goal right now is to steal. He's right that he's the main antagonist. Is he in the game for two minutes? Uh he's no. not in it much. It feels like he uh it's it's actually staggering how little he is in the game at all. Mm -hmm. you know, it's just not really a persistent Wait. threat, right? It's not like he would just Slero... start showing up to antagonize her. I think Slero is in the game less than Bram is. 
and he's barely in the game at all as well, uh, despite being the most important mm -hmm. person in Kay's life. And I guess the thing is, like, you can have it be the case that a villain isn't in the game that Much. long. Like, that's that's possible. You can absolutely do that. Um, like, Milton isn't in uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 that much, though I guess arguably he's not, well, not even arguably, he's not the main antagonist of that story. Yeah, maybe, um... You don't see Ross for a while, uh, like, he, Ross doesn't really pop up much at all until the later part of, uh, the first game. Maybe I'm just oh, well, circling around they... the criticism that Slero sucks ass, like, he's got no... Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotta make a good impact, or a... I guess a tangible impact when you're on there so so little, but he just he's just cringe. Steal enough credits from Slero to buy her way off the planet. A planet that, by the way, is goddamn beautiful. All right, calm down. Um, yeah, yeah. Is yeah these like are not the shots to show. The, yeah, this I was gonna like say this right? is not what I would use for its beauty. Don't need to. Yeah, I, 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 I think the, dramatic music. <laughs> this I is the game looked its best in like the day in wilderness, like in that's where it looks best. Not not here. I I, agree, I, yeah. I think the lighting is not doing this much favors at the moment. I think. I think, Wait, I think this is a the joke, isn't it? Dude. No, no, this is, this is and... not a joke. No, no I, I think it's been totally serious. <laughs> it's got the big dramatic this music. Is, yeah. this is one of yeah. the main mm. points of praise for this game is the graphics, which I, I like. You should, I think um... they're good. I think they're fine. They're not like, they're, like, they're, they're, they're okay. They're not like it's, amazing. It's, it's, it depends on what we're talking about. Like the environments, generally, they're looking all right, but like the characters, there's definitely some problems with the presentation. I think there are better shots of Canto just... Bite in the game. Like when you go up to the yeah. the first, yeah. when you start on the mission for the Slero thing, like the, you could probably get that shot. And I... um, in some of the cutscenes, I think. Purely off of what he's showing, I feel like you could name games up to like 10 years old or so that look better or as good. Uh, yeah, I'd say yeah, yeah. so. I think, I mean, I think Red Dead Redemption 2 looks a hell of a lot better, and that's a previous generation video game. Yeah, I, I, uh, there was recently a tweet going around, uh, where someone was like, man, this Arkham game from 10 years ago, that looks really fucking good, like, what happened? And so Which apparently... three looks at worst as good? Sorry, go on. Yeah, because apparently the thing is, because of all the ray tracing and all the, the... Uh, the daylight and the nighttime and everything that switches around, you don't have like the pre made visual effects, <clears throat> so they can make them look as nice as possible. They just have to work with all the light going around and ray tracing and the changing day night cycles. So they're not as crafted as uh, visually impressive because they work with what they have as a mechanic for the day and night cycle, for example. So you have like all this moving light, the shadows going around. When this the, these older games, you have like these pre-made things that are very yeah, it's a carefully crafted. Conversation of like the handcrafted versus the broad, making sure we achieve. It's like a different set yes. of goals. And uh, which I guess is kind of funny considering that this Canto Bite, it's only night here. That's it's true. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. Have yeah. a day night cycle, so. Yeah. Which you know, the, I That's... assume the point of Canto Bite is to try and evoke like Star Wars Vegas, but they haven't at all. It's not no, even no. Close. no. Which is a shame, you actually, because yeah. you, you, when you say it out loud, you're like, oh yeah, that would be cool, wouldn't it? And it's like, eh. Yeah, because oh, no. if you're doing Star Wars Vegas, you need somebody at an ATM, like, slamming his head against the, <laughs> you know, the screen. <laughs> or, or a guy, like, passed out on the Need more lights. Well, general. you don't even get to it's, go to a, yeah. it's really dull. The most iconography you'd get out of a Star Wars Vegas, you'd think, would be what you think of when you think Vegas. And we don't even get, like, the big like, yeah. promotional... Big um, beyond signs and yeah, everything, yeah, and then, advertising. Everywhere. And then, like a, a just almost like a street of slot machines inside a building. You don't even get that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, thinking about it, I'm quite struck at how much of a missed opportunity the opening portion is. It's so lame, like a dull. It looks really dull. Yeah. Look at it. Look well, at and, the and, colors on display. On and the for the record, uh, the game doesn't have a lot to offer, but it's even stripped down in this opening. Like, a lot of things are not available deliberately. They don't let you do the arcade stuff. Everyone's dialogue is limited. Yeah. The merchants sell nothing. It's just... It's, it's just lame. <laughs> you know, and looking at the fireworks, I'm struck by how shit they are now as well. <laughs> they're think, just the most basic fireworks. Yeah. They're, they're like, uh... <laughs> they're just getting expanded and then disappear, expand, disappear. Very simple. All right, calm down. <laughs> well, th this is better like, compared to some of those other shots in terms of giving you a scope, like, but still, it feels more like a slum. Why? Than, yeah, why like, isn't it more the height of excess in Star Wars? Well, because because I know this. Is, I forget the name of it, but this is like 
down. It's supposed to be like the pull part of Canto Bite or something, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but right. The <clears throat> fact that that is the only place we really go to in, in Canto <laughs> Bite, like, like uh, yeah. And there's not much of a visual juxtaposition here against anywhere else. And I don't think he's captured that well. Like that notion of oh man, I grew up in the poor part of Can. It's like you don't spend very long here, and it's very linear, and you don't even understand what the fuck is going on. You don't have anything to well, compare it like to. Part of what part of what sells it as being a shitty place would be that as you're moving through the environment, like bad things are happening. You know, occasionally, yes. right? You walk oh, past imagine you get mugged. mugged or, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, but the problem is that all of the NPCs just stand there. They just stand well, around. They don't do uh, anything. And compared to MT. Tatooine, where it's like, oh, this place is just. Typically better than your average place to live in Tatooine. It's like, but Tatooine's not treated this way. Uh, in the sense that yeah. it's like, God, we must escape this. Uh, in Tatooine, it, it, and that's part of the meta problem of Star Wars. Tatooine is always a place you want to go. It's like, ah, oh, but it's Tatooine. Let's go to Tatooine. Let's get the references. Yeah, we love yeah, Tatooine. Tatooine is supposed to be. It's, <laughs> it's it like the place deliber- the protagonist wanted to escape, but it's always like, yeah, exactly. let's go to Tatooine. <laughs> I couldn't be less excited for Tatooine <laughs> at this yeah, point. It. Oh, so sick it's of funny it. you say that because uh, the thing is, and I think this kind of applies to all of us, when it says like you can go to multiple places, we'll still choose Tatooine because of like it feels like an obligation of like, well, of course I'll go to what Tatooine. Did you do? Yeah. I was like, hey, Em. Oh, Em, pressing sorry. play, really? Oh, I did. I, I just joined in and immediately played. I'm so sorry. Oh, any excuse. I hate you so much. Any fucking excuse. Oh it's nice God. to see you, though. Buddy. How you doing? <laughs> Hello. 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 All right. Well, so uh... l- l- looking at this, mm-hmm. I mean, we were talking about just like you know, other games that kind of did this sort of thing and how the graphics kind of look, you know, last gen. I was thinking about it for a minute. Um, basically, Final Fantasy VII's Midgar in the remake is the same kind of place. Like it's like a slum, right? And that was what five years ago now, and it looks a lot better than this game. I think this game is overblown seriously with the graphics. Uh... It must yeah. be because of the fact that it's the only thing that is kind of praiseable, typically. Uh, yeah, we might have something to do with it. I just can't yeah, but thinking about Cyberpunk in relation to this. Like, for all of Cyberpunk's many, many faults, that game's visual and, like, audiovisual depiction of a Cyberpunk futuristic mangle of a city is right. very impressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, I'm like... Go ahead. I mean, because, yeah, I played a whole bunch of Final Fantasy VII. I played a whole bunch of Final Fantasy XV. And they both had like large, like 15 is now almost 10 years old, I think. Is it 2016 or something? They both had very large cities that just, I don't know, they were on last gen hardware and they did what Star Wars Outlaws is trying to do here just better. Now, we have the whole component of performance and this game performed like ass on PC. Uh, for and you, pretty- on console, it was flawlessly freezing. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I wish I could have had that many freezes that, as you did. Yeah. Funny, me and, me and Fringy both got the uh, load map and it freezes the game a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> that happened twice. You truly are asking a lot when you load up the map. I'm really tired of the Star Wars sound of great value John Williams at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Bargain bin John Williams. I, I mean, I, I, I hate to say it, but I it, like, I don't disagree with the notion. It's like, well, it feels like Star Wars does this. It? like, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but none of it gets me jazzed like the OT soundtrack. Something is yeah. definitely not there. Hmm. This is one of the biggest strengths of Star Wars Outlaws. There are four explorable planets, each with their own unique environments, weather effects, and side quests. I'm going to show you the weather all effects of the planets, but this where we're at here is yeah, they don't really do anything. Effect, that felt like it was thrown in. It was like a yeah, yeah, they're there, I think. Yeah, they have different weather. It's like, well, see, yeah, I mean, I guess they got different weather, but it doesn't mean anything. Well, she says it's windy sometimes when the windy in, in Tashara, so... Oh, well, it's more so just that it doesn't have any effect on gameplay. Doesn't remember the, remember the wind tunnels, Fringy? So, wrong. Uh, oh, shit, yeah, it got me. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Even there's, though they're, there's no, they're there's constant, no thing... they're not changing with the weather or anything. There's no situation where, like, rain, you know, dampers on fire damage or anything like that. Oh, but they make the claim. He says, uh, you know, once you've had (laughs) enough rain, it'll damage the speeder, but that isn't possible. (laughs) It's not a thing in the game. (laughs) Never mind. That's right. It does once again feel like, oh, maybe they did plan to do something with the weather, but they never did. Mm -hmm. Actually, 
none of the explorable planets. It's more of like a intro area. It's a place you're not even meant to spend more than like 45 minutes, but still, they packed it full of detail. This is no, they didn't. Uh, this, <laughs> no, no. Let's, this let's hear is, it. It is striking just how fucking empty this place is. It's supposed to be Kay's home, right? So there are friends of Kay that you can walk up and talk to. <laughs> oh, come on. These fuckers, <laughs> each of them. Do you remember the one that says like, Kay, I've got some honest work for you. Yeah, and she's like, no. No. <laughs> called Smuggler. <laughs> My best friend, Smuggler. <laughs> smuggler Jim. The, most, like, the details of the game made the most basic of efforts to represent the fact that you live here. <laughs> well, so what's funny too is, uh, I kind of hate this, but I know exactly what this guy talks about. It's uh, the Nick's ate something of his and he wants uh, her to pay up for that or he'll eat Nick's or something you know, like that. And nothing, mm -hmm. nothing can happen. It's it's dialogue. It's a couple of sentences. They are said, and then he is a part of the background. There's nothing that can be done with this. And he's not a friend. <laughs> it's it's just funny to be like, see people who know K. It's like, wow, you're generous. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. I didn't even give him a name. <laughs> Jimbo. <laughs> I mean, I I, I I can picture what he's imagining in his head. No, no but that's like, that's how it works, man. <laughs> like you play these yeah. things, and then you come away thinking of stuff that didn't even happen. Because I think your yeah, brain does yeah. a lot of work too. Because you want to, you want to enjoy that. Everyone wants to play a completely free and interesting and substantive open world Star Wars game. That's cool as fuck. But that's not oh, what yeah. this is. No. <laughs> and don't do the work for them. Don't imagine a conversation you didn't even have. No, I'm not going to imagine anything. I'm just so not to go back to the Final Fantasy. Well, too many times. I just I love Final Fantasy. Um, like in Final Fantasy Nine, it's the same. There's the same kind of opening. If you guys have played Final Fantasy Nine, where you have a, a short sequence that you run through as Vivi, but you can spend like three hours doing mini games and side quests just in this town, and or you can just move on and it's about five minutes, right? And so mm -hmm. there, there, there's shops and there's a whole bunch of characters and they all talk to Vivi. They all know who he is and they all they all remark on him. There's there's the the jump rope mini game. Like the town is actually populated with stuff to do, and you can spend several hours there. But if you want, most people just move on in about five minutes. I, I think that's what he's like imagining here. Yeah. But it's just not actually in the game. Well, it's, yeah. I think there's like one there's like one shop that sells like a Bacta tank or something, or like a Bacta vial. And there Whoa. might be like, like one gambler and like that's it. It's gonna be interesting to see what else he picks, but uh, I was gonna say this this could have been a like a spelling error thing that they forgot to put the, the dot in there, but it could be S Smuggler. Like that could be his name, Sam or something. <laughs> S Smuggler. <laughs> Sam <S> Smuggler. <laughs> <laughs> Shop owners that she clearly has a history with. And different his nickname in high school was just the Muggler. Dude. Really Muggler. Has... Shop yeah, owners she clearly has history home, with. Right? That's so friends... that's like the mission in this area. Walk up and talk to. Shop... This guy is Preben, oh. right? Yeah, and he's the one who owns, um, or rather, he he can fix your uh, slicing kit or whatever. Yeah. Um. This is the and, opening and mission. Find a hundred credits, and then he'll do that, and that's that. You don't see this guy again, and, and you know what? It's bad no, because you... his shop gets fucked up by the uh, the, the your involvement with him and the and the. And the oh, that's thing. right. You hear about yeah, that, but you, you don't do anything about you... it. You well yeah, in my playthrough and my stream, I I even ask, can I go help him? Can I go save him? Yeah. Is that an option that I have that the game's giving me? And, and it's not. It's not an option. Just no. fuck. Preben for helping you. Yeah, no, it's, it doesn't weigh on her at all. You. She doesn't it, give a shit. Yeah, she doesn't care. Consists of a character, though, so there you go. Preben got fucked. <laughs> Poor guy. Shop owners that she clearly has a history with. In different places that she might frequently hang out. By the way, if that's used <laughs> as, a, as a positive here, for like, oh, she clearly has a history, they basically say, oh, it's you, I don't like you. Yeah. yeah. But and that's, like kind, that's basically it. That's all. That's the, he's giving this praise for them saying, I don't like you. Well, it's all really like, shallow. The he's one of like... This is already more substantive what he has done out. with the video the, than what happens in this area. Mm -hmm. But there's this one guy you can steal from every couple of you hours. You stole that guy's stuff so much. He was so mean. <laughs> yeah, this is really funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same guy. What, I don't even know just like regenerate and you can steal it again? Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. You need, like to, <laughs> you need to prompt like a reload of the area. So as long as you, you know, go just do like a fast travel anyway, he'll have reloaded. Yeah. Out in. It's honestly unfortunate yeah. that you don't get to spend more wow, time. Wow, what a really that cool. They don't utilize this one. Is, I had just... nothing but mockery for this terrible club scene in my playthrough. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yo, it's so cool. <laughs> just oh, the like, idea okay. that, like, okay, we praise loser. 
we praise the game for the existence of places that she might have hung out at. That, that well, was and then he talked to S. Smuggler like once yeah. about one thing. But like, this is what I mean about breaking it up. It's like how how difficult do you think that would have been to code you know, a model of person and voice actor delivers three or four lines and then you click A on him and they play. That's what they did, and now you're like, wow, what great rich history in this area is related to this character. Wow. Which makes me feel bad about the expectations. Yeah. I don't really know this guy's history with the medium or anything, or like what games he's played or not. But it feels like I feel like you'd very easily expect better if I showed you just a few games, you know? No. Yeah. Well, um, another thing that's kind of thrown me off is that you just said, uh, I, you know, I wish we spent more time here. It's like, you can spend as much time as you want. There's nothing here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no it's, reason for you to spend any it's, time It's here. almost like he's he's almost there. It's like, think a bit more about why you said you wish you could spend more time. It's like, what you really want is you wish there was more things here, that you wish there was more depth, more things to discover, more things to complete. But, you know, it's nothing. It's a nothing place. It's honestly unfortunate that you don't get to spend more time here, that they don't utilize this environment more. But after you steal Slero's fortune, there's really no coming back to Kanto Bite. No, it's like, like I, I, said, wonder, Zero... yeah. I wonder what he sees in Kanto Bite that makes me... You think, just, you like, just gave oh, us the list. Only, oh, I, I, I guess that <laughs> was is. it. Yeah. Yep. Smuggler. She has club, some history and here. A guy who says he doesn't like you. Which, yeah, that's crazy. A whole planet, and we get that. Hell yeah. If it's meant to be a tutorial mission level, okay. But I feel like we could have done way, and we could have done, yeah, done way better. Way. They you were can capable. utilize it for the same purpose. But Even with we the could limits, have done way more with it. Of the game as is, they could have done better. Um. Remember, they, they lock off, they, for some reason, don't let the merchants sell anything interesting, which they totally could if they wanted to. They don't let mm -hmm. you um, interact with people in any kind of interesting way. You can't do just small, what, make one side quest of interest, right? Like, oh, can you help me find my fucking pet Uba who's running around somewhere? And it's like the basic test of being able to do some platforming quickly and capture something. Something like that. How to yeah. find things, Nick's vision, how to find things around corners or in a warehouse. How do you find out which box has the thing in it? Oh, use Literally, Nick's vision. Press left alt or whatever to activate. These are really Nick's basic vision. video game concepts. What about a guy that... who's like gives you a riddle every day? He's a friend of hers and they just gives you a riddle. So it's just something for your brain to go, hmm, a riddle. <laughs> no. Which, by the way, is not more complicated than what they already have, but it is more. Because there's nothing to do with a lot of these NPCs. You press A, 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 and then leave. We, we can't make it less complex, or it might lose the 7 out of 10 seal of approval, I guess. <laughs> I, I, I vaguely recall that you have to at least use Nyx a little bit to steal the 100 credits at the start, right? You don't have like, to. Is that supposed to be your tutorial? You can no? do whatever you want. As in, like, you can yeah. pick credits up off random boxes, or you can sell a bunch of junk that you find. They get, that's the idea in Canto Bite, the tutorial area, to make 100 credits. You can do that with betting on the Fathia races, you can do it by stealing. Um, the, the funny thing is you can't do it in any honest ways, or I guess gambling is honest, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Yeah. Nobody's doing it with the gambling because it's not reliable. Instead, like most people will just steal it, steal it, steal it, and they make you they make you steal from the cops only. <laughs> like this, you know, I wonder like, if the game would let you do that. A cab guys. It's just funny you because make a save and get all your money through gambling. I guess I wonder if they even enable that to be possible. Yeah, I wonder if there's a cap or something, but uh. A wealthy crime syndicate, so it's not going to be simple for Kay to just waltz into the vault, take all the money, and get out of it. She's going to... She pretty much does do it that, It was though. actually that's that, probably... yeah, but that's what she does. Yeah, the door, like, where he took his screenshot thingy, the door's just right there to the right. It's just got a little grate. It's just like a little yeah. fence, and you just kind of... Essentially, you walk right in, and you just take it. It actually is shockingly simple. You have to be real smart about how she does this. <laughs> I like that. That was, that was yeah, pretty good. good stuff. Yeah, it's fun. That's some good editing. His, his visual gags are really nice. I like. Yeah, that. pretty good. Tons of security agents guarding this place, so it's a good thing that Kay could probably punch out an elephant with her offhand. This girl has the force of a rocket launcher in the knuckles. Again, I do like this I, game, but I like that. I said, I mean, I feel like that's kind of a weird issue that the game shows. I, I, it's weird that this scrawny little girl can. Beat this the is shit one that out everyone of everyone on, in the think. galaxy through armor. It's yeah. like that's actually really weird. That makes that kind of well, yeah. That other games have to deal with this. You have to find a way around. You can't just do this. Uh, it, it, you you need like something. You know, training, history, really bulky guy, or using weaponry or equipment. Everyone tries to get around this that are good, but they just gave up with oh. this one. 
if you simply must have it this way, the least you could do is convey the force properly. Because these punches do not feel like they're hitting anywhere near as hard as they probably <laughs> should. Little, that's some true. of the little Get slappy done, things. Done, a little yeah. taser. Give her Convey some, like, a the force. That she the can butt use. of the gun. That's what it should have been. It's the easiest mm. fucking thing. You've got to yep. put the gun up to them and use the stunny feature on it, and they go, Bleh, and then they just fall over, you know? Not she, her like, haymaker. She always has the gun. Just incorporate that. There was no reason not to. Yep. It comes with a couple of flaws, and this is absolutely one of them. Uh, a lot of the game revolves around stealth combat, and all of the takedown animations are absolutely hilarious. She's got to be hitting a pressure point or something. These guys just like power off after she touches them. You've also got the ability to shoot them with a stun blast, which is somehow more realistic than the takedown animation. Or if you don't want to attack them, you can use K's marketable mm. plushie. I mean, somehow more realistic than the takedown animation. I'm not sure what he yeah, means I'm by thinking that. thinking about that. More, I guess it's more realistic that a stun gun stuns people than it is realistic that she could reasonably knock people I, out effectively. I agree. But like the saying stun gun that is... somehow, I'd be like, well, yeah, that, yeah, you know. I think that just lines up. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's that's... saying that because he's trying to lampshade the fact that, you know, it's a sci fi stun gun, but I don't think you really need to. I, I mean, what's kind yeah, of funny is. I don't we... know if anyone's immersion is broken, broken by the stun gun in Star Wars. No, I, no, it's no, fine no. by me. Yeah. I mean, companion, Nyx to distract them. They're gonna make so much money. After flicking a couple of guards in the head and sending them to the Shadow Realm, Kay makes it to the vault where she learns that the crew she took this job from isn't exactly who we thought they were. Or just pay me. We're the Rebel Alliance. So? Oh, also, yeah, she took a job from the crew and then there's like a whole, uh, whatever. It was actually a group of rebels who posed as thieves and tricked Kay into helping them get into Slero's mansion to save one of the captured rebels. Just for some context, if you know anything about the movies, mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. game is set between the events uh -huh. of Empire Strikes Back yep. and Return of the Jedi. So yeah, the which is hilarious. Empire rebels fight is super relevant. Eh, I mean, it's barely in the game, <laughs> I'm just saying. It, it happens yeah. intermittently Yeah. in the background mostly, but... The game itself is not necessarily an Empire versus Rebels story, but... I mean, except at, at the, the end, end, when it definitely it, is. Yeah, at the end it is. Yeah. Because they couldn't fucking help themselves to make it's it that. <laughs> it's a Rebellion not. versus Empire versus Java story is what it really is, depending on your end. Look at all these... <laughs> look at all these syndicates. Isn't that cool? It's anyway, it helped the Rebels now. It's like, oh, yeah, but the me. canon yeah. is clearly uh, Crimson Dawn, not Java. That's, that's non-canonical. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> would say the you canon is the game really crashes because you have no I mean, when you when you have um no rep with anyone that's the canon. Yeah, I, mean, I did that it did not crash so maybe it's because it's been updated oh. but maybe they um, fixed it yeah. what the, happened well so the fa sad fact is i've done both full rep on everyone and zero rep on everyone and you get the same result it's the fucking crimson dawn saves you because they like uh, they oh, like they Hira. anyway yeah they like, I like crimson dawn yeah and Kira even says, like, uh, we have, you know, we got plans for you, or, or that you're, uh, you'll be important in the events to come, even though she sent a death squad after you. And also, I mean, <laughs> that's not going to be the case. This is a dead end. This will be a narrative dead end. Well, and also, Amelia Clark's fucking agent should tell her to stop by <laughs> going into Star Wars and Marvel. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> Work on other things. Try other stuff. There's just, I mean, that's the big thing going on in the entire universe, right? So it comes up a lot. Once well, K finds entire... out, she... Um, well, I mean, the entire it... universe. Well, it's just it's, funny, I'd it's... say wrong on both counts. It doesn't come up a lot. In the galaxy as well. But it's also, whatever. He gets reasonably <laughs> mad, and the rebels, instead of, I don't know, explaining it to her or taking her out, just decide to screw... Well, okay... To be fair, they're uh, times of the essence. They're, they're literally inside the vault. They should probably leave. But the criticism would be, why the hell didn't they just tell her, we're going to pay you, we're just collecting someone. You know, it's simple as that. And then, of course, there's a the question of, why the hell didn't they take her with them? They just left her in the vault? That was a bit mean. They even re register that that was mean later when you find them, and they don't have an excuse for that. Because they're the rebels, they're the good guys. They wouldn't do that, but they did do that. I guess she held them at gunpoint and was like... Well, they lied to her. Um, I, I guess she's being yeah. stupid, but they're also... They should be a little bit more accepting of why she's mad. You know what I mean? It's Maybe just her like, stupidity, it's just fucked like, everywhere. It, it crossed the threshold. I'm like, we're, like, we'll pay... You want to do this now? Right here? This second? with the Why arm? didn't they like, say stuff to... like that? We will pay you. We will pay you. It's gonna... Instead, he's like, we're the rebels. Yeah, like, it's not... hard. It's hard to know where the blame is because everyone's retarded. Well, yeah, so. the right is so shit. So, <laughs> yeah. 
screw her over, just stun gun her, and leave her to get caught? We don't have time for this. Danny, wait. That was also pretty funny that she pulls the gun, and do you see Kay's reaction time? Like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I wonder, does the finger on... um. Uh, sweet baby lady on the right. Does would does does, she, does her finger pull the trigger when she actually shoots? Probably not. Probably not. But also, I um, want to. I want to. I got to double. I got to know. I have to know. Explaining it to her, or explaining it to her, or taking her out. Just decide to screw her over. Just stun gun her and leave her to get caught. We don't have time for this. Danny, wait. <laughs> It doesn't, yeah, no. doesn't look like it. Didn't expect. I think it twitched slightly. Nah, maybe I was thinking <laughs> nah. thing, um, Not even a tremble. <laughs> uh, what I was gonna say as well is it's kind of funny. They leave her for dead, but they didn't take her money or her blaster. You think? Think you may as well. <laughs> and no. That's when old slickback Slero shows up, and he is not too happy about K breaking into this place. But what he doesn't know is that K's middle name is plot armor yeah and they don't even take a gun yeah. before starting to <laughs> yeah. talk to her Ugh, it's so stupid it's all stupid <laughs> that's when he just gets walloped by baby yoda oh i guess they did have a gun but she took it back off them which is even worse i mean um, it was right there very Fuck easily she was able to just smack him once and he i hate that shit I, when i was playing it, i was yeah. like there's just no way they'll be able to capture her it's impossible they, they don't know what they're dealing uh, with the universe it's conspires in her favor BD1? No, that's the other, um, Nyx. They do that way too much with the little guy. They don't always, you don't always need a little guy. I can be a little guy. I can do like, so, this. So, right, counterpoint, Rags right there just proved it. Uh, it works every single time. They can do this I like forever. Him. I like Nyx. Yeah. yeah, and you should. I like Nyx. It's yeah, okay. it works. Uh, yeah, I put the... Cheese. Our mark, ladies and gentlemen. Look at his it smile. Works. It works every single time. Smile. So. The fact that we're pointing it out, like, uh, it has to come with the caveat, like, of course they do it every fucking time, because it works. Sad oh, face. Put him, uh, give him Beautiful. a cute face, and then everyone will feel better about how shit the game is. Like a cool yeah. sound, like a little guy would do. Because they always do it like a sound. That's just, that's just a little thought, a little side tangent. Kay quickly runs out of the room and starts fighting her way through Slero's mansion. Tons of these Zarek Besh agents come know, flooding in, but we're able to make it to Slero's Prize ship, the Trailblazer. We jump into the cockpit and press every button imaginable, jumping to the nearest planet. And this is when the Trailblazer crash lands on the- Man, he's super into, like, I guess it's fair, like, yeah. sh I... showmanship part of the video, but, like, it's just not mm. exciting at all when you play it. Yeah, it's <laughs> lame. It's you really lame. You get the experience of that excitement or tension. Especially um, when she gets someone watches under... this, they'll be very disappointed by how lame and shitty it is when he- yeah. <laughs> when when they play it, especially themselves. when she gets on the trailblazer, it's like, well, it can't be that much different from a speeder or something, and then she just flies off. I mean, yeah, that's. I mean, it probably <laughs> is though. <no>. Yeah, <laughs> it's a spaceship. It's a lot of buttons on these ships, uh, but you know, she no, just pilots that thing from now on, so it's fine. Don't worry about it. He was excited by it. Fair enough. First explorable open world planet in Star Wars history. Whoa! Oh, yeah. wow. Wow. wow, it's the music. Wow. Mm -hmm. What right. happens oh. if someone gets on the road? <laughs> I, I like it's how the speed of it. You see, like, the speed it was, was very really slow cool. speed. Yeah, it was like, it was, like, <laughs> it was, it was groobling. Like, is how you describe its movement. <laughs> yeah, look at him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at him walking around. Look at all those Incredible. NPCs. Incredible. Wow. I don't anything. know how to explain it. Like, once you've played long enough into Shara, it becomes very fucking boring. Like, it's, uh... It's very boring. They do not do anything to really keep you there. No. Shara is well-crafted and alive. Why? Full <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why would you say that? <laughs> Why would you lie to me? What was the number on the check? I must know. What, what struck me so hard into Shara is like, wow, there's like a hundred people in this huge cantina and I can't do anything with any of them. That's <laughs> they crazy. just stand there. They're, I, they're I keep... indistinguishable from decoration or furniture. Yeah. I keep mm. harping on it, but... L let me steal from every single one of them. Yeah. And if not, at least more than one singular person per bar. You can balance Why that too. The more that you steal, the more people note it. Like you just have a yes. background AI thing of calculating just how much people notice Nyx, and then they see where Nyx goes to, you know, back. It's like, man, my money keeps disappearing whenever that fucking gremlin is in the room. Who does he? Who it's owns so that thing? Because I think you can steal like five items in total. 
if I'm maybe I think that's the ones that I got. I got some credits. There's some weird you stuff could, like, you can you, sell. You could lose favor with grenades. the bartender, and it could affect your general reputation. Or, you know, reputation outside of the fucking syndicates. Just generally speaking, people just tend yeah. not to like you, and they treat you worse. I think this is where the give and take of game design often comes into play. Where if you have limitations in terms of your studio and your direction, you should decide, all right, these hub areas, they're not going to be places where you can interact with much. The purpose in terms of our design is just going to me that they're, they're these very immersive places where you pick up jobs, return jobs, do a lot of dialogue sequences, do some you know drinks, like immersive kind of stuff like that. But we're going to put all of our effort into making the stuff you actually go and do really, really good. The problem is that if you want to take that approach and the stuff that you're going to do is really shitty and lame and dull and boring, it just sort of highlights that it's all shitty and lame and dull and boring. When I'm going back to the hub and I can't really interact with much super meaningfully, it's more like a chatty, chatty, immersive kind of place. Then I'll be like, oh, that, that's just what everything is. It's not like they're using this to distinguish itself from the actual like, gameplay sections out there in the open world. It's all just like this. Pretty much. Um, I, I don't want to get too almost derpy about it, but it's like the more things to do, it feels like the more, I guess, you would maybe call alive. But there's just so little. And then of the things that you can do, it's actually shocking how empty they are. Yeah. Or strong. Of the things that made me love this game, the worlds are at the top of my list. I easily spent 10 hours on just this Whoa. planet alone, exploring wow, 10 hours. and engaging with the side activity. When Star I don't think you have a choice but to spend at least that much if you're gonna go through everything that you can do there. Like, there's so yeah, much I'm fucking busy hard, work yeah. that you will have to take at least a decent chunk of hours to get through it. Star Wars first came yeah. out, it blew people's minds with its creative worlds, races of aliens, and fantastic ideas all wrapped up into this universe. Look, Theo, the possible. Clone Wars. The thing people like. Look, no, this is the Clone Wars people like. This is, yeah, this is the okay Clone yeah. Wars. Tata Wait, there's different one. ones? Yeah, the Tatakovsky <laughs> Now, one. how can you not notice by the animation alone, you fucking loser? Yeah. I, I don't know, any, I haven't seen any of it. <laughs> This Just admit you're a loser, it's okay. Shut up. <laughs> For a lot of people, it made them wonder who they could be in a world like this. But there was a moment when Star Wars changed forever. And that's when George Lucas sold the Star Wars IP. Okay, you're right up to a point. What are you going to say? Okay. <laughs> what's, what's the next part? <laughs> to Disney. And it's pretty safe to say that since then, Star Wars has been on a little bit of a decline. Not <laughs> money, though. Money up. Well, Say it. Oh, well, actually. Not, oh, actually. Money up? I don't think that's, that's an interesting that. point. Uh, yeah. Is I think mm. overall, surely everyone agrees at this point, Star Wars is less green than it was. Like, it, as a potential. There is yeah. no way that... Force from... Like it's made mm -hmm. a million dollars. Yeah. Now, they're scared now they're canceling of the show. Film. They're yeah. scared to release a film to confirm how much <laughs> less money they're going to make. Yeah. That. Hasn't been a movie. Well, since, and Outlaws um, has done badly. Know? It's 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 I failed significantly yep. compared to what they were after. And then it's like, so what else we got? It's like, well, I guess the Jedi Survivor and Full Order. The, those those would have been successes. Uh, that shared people with want the TV show. Yeah. yeah. Well, this yeah, is the thing. Yeah. There's caveats yeah. everywhere because even people would say like yeah. the sequels were successful. You're like, mm. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. yes, and uh, not so. Well. And then you get Solo, and then you get the TV shows just fucking slithering out like no yeah. I, I don't know I, I, it, it feels they are really lucky they can just hide behind their own streaming servers with those I feel like you mean like not they... giving numbers away and stuff yeah because they, they there's no one else where they're like oh we're gonna drop your show because it sucks they can just do whatever they I mean, want basically you're right it's just that we do get indicators such as oh yeah for acolyte, sure for sure the acolyte will not be renewed it's like why would they but do the... that hmm there must be a be... reason yeah, I'm just saying it could be like way worse if they would do it with other people or other streaming services except their own, besides their own. Uh, riches up large. I wouldn't say I'm personally a fan of what Disney has done to Star Wars. Sometimes it can feel a little lifeless. And also, they committed the character. What was that flash there? Why, what, that. why did he show that? I saw that. Why are you show showing Tartakovsky while talking about what Disney's done? Yeah, yeah, this was before. This was like, what, 2003? Something like that? I think so. Mm -hmm. Two or three, yeah, I think so. 
be a fan of what Disney has done to Star Wars. Sometimes it can feel a little lifeless, and also... What the... Dude, what was that? The oh, that's that? literally a frame. Uh, yeah, that's what I was trying to... Either, you... either include it in your video, or don't. All right, Why, I'll find man? Out what it is. Can someone I'll go find, find what that is? <laughs> yep, I'm on it. <laughs> Thank you. That's just... Uh, That's so annoying, man. Oh my but god, it's the most replayed point in the video. <laughs> Shocking. Who would have replayed? Guess it worked. Some okay. clarification. I mean, the fact that it flickers means that it was probably always going to be in there. As in, like, it's not a yeah. correction. Plus, and also... So... I'm not gonna bother on our end. No. They committed the character assassination of Luke Skywalker. In hey. Mm. hey! Hey, look at you. Yeah, you do recognize that. Uh, Yay. In broad daylight sat right behind his ass at Ford's Theater on April 14th, 1865. But for all of its many, many, many faults, Disney has consistently nailed one thing, and that is the visual portrayal of the Star Wars universe. Even That's like the no thing that annoys me the most is that it's like, yeah, because they've just relied essentially as much as possible on OT aesthetics. They're mm -hmm. not working within the conceptual basis as such. They're just taking the exactties of what's going on and staying exactly. within those limits. They're not expanding beyond, like, the audiovisual basis of what makes Star Wars what it is, and extrapolating from that into like novel locations and environments and ideas, they're just staying within. They're yeah, they're wallowing in the OT. That. Not talking about this Clone Wars. Then why'd you, why'd you, you put the why'd visual you there? there? <laughs> Are you moron? Instead you, of edit, why you edited the text over the thing that this, you said? I don't mean this thing yeah, that I'm showing. Right yeah, this edit. might be the the first time we've come across many people who will put a visual that contradicts what they say. We've never come across someone who will acknowledge that and then do it anyway. <laughs> like, That's like, so he weird. Had to put the he had to. It's put more text over it on the fucking timeline. Yeah. Like, That's so weird. Why? Just put another clip. That I don't. I'm, I'm confused. Also, do you think that's not talking about this Clone Wars is peak, or not talking about this Clone Wars is peak? I think there's only one intelligible way to read the sentence. Well, yes. <laughs> 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 but what about me? Cash I'm the grab Slotney Plus exclusive. Wait a minute. Is he is he saying they are or they aren't slop? Consistently nailed one thing, and that is the visual portrayal of the Star Wars universe. Even within their most soulless, cash grab, slot me plus exclusive shows, they have some of the most inspired set design. Uh, inspired? Uh, isn't it the opposite? Even, it's mostly yeah, it, not inspired at all. Even <laughs> if you were to call it good, <laughs> on, on any grounds on which you would call it good, inspired is absolutely not something I think you could say about it. It's inspired by the original that. Star Wars, I guess. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean by exactly. it's the opposite. Is that it's just it's just picking up the leftovers of, you know, it's shitting on the shoulders of giants. That's what we call it. Also, wait, wait, set design. Don't they usually use that giant dome where they just the project? Volume? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the they'll probably design. have an actual set. Good for them. I think. I mean, this is not a great visual for this, by the way. We can't even see the set. Mm-hmm. I've ever seen. Or like that little Star Wars place in Disney World where it feels like you're walking around in the Star Wars universe. They have a lot of money, that's true. Uh, I feel like it's pretty difficult to fuck up when you've got sort of artists that are like, they live and breathe for this sort of thing. Um, so it's right. like visual direction within a piece of art, like a game or a film, is rather different to placing iconography from films mm. in a location like both in terms of the experience I mean, this and what goes into making it like i don't necessarily want to like discredit this work but it's not quite the same thing it's Go also on, not um it's just not unique like we, we, this isn't the first like didn't yeah. they do like a hogwarts one of this or or um they have, like, uh, a place so. Harry Potter or whatever uh what's the place called where you buy your wand that street alley or whatever Diagon. Diagon Alley. Yeah, they have one of them, I think, in one of these places. Yeah, that's like, at Universal. Yeah, point. Oh, I'm not. I'm just saying that this is not unprecedented. We we, we Avatar one. Isn't that like the most celebrated? Yeah, there's like a Nintendo one as well in yeah. Universal. Yeah. The thing is, is that they have a lot of keys, right? And they can jangle fifty keys in front of you because they have so many keys. It doesn't mean that they're not just key jangling the whole time you're not getting anything out of it right like when you go to star wars land it's just a bunch of things you vaguely recognize 
and that's it. Yeah, I'd be willing to entertain. There's something about the composition of the the, the way they've created this whole thing, but I'm, I'm waiting for. I just have to wait for him to tell me about it. It's like, oh, look at this. How they did this. How they did this. As opposed to, look, Millennium Falcon. I'd be like, yeah, look mm -hmm. at it. That's great. Star Wars. Yeah, it's right there. <laughs> wow. He's vadering. Why is it here? At very least, whoever's in charge of the visuals for Star Wars lately is incredibly passionate, understands the universe, and knows how to bring it to life very well. And this. It's funny. It's all the visual choice was. Stuff guy killing stormtroopers but all right it's Why mostly it stuff like... we've seen before and the new stuff is really generic and not at all impressive and a lot of the times it's more cringe than cool i don't even know what there's probably been some cool stuff here and there but i mean the fact that i can't I really it's, it's felt sterile any... to me a lot of the time with the recreation yeah, it's very generic and bland mm. but the best First, is what oh... they've copied pretty much Open world experience for Star Wars is another example of that. Waking up after the crash landing, it's pretty clear that the Trailblazer's pretty banged up and is not going anywhere anytime soon. But good thing we're immediately you can't introduced. Impress me with this. It takes an hour or so, mm -hmm. and you can get it back to a landing pad somehow. So you you can't impress me with this shit anymore. Yeah, it's like, like yep, computers are good these days. Wow, look at look at this big rendered vista. Incredible. Anyway. Wow. Wow. Moving on with my life. To this wet rag of a man mechanic, Waka. I'm sorry. And he offers to fix it. Wait, up so is this what rags would be if he was wet? Is that what they're saying? <laughs> wet rags? <laughs> I, I would be wet rags. I would be a moist dogette. Moist. Trailblazer for no Rubby. credits or really anything in return at all. Probably like the least suspicious guy I've ever met. Like and he says he'll fix. Do you like how everybody yeah, acknowledges pretty... how retarded this is, but they just did it anyway? <laughs> it's like okay, yeah, it's, like you don't have a choice. Yeah, because Kay's an idiot. Kay's a moron because you don't have branching paths. If like you should be able to shoot this guy on the spot, or capture him, or tie him up, or trust him, or like that should that would like if you had branching pathways in the story, that seems like something you could reasonably do. You know. Nah, if it wasn't Waka, then you'd have to find somebody else, and then there'd be like, if you go with Waka, here's where the 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 story goes, and if you go with the other person, here's where the story goes, and they're mostly similar-ish, but there's they're kind of running parallel, but you'd get different characters to work with, and it might change how the betrayal plays out. Picks up the ship, but he needs parts to do so, and suggests that we go and find someone named Gorak to help. Now, Gorak is all the way over here in this city area. And walking all that distance would take all day. I don't know. How are we supposed to get all the way over there? Waka? What are we even supposed to do? Um, come on, really? Come on now. Feels good. Is, that, like, is, this a, is this a joke? That, that's a long way to travel. How could we possibly expedite movement between locations? A uh, vehicle! A shitty speeder. <laughs> What a novel concept, use... a vehicle to get around faster in the open world game. Well, I'm going to be honest, <laughs> I would expect Slero to have something better. Introducing the, the speeder, of which is the cause of much frustration in this game, this way is definitely a people's mm -hmm. day moment. Yeah, <laughs> like, yep, it, it, that does beat walking. Yeah. Uh, yep. so, so to its credit, it's fun for the first 30 seconds. True. Yeah, well, I didn't have fun for this city because I <laughs> went off rails too quickly. Apparently, the game said I was fucking up in the first. Well, that's that's your problem as a gamer. Yeah, that's it was my you. fault. That's obviously. a you issue. It's your, yeah, your yeah. fault, really. Issue. This is, this is an open world Star Wars game, so I don't know where you got off thinking that you could <laughs> just go wherever you funny. wanted once they give you the vehicle. Is uh, there are like ten different moments in this game where you're you you'd say to yourself like, I have done the tutorial, and you're like, No, not yet. No, not yet. No, not yet. No, not yet. <laughs> no, no, not yet. No, no. Uh, one of my favorite it, rags. It feels like you're not done it. When you um you got into space, I think Metal had the exact same moment. But yours was funnier because of how mad you got. You wanted to go somewhere in space. You went up into space, and then ND is like, "All right, hyperdrives to Akiva or whatever." And you were like, "No." And then the game just was like, <laughs> "No, you have to." And you're like, "But I don't want to." It was like, "You have to." And you're like, "But I." <laughs> and uh, both you belted the same thing. You shot off and then shot right back. Because yep, because <laughs> the game is retarded. Uh, I just, just love how he's shooting this like it's Guga, right? Like it's a steak, you know. Also That's just... where I know the fucking music from. It's Thank the Guga you. music. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. This is also just not a, it's not a cool enough look in the speeder for this. It's so normal. It looks ramshackle, almost. 
Kind of, yeah. Like, yeah like imagine, a, imagine you could upgrade it properly in no. cosmetics and make it look cool no. or better. And pro no, okay, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. So, so wait a second, wait a second. Th this ship, we, we um, K steals it from um, Lero. Fuck that the big bad, right? Yeah, Lero. Lero. Yeah, yeah. I, I completely forgot his name. How do you not know Slyro, buddy? Oh, oh. <laughs> He's Terrible. the best character or something. So, so K steals the ship, gets away with it, but the speeder's on the ship. Yes. And apparently the ship is, is like important to this guy. It's like, this is like my prize ship. Why does he have this piece of shit speeder on his ship? Don't know. It's, I don't even okay. think that. I, <laughs> yep. I, I'm pretty sure the speeder is just not <laughs> moving <there>. on. <laughs> like, it, the speeder just magically fucking appears anyway, so. Okay. If you even slightly okay, like Star Wars, I would suggest trying this game out just so you can ride around the planets on a speeder. I think. I, uh, what, but there's nothing to do. Like the world is empty. You're just, you're just running around in an empty sandbox, and like you can't play with the sand. Imagine advocating that <laughs> you can spend the fucking. Someone wasn't listening to the music. For the price tag, you you should be happy enough to just ride around. Fuck me. Yeah. Okay. Since open world games became popular, a lot of games have come out that feel pointlessly open world. Like oh, I yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 On that, we agree. Yes. You got no interest in running around an empty forest for the thousandth time just because you wanted to pack your game full of time sinks. I think a lot of people. I'm oh, so a fucking. Game full I am, of time sinks. I'm very confused wow. right now. <laughs> yeah. I can think of a really great example, bro feel this way where you think you hate open world games when really you just hate the ones that have no business being open world but it's game <laughs> okay this is getting oh. weird like <laughs> <laughs> that hole is just getting deeper bro when's the turn hmm I'm a little confused like this that bring to life a highly stylized fictional set of worlds that remind me why I liked the open world format in the first place. It's not the same thing we've seen a hundred times before, and the open world format. I guess he's right. I haven't played one this bad in a very long time. <laughs> they, because uh, we've said this several times now, because a lot of people say like, ah, oh, your standard Ubisoft experience, like it's worse, worse than that. Nah. <laughs> format is used purposefully here to let you feel what it would be like to live in the Star Wars universe. Uh -huh. I believe this, this is again. something they get right not only in how the worlds look, but what's in them too. We find Gorak in the private lounge of the nearby cantina, which is where we learn that Gorak is the lead. Can you believe? Sorry, that my brain processed that for a while. It's like not only yeah. do they get how things look, but what is in them too. <laughs> like, mm. I, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of mostly. I assume right. he means like aesthetics and content. Of course, yeah, no. My point is like, how could again. you deliver that in such a way that it's like, oh, they managed to get those both. Like, yeah, that should be standard. What the fuck? Sort of the point. <laughs> Leader of the dominant crime syndicate in the area called the Pikes. Now, the Pikes are one of the four crime syndicates you can work with throughout this game, and with every syndicate comes a reputation. A lot of this game's side missions and even some of the main missions will have you choosing sides on which of these four factions to work with. Doing yeah, jobs and making choices that will help a syndicate will mm. raise your reputation level, but... I think that, like, before he goes any further, I think this really is one of those super important, like, fundamental, are you able to engage with video games honestly and realistically, is by describing the faction system in Star Wars Outlaws you know, for what it actually is, not just what it tells you it is, or what you've been told by Ubisoft that it's it is. It's the video game version of the thing we've come across a million times with films, where people will describe to you what they were told by the film, as opposed to what happened. Yeah, like, can you separate your own opinion from what you've been told? The character yeah. did really? this, and the character is this, and it's like, no, the character did these things, which makes them this, not what they told you they are. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Seeing people describe this reputation system so glowingly over and over again has been mind-numbing. It's insane how it's crazy because it's fucking awful. It is awful, <laughs> yeah. Doesn't fucking do much. Generally, if you help one, you're hurting another, so that will lower your reputation on the other end. The higher you get your reputation with a faction, the more you unlock rewards as well as gain access to their territory. Like, this may as well be an ad right now. This is how it reads. This, yeah. this, there's nothing here that's analysis. It doesn't even feel like he's engaged with it. But the lower the reputation... But the lower the reputation goes, the less you get, and the more likely they are to just shoot you on sight. At the lowest point, they'll actually hire kill squads to come and find you. Right now, we're trying wow. to get on the Pike's good side, but Gorak seems to think we don't know enough about the criminal underworld and won't work with us. So new to this world, 
Come back when you're not. Yeah, and there's nothing you could do about that. That just plays out that way. You can't not choose to mention Waka. Waka doesn't inform you that you shouldn't mention his name. There's no, mm -hmm. like... But you should. There's no amount of any leverage you can get beforehand that's different. You just... It just plays out the same every fucking time, because nothing... My One of my favorite ones, Rags, actually, was one of yours where, um... You know that cutscene at the beginning of Kajimi? Uh, most people here will be familiar with it, where... They say, like, you work for the Crimson Dawn, and everyone was critical of the scene because Case, like, uh, wh what? I, no. I don't I, I no. totally don't. Um, you can do <laughs> no, that uh -huh. cutscene while wearing the Crimson Dawn uniform. <laughs> <laughs> it's the dumbest no. shit. Like, you have their emblem front and center, golden, shining in their face, and you're like, I don't work for the Crimson Dawn. <laughs> Why would you think that? <laughs> and it yeah, changes I mean, if nothing. You if you wanted to do this right, you would have a story that changes. Like, like the, the main the main story beats would change depending on your various factions and your reputation. Absolutely, with them. I think that's baseline because for, this is the selling point as as well as the open world. Yeah, because I mean, I think you mentioned in your playthrough, Mauler, that you were you were maxed out with the huts and you still had to go fight them at one point, and you're just like, well, oh, I hate. I guess I'll just. Oh, it's, uh, it's funny. Main story just forces you to go against some factions at, at some times. Yeah, I went with the Huts. Rags went <laughs> with Crimson Dawn, and both of us had a story mission that forced us to subvert or you know uh, betray them. Yeah. It's like, why the fuck are you making me do this? I don't want to yeah, do this. In a good game, you would be like, oh, you want something from the Huts? Well, I'm like super buddies with them. Let me go talk to them and see if we can figure something out without having to shoot up the people I like. Because just... we don't do that. Yep. Yeah. So th there's so, also a question. Um, a few minutes back, I decided to look it up while we were while we were watching this. Um, in the last episode that, that we did on this game, uh, I think we mentioned that this game sold. Um, was it a million copies in the first month? And a million yes. copies, yes. something like that. Yeah. Yeah, a million copies, seventy dollars a copy. You know, rough estimate that gets you seventy million in the first month. The game's budget was three hundred million, and so that's kind of why this game is viewed as a failure, right? Is this? It's it's not making as much. I think back. it should be viewed as a failure, and... even if it did make money, because it's not made any yeah. near <laughs> as much money as they'd want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think they wanted to sell like five million, and to be honest, it'll probably sell five million over the course of the next year. But that's that's different than the launch window, right? I mean, so plus, I'll... when they have to open it up to Steam, which was definitely not in the mm -hmm. original, you know, hope list, so they're yep. going to lose thirty percent of all those sales. Um, revenue just because of Steam. So I looked this up. I, I can put it in the chat if you want to use it for something, Mauler, but I decided to check it, check out um, the same numbers for Star Wars Jedi Survivor because when Jedi okay. Survivor came out, it made 800,000. It, it sold 800,000 units in the first month. And it was the same price. It was 70 bucks. And the budget for Jedi Survivor was also 200 million. Interesting. Um, and Jedi Survivor is, I mean, it's not a super amazing game, but it's a better game than this by far. I, yeah, I so it. It, 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 it seems like, you know, whether, whether or not the game's terrible or whether or not, or it's like a, it, it's an okay game. Um, Star Wars just isn't selling enough to justify how much money they're putting into it right now. Um, yeah, I, I mean, if Outlaws were a great game, it definitely would have sold more, but I think the sales are pretty not great anyway. As in, like, even I don't even know that the game being bad fully explains why they didn't sell more in in the initial uh, month. I guess you'd expect maybe maybe there'd be like a huge refund culture surrounding it, but um, there's still plenty of people who will play five hours. And uh, as we saw in the last episode, they'll be like, you know what, you should give this game a chance. It's actually really fun. Like it can pass a lot of smell tests for a lot of uh, people who play it. Um, mm -hmm. But like we were talking about it, so many people aren't going to complete this game while also saying it's good. Yep. So many people aren't going to yeah. know anything about yeah. a lot of the deeper mechanics. Well, not deeper. Uh, mechanics that are further away from your standard sort of run through the game. You have to go talk to particular people, go on crazy quests. And, you know, all the... um. I don't think anyone here except me probably did the uh, the veteran expert. Uh, the, the droid that you unlock the final set of um, abilities from. Like, I, I, don't I don't think so. I don't even think the mm -hmm. world, like the 99% of players aren't going to do that. And uh, what's funny, I guess, is that that was the best the writing got was uh, for me, it was with that droid. Um, the point being, it's interesting how, uh, how it's selling. And yes, yeah, Star Wars as an IP is not as reliable because they've done so much damage to it, I think is the only real reasonable conclusion you could come to. Just yeah, yeah. Someone in the chat said that. Uh... 
Star Wars isn't a free money machine anymore, and that's pretty much what it is because they expected to sell five million copies of this game in the in the first month, and they didn't get anywhere close to that. So I, I think at this point, it's not just that the um because yeah earlier in the video there, he was talking about just the state of Star Wars in general, and it's not just that the game is bad though the game is really bad. It's also that I think they have just too much expectations. Well, they should stop fucking around the at this point. Yeah. Should, uh, the the big combination of <laughs> things should be make the thing good, which I know is just revolutionary what? as a concept, but also Get make it here. a thing that people <laughs> want. Uh, I know those two things don't happen at the same time. You could have some in. I think I think it's safe to say Andal was not something people necessarily wanted, but it was good. Mm -hmm. And then you have something that like a Kenobi show. Yeah, people definitely wanted that, but it was not good. And having if we had a single project from them that we would say like, oh yeah, that's what the whole fan base wanted, and it was good. It's like no. It's just not happened, and, and thus since they've taken over, technically, I think you could argue that TFA would have been that, considering the results of it. But it didn't. Uh, I guess maybe if, if there's a third aspect of like stands the test of time or is considered a classic, like they've definitely not gotten that for that. Yeah, but people say like it's Ubisoft. It's like, what would you expect? It's like, I'm just saying, uh, relevant of companies, it's Disney. Like, what do you expect? You know, like we're never going to be able to. Yeah. Yeah, but still, it's not just Ubisoft because I mean, um, Jedi Survivor was made by EA, and it was a better game than this, and it still, you know, did not sell as much as they wanted it to sell. But I mean, at least EA EA got their money back because Microsoft handed EA three hundred million dollars to put it on um, Game Pass, so they at least made their money back. That, that's not happening with this one. Yeah, I'll, it looks like they're gonna try and make as much as they can out of it. They're just that's just the stage that they're in. How do we how do we lose the least amount of money on yeah. Star Wars Outlaws? What do yep. we got to do? Put it on Steam. Like that's that that's a good idea. Like okay, step one, step two. Yeah. Uh, maybe a little bit of a DLC to come out with a mission or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it kind of feels like Suicide Squad where it's it's just Ugh. like how do we bleed the least <laughs> basically? This did they just released the DLC for that for all the two hundred people that are still playing that game? Yep. <laughs> There's like two seasons. Didn't they make like two seasons for? Suicide I think, Squad? I think they're, on, they're on a third season now. They, they just released... Jeez. um, Ah, oh, fuck. Who was it they released? That one guy's Mrs. daughter, Mrs. who really shouldn't be a playable character. No, it, it, that, that's, that's, that's the previous season, Mrs. Freeze. Oh, see, I'm out of the loop, you see. Yeah, mm. they released... Um, fuck, was it... Was it Deadshot's daughter? Ba uh, basically... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I've seen it's like, images you know, and stuff. It looks cringe as fuck. I, I saw a bio it, as well. It was terrible. But all of them are in those games. That game, rather. Yeah, isn't isn't the whole point of of that character is that they're like young and innocent and they're not part of this? It's like, oh, now you can play them. Oh, no, badass right. lady with gun. <laughs> oh, Season time three. to go seek the competition. Most of your jobs or contracts will come through brokers in the world. Some of these are limited by faction reputation, but Danka here, who's the first one that you meet. We'll work with you whenever. She's currently got a contract from a miss. Yeah, it's kind of broken in that she's clearly like aligned it's weird. somewhat with the Crimson Dawn, and no matter what you do to the Crimson Dawn, she has no commentary for you. And you yep, can fail at contracts, you can betray people, she'll power. never say a thing. She's yep. just there to be like, well, I'm the NPC that tells you about the things you need so you can do the stuff. All right. In, in, Indeed, you are. Mm -hmm. in, a, in a better game, there would be like four of this character, one for each faction, and they, they'd all be the intro into the. Yeah, into and one the of them would say "fuck but, off" if you yeah. betrayed them like four times. They'd just be like, yeah, "I'm not exactly. interested yep. in giving you contracts. You're cunt. You, you've ruined everything." Yeah, they hate me now. The game, mm -hmm. the game should be willing to be. No, you have by your decisions, you have locked yourself off of being cooperative with one of these factions because, of course, you went and murdered a bunch of their people. And you keep doing it. They're not going to work with you. That's way you too. You need to do another playthrough, and if you want to try a different thing, this game is afraid of you having consequences for your actions. The most you get, which is, is the um... exact opposite of what you want in an open world game. I want there to be consequences well, for my actions. That's why I do that them. A reputation system that's a prominent part of the marketing. Yeah, did you, the, the 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 one vision of this is sort of almost in a thin way happens is that if you don't have excellent reputation you can't access like the big contracts that's it and the big contracts yeah. only refers to a good payout that's all mystery employer to go and steal oh i saw someone asking why is there no plushy link it's in the description it's all there we'll uh we'll chat about them a bit later probably but they are available but thanks still. for asking my dude don't you worry i haven't got like a bot that posted every once in a while though you got me there 
chat will have to find their way to the description. Uh, and I see how I didn't say description down below, because who knows? Maybe it'll be on top of the video in future. You never know. What's going to happen? Because YouTube's crazy. Some information from the Pikes. Now, this is where a good rep with the Pikes would come in handy because we could just walk straight in the door and take it. But because we don't, we've got to find a sneaky way into their little base. Sneaking into these districts is still pretty easy. It just requires some patience and bonking people on the head a bunch. You know what's funny is uh, all of us found it incredibly frustrating the first time we did it because just how... Like, it's all very crafted to be played one way, and so all of us trying yeah. different things kept getting punished, which is, like, fucking lame. Like, yeah, because this, yeah. this is one of the, the segments where they just uh, enter you and <clears throat> put you into a failed state. It's like, oh, you've been seen, uh, caught, and then you just get thrown back outside and just have to do it again. Well, uh, yeah, the, it, it, it's the same vent. They never actually board it out. They never figure out what's going on. It's like, oh. The best one is the Ashiga, where just to their right, there's a huge hole in the wall. <laughs> it's just like, oh, it's, yeah, we should probably put a guy on that, I guess. I don't know. Um, but yeah, the uh, the big thing is they prevent you from using your gun, which has your primary use of, like, stu like the, the stun takedown is really fucking useful for stealth, but you're not allowed it for some reason. It's, it's so useful, by the way, that you can take someone down who's right next to another person and they won't even notice. They'll just be like, huh. There, there goes yeah, but John. They... They give it an insanely long cooldown to keep you from abusing it. Oh, absolutely, yeah, they knew. That's, they knew. It's it, oh yeah, they knew, and they knew that the the best way to limit the player with this incredibly powerful tool is just to say, uh, yeah, value of cooldown seven trillion. Ha, mm -hmm. ha, ha. We are good game devs. It's, um, it's captured beautifully, and uh, when Ringy first enters this area, and he's just like, you know, you can't you, you, weapons off. You're not allowed to use them. And you're just like, why? <laughs> Why? <Yeah. laughs> there's, there's literally no reason. And then you step just far enough into a different, like, cross a border, and it's like, now nah, weapons are hot. And you're like, Why? Okay, yeah, I guess that works. <laughs> what was the reason for any of that? It's like, shut up. Huh? When they catch you, though, is when things get a little more difficult. And by Ooh. that, I mean not difficult at all, because this game has a huge balancing problem. I'm not generally somebody who goes out of their way to play hard games, but I like when a game is at least a little bit challenging. This game is so incredibly easy, it's kind this of annoying. This is very actually... funny footage. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm with him completely, and even on the hardest yeah. difficulty, yeah. what'll happen is like, it's just difficulty spikes. And when I say difficulty spikes, I don't even mean like levels. I mean just randomly the game will have all of them instantly kill you. And then randomly, oh, because most... the, the AI decides, uh, yeah. this time we hit you. It is like they're die. rolling a, a dice every time, and if they hit anything above a six, they'll insta kill you on hard difficulty. But you know, they have... I mean, that's the same way I died on just the other, the normal difficulty, when they just randomly all start hitting you. It's like, oh, guess I'll die now. Okay, do that again. I should have said above a five. I mixed up my own dice in my own <laughs> head. Sorry, I, this, uh, this doesn't make any fucking idiot. Fine. Okay, above a six on a d10. Sure. There you go. <laughs> Told you not to fuck up the dice in your head. But the, 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 uh, the thing is, I was thinking about it. I was like, oh, that's too often though. It's, it's like if it was a D10, it would be above eight. That that's then they can right. kill you. Because most of the time on hard, and... I was just running through. They didn't. They they miss all the time. You would so think that since you can just adjust the values for accuracy, one of the things they could do is say, oh, this faction is more accurate than this faction. These enemies are more accurate than these, you know, other enemies and stuff like that. <laughs> and the Empire, so at least make you... <laughs> they never hit you because Stormtroopers can't aim. <laughs> <laughs> Stormtrooper oh. bonked head. <laughs> Ruffle. Yeah. Up the difficulty <laughs> all the way up to the highest setting, and I still felt like I was God. Honestly, I wonder if this isn't, like, a bug or something. Because no matter what difficulty... Um, honestly... 10 times out of 11 when you say, is it a bug? It's it's just the way the game works. It's just bad design. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. just how it works. You're on, you can always kill somebody in three hits, which is insane because you can't even kill them with three shots from the blaster. I was trying to say like a punch from k -Vess is stronger than getting shot. I think that this is a, this is a balance slash video game thing. That is a very complex and long discussion on how come my punches are really deadly, but my well, uh, but my blasters and guns aren't nearly as deadly. So you so know what well, I think is funny? Everyone says deadly, because I think they want us to think you knock them out with the punches, but there's literally no difference between punching someone down exactly. to yeah. knock them out yeah. and shoot well, them. You can explicitly they... hit them with the stun shot, and it will do the exact same thing as hitting them yeah, with see? regular blaster shots. So. And even the dialogue uh, will yeah. not change between like, oh, if you go up to punch somebody, 
then I think the the AI or the NPCs, if they see the body, they act like the person's dead. Mm -hmm. And of course, they don't try and wake them up. They don't splash cold water in their <laughs> head or slap them on the face, get them back up like they can do in other games. Um, they're just the, done. Uh, they're gone. It's the same state, whether they're knocked out or dead. The okay, dice roll on flavor dialogue is some of the funniest shit in this game because you'll have it right next to each other of like, oh no, an officer's down. It was probably nothing. <laughs> like what? <laughs> how, how did you put those two together? Just like uh. with a futuristic gun. Thing is, I like when a game is made easy enough so that a casual player could experience the story and just enjoy the game overall without having to be a power gamer. But I wish it was yeah, just a cool. difficulty uh, setting. I mean, it contextually, we've had we've yeah, had full episodes about part, that topic. <laughs> yeah, in general, I think I agree. But there should be hard games that require power gaming. But, and yeah. I still had an option to make the game hard enough to engage my brain at all. The exploration and quest structure are so much fun, which makes it so sad that the actual combat, the thing you're going Like, what you, why is the quest structure or is that so loss fun? Is better I was, I was waiting for something though. there, but yeah, why? <laughs> exactly. That's all couched in his explanation of the reputation system, and also you get a speeder, I guess, being... Like I think that's I think he thinks that's enough to like get you on board with the quest structure and the exploration being fun. I don't I can't say I agree, but you know. to do most of the time is not rewarding in any way. Give me like a difficulty setting that lets me kill people in one shot, but also I get killed in one shot. That would add. Oh, bro, it would be such a fucking shit game. That <laughs> sounds like a really terrible option for this game. It sounds like but Dante this... must die. <laughs> Well, I was going to say, uh, yeah, actually, specifically, that heaven and hell. they have, uh, oh, in, right, yeah. in the Empire Strongholds, they'll have snipers, and if you haven't spotted them, you'll just be running around doing all kinds of, and you're just, like, dead. And you're like, oh. You gotta keep an eye on them. Yeah, the idea I... that everyone can do that to you at any time, I don't know, you might get a boost of tension in a good way, but you'll simultaneously just get more and more annoyed, and you'll turn it off. Yeah. One shots in particular are a really special deal. I do like the idea of everyone just taking more damage as a setting, where it's like everything's just deadlier in general. But yeah. the one shot stuff, a lot of the time, that can be like, ooh, anything. Ooh, yeah, I don't think this also, I, I, think, like I, think, I think the most annoying thing about the snipers is that they they functionally work the same way as the um the guy who runs over and hits the alarm, because a little thing appears above their head and a wheel fills up. And it's like once that wheel fills up, the game ends because either you get sniped and killed in one in one shot, or the alarm is hit and then a bunch of guys run and then you put your hands up, and so the, so the game stops either way. So well, it's, I've the had it's the same do that thing to me. I've had snipers from like fifty meters away like arrest me because they looked at me. Oh my god, it's so some stupid. bar filled up. <laughs> uh -huh. you'll, you'll, if, you'll notice it when you watch through my my playthrough. Is when I was on uh, Akiva. And I was just bumming around fighting Imperials and then a sniper. <laughs> like he's like up on top of a wall at least fifty meters away, arrests me, and I put up my hands and I'm like, Oh, I give up. And I'm like, what the fuck? And the game just said I can't play anymore. Well, What's in going the, um, on? Yeah. In the initial district areas, uh, you were sneaking around and I think this is before you'd learn this is just how it works. Someone walks up to you and you do fast talk, and you are used to at that point fast talk leading into stun shot. But you don't get to do that in the initial district areas. All you can do is fast talk, which is pointless. Fast talk delays well, them such that you have the opportunity to shoot them, but you're not allowed your gun in those sections. So it's just, you can delay them from <laughs> arresting you, but you'll still be arrested. Great. Well, even outside of the, well, in that moment where the, I was saying about the scout trooper sniper arresting me, I think like right before that, I had to ex just accept another restart because... I was not given the option to do anything as the trooper was approaching me with a little handcuff icon coming up. Mm -hmm. I was just not allowed to do anything. I was like locked out of being able to access any options, my blaster oh, or anything like that. So sometimes the game just decides that you just can't use your gun. You just don't get to play anymore. Restart. Like Kay is an unstoppable force in this world. She can take down a thousand troopers in a row, but sometimes she'll just be like, okay, you got me. Oh, I think so. Way more stakes to the whole stealth thing you got going on here. And while we're at it, how about we make k -Vest not punch harder than the Batman? And if you want to get really crazy, let's replace... It's, 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 an, it's a matter of aesthetics and how you do it. You, she can't be punching, she has to use a stun gun, or she has to, like, do something. She needs to have a piece of kit, a piece of gear that she uses, and then it's much... <laughs> it's, but the problem's basically resolved with that, yeah. for the most part. Some of these stealth...
of these stealth takedown animations with ones where she actually looks like she's putting any force behind it at all. I mean, they clearly took inspiration from Uncharted, right? And yet No, from Obi-Wan Kenobi <laughs> show. Okay. Everyone has made that reference because it's just like one to one. It's so yeah. bad. Yes, while realistically, Nathan Drake probably wouldn't be able to punch out that guy in one hit, it still at least looks like he is putting a lot of force into that punch. There is punch to the punch. Does that make sense? In the back of the Pike District, the there's a comparison. I mean, nice, but, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, but mm -hmm. I mean, I totally agree. Like the yeah. Uncharted games make way more of an effort to one convey the strength of Nathan Drake, but also convey the vulnerability of Nathan Drake. They put a lot of effort into emphasizing that in a sense, you were meant to take him for a regular guy, even though the feats that he ends up accomplishing are insane. <laughs> in this case, yeah. I mean, we, we don't need to you spend funny, more time talking about how that un The unlock you get late in the game that allows you to take down the heavy individuals with the takedown, is you get the stun, like actual, like, uh, uh, taser. I was just like, why didn't why did she just fucking have that the whole time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, dumb fucking game. I was saying Door you in. need to have a stun uh, implement. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying that they have it in the game, but they don't use the, like you know what I mean. Like it was all there, they just didn't. Yeah, they made a they made a design decision to say throughout the entirety of the game we're going to give her these stupid silly punch yeah. animations to take down everyone instead of just utilizing the thing we've already put in the game. Clever. And behind it is the computer that we have to hack to steal the data. Now the lock picking and the computer hacking are two of Star Wars Outlaw's new mini game. I love the lock picking, I hate the hack. Crazy opinion. You love the lock picking. Why? It was you hate okay, I guess we'll find it was um, I mean, it's, novel. It's, it was pretty neutral to me. Like, meh. Yeah, it was like it I was, was neutral quick, and then I got least. annoyed because there's like five different ones you do. And that's that's it. it, yeah. Five? I thought there were only three. <laughs> See? <Yeah. laughs> did, did, did. That, 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 it's like a basic that. rhythm game, right? You just yeah, you just beat it. Yeah. It would have been cool if they were like you know you could crank it up to expert mode and it was playing tunes and stuff. Like that you you know. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Like it actually it is actually difficult. It's funky town. <laughs> I actually think ba, 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 that should be the <laughs> oh one that unlocks the big chest in you know Mosaic or something. Well, that would be a fun <laughs> Easter egg, like one out of yeah. every one hundred locks or something. It's like the the special funny reloads in Battlefield where there's like a one in a thousand chance of it playing. You know, it's just like a little fun little Easter egg. Let's see if I can see the music. Picking mechanics here are the best of any game I've played recently. It's Whoa. basically a little rhythm oh. game where you have to listen to the different clicks and then you have to click on your controller and match up with those. I don't know. It's Oh, don't say click on your controller. You're combining the... <laughs> One, it scratches a very particular itch in my brain. That hacking minigame, though, I don't know whose idea this was, but... It was not a very good one. So a while back, it's just awful. Just say bad. Just say it's bad. Oh, that's Please. all you said about the lock picking. <laughs> it's right. just awful. I mean, there's not really. I don't know how much you could really talk about the. The game lies to you. Yeah, I was gonna say he almost oh, said sorry, everything yeah. you can say about yeah, that. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> no, he should have said there's only like five patterns to. They're actually really easy. That's no. that. Yeah. yeah. There was this game called Wordle. It's a little game where you have to guess a five letter word through process of elimination. When you guess a letter that's wrong, the square it's in will remain gray. But if you guess the letter right, it's just not in the right place, then it'll be yellow. And if you guess the letter right and it's in the right place, it'll be green. It's basically like a crossword puzzle for TikTok brained individuals. There's not really anything like crossword puzzle, but carry on. Same. Now to hack into computers in Star Wars Outlaws, you gotta play space wordle it's like regular wordle except you're not actually guessing a word you're just pressing stuff and seeing what the color to be clear there's no meaningful real distinction between you're just using words and guessing symbols is essentially the same thing we just assign meanings to the letters that are symbols okay what are you talking about i mean kind of but you can guess a word though you can't really true. guess the symbols yeah that's true if the symbols actually referred to something interesting or the symbols were related to one another that could be like an, a level of depth and interestingness well yeah that's his that point could apply to it because uh that's that's the main criticism of the space wordle is there's no words there's no if there were symbols that led to things like it's the words just lead dull. to things then <laughs> it's no word it's just it's just dull, it's just dull the, not wordle the, the symbols <laughs> yeah the, the symbols have no interrelation that actually informs guess making they probably should have had it be space wordle, but the word library was all Star Wars stuff. That's probably the way to or do it. Or they would have to be like alternate, yeah. or the, the symbols were different like colors, and you knew that the colors always alternate. 
or something so that you could kind of like you know that a a Q and a Z are probably just never going to be together so there's no point guessing them whereas if you had the symbols be like a certain color or shape you'd know oh these two these oh that's a circle and that's a horizontal bar those are never beside one another or part of one symbol kind of leads into the next like they're supposed to be connected I don't know if we want to. Or it's just like, dull. Like I, I, just, they should have just I, copied Wordle. They decided to take Wordle and then remove one of the most important aspects the word. of Wordle, making Wordle <laughs> yeah, and, it took the and word they made it. Worse they could have just like put you know, lightsaber, blaster, whatever. But just they also made it worse terms. with the correct guesses, right? Like because as soon as you get a correct guess, it locks it into that slot. That's another huge so mistake it, they made. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. It is objectively worse wordle <laughs> so wait what are you what are you referring to because I've, I've never actually so if we wordle. get back to that wordle so can you see how in it's called s-p-o-r-t and o and r correct his next run yeah, so... he can still choose five wrong letters and you might be like well you fool you should be putting o and r in there right because you got them right it's like well no it's a waste i already know where our o and r go so now i want to try five so at letters the end, you could cash them in yeah okay, exactly right. uh, okay, in in space mean. wordle it's they lock it in and it just takes a space to the point where it uh, several times made me quote unquote lose because I could no yeah. longer test out more. But also, oh, the, yeah, the, yeah. the, like, the final the... problem with this game is there's no consequence for losing, so who cares? Yeah, so who gives a shit? Well, yeah. sure. Minigame. The game pretends like there is and it goes into red, but it actually doesn't do anything. <laughs> there is, right. there is one there thing were... that it does. And it, oh, it makes what is you, it? you don't get as much money, I think, for completing it. Oh, oh no! Okay. Oh no! Not I more money. Oh, notice. the one thing I constantly yeah, needed. I was about to say most everyone didn't notice that. <laughs> but the thing yeah. is, why would you? When it goes, <laughs> and then red lights are flashing, like, oh god, the alarm is going off. It's like, no, no. Cause, yeah, because sometimes I'd hack a like an imperial like outpost terminal, and I'd get like eight hundred, four hundred, a thousand credits, and I'm like, holy shit! And then sometimes I'd get a hundred, and I'm like, but why? Why? How come the huge difference in the credit payout? Is it random? It's because you know. failed the Wordle. I don't think I did because, I mean, you succeed most of them. The ones it's you fail terrible. is only because you get to the end and it's just, well, I only have one chance, quote unquote, one chance left and there's three mystery symbols. I have a 33% chance of getting it right. One in three. I guess, I hope this is it. So I, um, I you don't fail because of... A couple times at yeah. What were you saying? So... Well, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of hate so, so, Wordle, uh, Space Wordle, if we're calling it that. It's uh, it's so bad. They fucked it up in so many different ways. It so. is. Yeah. It at least the lock picking. It's quick. Which yeah. is yeah. Like, at, yeah. At yeah. least for all of its its simplicity and lack of anything interesting, it is quick. The fun. To be mean, fair, if, if you the... wanted, go ahead. If you want to do this quick, you can do it. You just like a through it really quick. You'll eventually get it. I, I yeah. don't even know so that that would be the of, quick way, honestly. That would probably make it slower. <laughs> yeah. There's a kind of, like, like awful messiness to just clicking away. Um, you need to unlock it, the first upgrade, and then it becomes incredibly fast. Um, very, very fast, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, do, okay, okay, do you recall in the last episode we, we watched, um, I forget her fucking name, but the person who was shitting Lana? on the indie games? Lana yeah. Gears, yeah. And and how there was that one indie game that actually looked kind of interesting, and she just like pressed down, 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 just went, just went through all through the, Enter all through the, the dungeon. The... Yes. Yes. So basically, I, I remember getting to a point where I could just do that with Wordle. I just yeah. press the button da, 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 and just be done. It's like, oh, you probably unlock the game upgrades anymore. Just, just, yeah. uh, to be clear for anybody who's listening, like the upgrade makes it so it binds. See how you can only have three correct answers here? It would bind each one to like another two symbols. And if you guess the correct one, it knocks out the other two as a bonus. Meaning, yep. if you on your first try oh, hit two okay. correct ones, you might knock out half the board straight away. And you're just like, oh, well. So funny, because I was about to say there's these upgrades, but I never even oh, bothered to not, figure out what they do. That isn't one of the uh, Joker upgrades, whatever the fuck they're called. I think I mentioned them on the last stream. Once you get them, uh, the game becomes a fucking joke. Uh, one of them is um, it places all of the yellow ones for you. Yeah. Oh, so, right. Oh shit! Wow, <laughs> that's what I mean. This fucking that, game like, is a joke. That like triples your <laughs> success rate. It's insane. It reminds me of Sabak, where it's like the first cheat you get is insane and it'll make you win. Then it's like, yeah, we got two more that you can infinitely use. It's like, bye, 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 bye. okay, yeah. I guess. The you word, know, just... we, we, that's the mark of a good game is that the game gives you a way to bypass that game. Yes. 
Dude, I love it in reviews when they do that. When they're like, don't worry, you don't have to do it for that long, and eventually you can just skip it. <laughs> <laughs> Pressing Mark stuff approval. and seeing what the color is. Which is stupid, right? That's the whole point of Wordle, is just to work. The worst part is that if you fail the minigame, there's no consequence. You just try again. So the only real consequence of failure is just how much time you have to spend on this stupid minigame. My opinion, <laughs> if they wanted to make Wordle, they should have just made Wordle. You yeah. can't take the word out of Wordle, because yep. then it's... What, yeah, yep. see the, of the eight on the left, the eight symbols on the left, oh. that bottom left one there is that, that, it's that circle, and the left is white, and the, uh, the right is black. Like, that could be a way to link the symbols together, where the colors always alternate, or the top is white and the bottom is black, and then they have to alternate, so it even um, tells you, like, a clue for something else going on. To be absolutely clear, square. this game is played by all of us, like, a thousand times. Yep, you play it a lot. Mm -hmm. In this game, and you could tell which ones are story uh, are necessary for the story because of the 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 most unfailable, easiest of them all. <laughs> yeah, I I, I did them um, the blindly at one point in a stream. I just <laughs> hold my hands in front of my eyes and just clicked. <laughs> my opinion. Then I if they wanted to make Wordle, they should have just made Wordle. You can't take the word out of Wordle because then it's just ul, and that's not fun. Also, give it a con. You you gotta dress it up as something. You can't actually have it be Wordle in the Star Wars universe. You gotta do something to it to make it Wordle esque. Well, if you can't recreate Wordle problem. as Wordle without destroying it, then do something else. I do feel like yeah, system. we're back to the drawing board. Yeah, then just do yep. a different system. Consequence if I like fail, rhythm you know, like throw some enemies at me or something. Anyway, after a riveting game of Space Wordle, we get the data that we were trying to steal from the Pikes. And it turns out there's someone within the Pikes that's looking to overthrow Gorak. Now all we gotta do is take that information back to Donka. But when we do, we get to meet the person who really hired us for this job. Elira. She's the leader of a riot. Remember Elira? She's in the game for about 10 minutes and then she's gone. Yeah, uh, Elira is the Crimson Dawn <laughs> it's so odd. representative lady. She's introduced as the Crimson Dawn person and then you go to a different planet and you're introduced to the Crimson Dawn person who is not Elira ever again. <laughs> you're like, okay. Bye. I, I don't even remember. I, it's I'm, it's I'm a gonna... regional thing, you know. It's... Oh, well, it, I Listen, think it literally I, I... is that. It's just that uh, story wise, it doesn't work so well, right? Like, uh, your interactions with the Crimson Dawn through Alira. She's the lady. You gotta blah blah blah, and then it's all through uh, Amelia Clark from there on. Listen, this might sound like slightly racist, but all the Twi'leks look the same to me. Well, they're sound... all just interchangeable. They all yeah. they're kind of yeah. That's the but that's just like kind of all the characters. They all have the same general facial structure. Um, there's no one who's. I mean. There's no one who's pretty in this game. There's no one who's yeah. like interesting or stand out. Um, there's like a green one. There's a blue one. There's a gray yeah, one. Wait, basically it. Rags, you met you met Jabba, right? <laughs> True. Just making sure. Okay, yeah. Oh, what I a, assume we, we, we're leaving a, him as an exception because it's not. Oh, yeah, there. Jabba's course. doesn't belong we, we to even... the game. He comes from something else. Oh so yeah, yeah, yeah. He's I get not you. Yeah. Rival syndicate called Crimson Dawn. The are on top here. And Crimson Dawn is making moves. And it's here we're given our first of many choices on who to side with. We can either give this data to Elira, who can use it against the Pikes, or we can withhold the information and bring it to Gora. This and let's be fucking is, clear, there are no consequences to go higher. other than, yeah, yeah and, and there's nothing in the story or it. mechanically ever that ever changes based on this decision. It is just bar go up, bar go down. And yeah. uh, bar going up and bar going down doesn't do a huge amount. You can describe it such that it sounds like it does a huge amount, but it doesn't. Yep. Put us in good standing with this, so the, the, when, you, when you look at the screen and you see there's like there's two selections and you see like the meters and you see the, you know, the person's looking at you pensively. It, it it feels like if you're playing like a Witcher game or a Mass Effect or like a Bethesda game, that you're right now you're making a choice that will change the way the next bit of story unfolds. Sure. And it's no, nope. no, it's the exact same. Story yeah, is because fucking it's, rigid. <laughs> Even in yeah. uh, in The Witcher, there's no like morality system. It's just here are the consequences of a previous decision you've made. It's that this happens now, and that's the consequence. You don't have a little meter with a reputation going up and down. You don't gain or lose karma. It's just here are the consequences of your decision. They're actual consequences. Yeah, I mean, oh, you do have like like an informal rep with some factions in Witcher too, but but still, like I know I know what you mean. Yeah. I think as well, if this was supposed to play in any way, shape, or form, quote-unquote, realistically, and I don't mean to say that it's better if it is more realistic, I'm just saying that if you expect a reputation system to go a particular way, what do you guys think would be harder? Reaching maximum with every syndicate, or reaching, like, they want to kill you at every syndicate? Maximum. I would assume it is easier to... Max. 
Yeah, it should be hard to get max because to get, I mean, well, first off, um, just the nature of to get people to hate you is extremely easy. Yeah. Any random person on the street, you can get them to hate you in 10 seconds, right? But to get them to love you, that takes time and work and effort. So I would assume in the game, obviously it's easier to get people to hate you. You just go around shooting everybody and murdering. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So all this is very, very true. Uh, it is a fucking nightmare to get every syndicate to hate you. It, it takes fucking ages. You have to do all kinds of insane grinding. Meanwhile, getting them to like you is incredibly easy. You can just farm the shipment missions in space over and over again. Mm. Oh, and when I say Mother, over and over actually, again, I mean it can get you can maximize all of them within like an hour at most. Yep. Can I ask you, is there any point in this game where you can attack the 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 bug people who are they? The Ashiga. Uh the Ashiga? Is there any area in this game where you you fight Ashiga? Or you can fight them. Well, it depends on what you mean. There, there are story missions where you have to fight them. Like yeah, the you... story mission, but they, but that doesn't even like count because mean... it's two factions of Ashiga. But like in in the way that you could go around and like attack Pikes or anyone else is does that exist for the Ashiga? Is there ever a place where you can in the um fight Ashiga people in Kajimi Ashigans. in their little district? You can do like do you do you count like the takedowns? You can do stealth takedowns on them in the district. Um, oh, in the in the restricted zone. Yeah, well, I mean, like that, I yeah. I guess that counts, but like open combat. Yeah, I, I guess you're talking about things that'll actually lower uh, your rep with them, right? Oh, yeah. Well, well, I don't think he's asking that. Just because only... you know, you know, I, I even showed you rags like how I farmed the Ashiga negative reputation. Yeah, yeah. Because the difference between the Ashiga and the other clans is that they're not just like around in the world. Because on uh, Kajimi there just doesn't exist an open world for you to no. explore where you're just going to have pikes and crimson dawn and imperials just walking around doing stuff and you can go out and kill them so you don't i don't think you even have the oh. opportunity to go around on a murder spree on a well, they've also the just, there's no zone with them something got fucked up when they did the ashiga too because they're the only faction where you can walk toward them in their district and if you're on lower uh, low reputation it'll automatically count as trespassing not even walking in just walking up to them they'll uh, capture oh, that's you that's bizarre yeah, I don't that's know why. It feels yeah, like that, it's uh, something they fucked up. That that whole area feels less finished than the rest of the game, which already doesn't feel finished. Well, so I mean, just, just real I, quick, I'm sure you guys are, uh, Rags mentioned okay. it, the yeah. the lack of open world. All of us have that moment where we're like, "All right, I've done the main city area of a, a Kiva, a Kijimi, so now off to the open world that you can't find it." Yeah. And, uh, oh, that sucks. Oh, I yeah. Just, that realization. Yeah. I love the idea that the dev is with you while you're playing the game, and you ask like, "Oh, I can't wait to see the open world for a." Uh, Kajibi, and they're like, um... Because <laughs> I just assumed that, okay, we, we've got our ice planet to explore, and we've got our big ravines and snow things, and I don't know, it'd probably look visually pretty boring, probably, with how they kind of explain it, but uh, hey, you know, it's different, it's a change of pace, we can fight uh, Wampas, right? That's what gets, that's Empire Strikes Back, right? The Wampa? Or was that a... Yep. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. that'd be a thing, but, like, uh... Oh, and for I the record, like someone said who planets. thought Disney would let you be a bad guy uh, in this game. They do. You get to do all you kinds are of bad, bad things. Guy. You are a piece of shit, but they don't recognize it. They don't recognize it, yeah. They do not accurately <clears throat> convey to the player exactly how much of a piece of shit you are. Very early in you, this game, you murder a couple people. Oh, even as a child, she doesn't give a shit that her mom got shot. Like, there are I so many, so many things. Nicks. It's like, fuck you. Jeez. The, the game True, likes, though. likes her a whole bunch <laughs> by the end, but she does horrible things throughout that she does not get punished yeah, for. Yeah, she's a fucker. Well, she's a standard Disney female character. She's uh, yeah. this, this Morally complete lack of self-awareness, no real like arc or learning or difficulties. Everything's handed to her, but she'll constantly complain about everyone. You know, like, being the problem. The the part that really fucking hit me was when she said, all the syndicates, the Empire, the Rebels, they're all horrible and they use everyone. Says lady who just steals <laughs> and abuses everybody she comes across. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fascinating fucking POV. In-game that encourages yeah. that behavior. <laughs> yeah, but all all in a very... I was about to say in a sterilized way. It's like a hollow way. Like, like yeah. be a be an evil person. Go steal from that cop. And you're like, ooh, ooh, ooh here I go. Here's some of his <laughs> What can I steal from the cop? Grenade. <laughs> what? But what else? Grenade. Gun there is only grenade. And backstab the reprehensible crime syndicates. No one else. Just them. And I mean, I mean, I think the yep. ultimate... You can't, like, mug anybody here. or... 
Dude, oh yeah, they yeah, that's just they never do it, but they should. I'd uh, love to I, play that character. Like I said, we brought I it up before, but ultimate... um, uh, uh, Salacious B. Crumb with a knife, mugging people, that would be so fucking good. <laughs> yes. I think yes. the single most, uh, the, the biggest single thing that you can point to on the fact that they don't want you to actually be like act truly evil is that they do not allow you to have any reputation or ally with the Empire. Yes. Even though they do not want you to ally um, with the Empire, they don't want it. Whichever DLC is coming out, someone asked their official account if we can align with the Empire, and their response was, "You can indeed work for the Empire with the new thingy." But they obviously worded it such that it's like they're not going to be a faction. It'll be one mission. Yeah, but you that can you can do them. something, yeah, exactly. and it'll probably be nothing but subversion. She'll be saying like, "Oh yeah, we got to do this for them so that we can do this," you know, that sort of shit. As opposed it'll to what we want, whatever, which is, you know what, will be terrible. the Empire good for the galaxy. Let's fucking sign up and crush this rebellion. I love the idea mm -hmm. that Disney are like, oh, how could you say that? <gasps> no, but the Empire is bad and the rebels I'm very are good. Bad, I'm gay. Whereas I'm like Battlefront, <clears throat> I'm like Empire every fucking time. <laughs> I always play the CIS. I love the droid army. It's great. Oh, it sure makes sniping. It's the easiest sniping that there is. To snipe those big bucket heads on the clone troopers, <laughs> yeah. whereas they have to hit the little battle droid heads or the wonky <laughs> front-facing super battle droid heads, and you're like, oh fuck this. Faction and bad with the other. This is the reputation system in action, and while it's not the most robust, mind-blowing faction system you've ever seen, it still makes this entire game and its side quests a lot more interesting. See, for the most part. A lot more interesting, not just a little interesting, uh, somewhat more interesting, a lot, fine. very interesting. I mean, need it, more it's, justification. Yes, yeah, there's okay, not much to say. Man. Like saying it's, it could be more robust. It's like, dude, it's like tier one. Like it, it couldn't be less robust. <laughs> yeah. I like the story of Star Wars Outlaws. I think, save for a few goofy go. choices and a lot of plot armor, Tell me what the story is, please. It's story with some cool characters. That... Why? Tell me why. Why are you skipping? Yeah. He Stop says it. some cool characters. He's implying there's more than one and there isn't even it's one. It's going to be ND5. That's going to be the cool... He's bi oh. purpose-built to be considered the cool character. That's what he's... It's right. just like Nyx. It's purpose-built to be the cute character. He's not, not cool, really though. He sucks. Yeah, Nyx isn't. <laughs> interested in yes, he is! Nope. Take it back! <laughs> through the entire game. What really hooked me was the fantasy of living as an outlaw in the Star Wars <laughs> Oh, <universe>. come on. <laughs> uh, okay. You cannot, they do and not you... allow you to order an alcoholic beverage at any of the many bars. <laughs> Can we save this credit for the game that actually does that, please? Yeah. Yep. Or like Stinking makes even a passing attempt at doing that. A passing that. attempt would be nice. You, you can't. You can't, you, you can't, you know, order alcohol. You can't mug anyone on the street. You can't like get a prostitute or a stripper. You just none of them. Oh, can you fucking imagine? That'd be awesome. Oh, there's <laughs> no way they'd ever let you have a prostitute in Star Wars. I mean, they were kind of they were flirting with it in Andor, right? So yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah, it exists. Just, just yeah, I want to pay those exist. Tatooine tens, dude. You. Unfortunately, Tatooine Andor has its spine. Andor's the standout. <laughs> Star Wars doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Andor is a weird standout, yeah. It is indeed. Andor season two coming to a Disney Plus near you. Of living Ooh. as an outlaw in the Star Wars universe, taking contracts from either of these factions or faction number three, the Huts. Stuff like gaining favor with a faction, only to use that favor. Why? Why? Why did you say not this four? Well, yeah, three out of four. I, I guess he's introducing them that way. He's like done the ah, Pikes and Crimson ah, Dawn, and now he's done right, the Huts. Okay. So. Uh, uh walk straight into their base and find where they keep their secret vault and steal their treasures. Coming across faction battles Do throughout they care the world about that? or in space. No. And Not really. Yeah, who, even if they damn, even if they catch you as in like you are seen, you are you get the detection that is like it won't matter. None of it will matter. Oh, you can steal you, the most oh, private you collection you. of Jabba the Hutt's precious materials <laughs> and you'll just be like, hmm. I'm gonna get all his hut goo. Exactly. Hey, you can you, steal you, the entire get out of here. vat of hut cream and you won't matter. <laughs> Don't you Give dare sneak in the way you did cream. already, again. <clears throat> and either getting involved, or just watching it play out. I mean, this is the Star Wars Underworld Simulator that people have been asking for. No, it's not. No, it is. Oh, I can't no. order is... a drink at the bar, <laughs> you fucker. It is a cardboard cutout of the Star Wars Underworld Simulator a, that people have been asking it's for. It's a poster. <laughs> it's nothing. It's a lie. <laughs> 
for years. I get that there are a lot of things you can shit on this game for, and rightfully so, but there are a lot of things worth giving this game credit for, I think. And the way they've crafted this believable fantasy of living as a scoundrel in the Star Wars universe is absolutely one of the next few hours it's of the game not, are really though. just meant no but <laughs> it, is he aware of how like allergic the game is to the player exercising their agency in any way whatsoever i don't think yeah, so he really doesn't like well, that and what bothers me is um whenever we get to the the, the uh, criticisms he'll have oftentimes clips to show what's going wrong he'll explain some of the yeah. things about how it like doesn't work take the puzzles for example when it gets to the praise he describes the system broadly as though it's the back of the fucking box the prize is the prize is like nebulous and yeah. vague and and and, and, and it's kind of a pitch. camera. Well, it's kind of a pitch, right? It's it's like what Mola said of almost like reading it off the back of the box. The way so many of these reviews that like review the game positively feel like they're almost pitching the mechanics to you on behalf of the developers. Mm. You know, the reputation system where reputation you make choices and those choices uh will have an impact on the you know your experience and they replay value seven out of ten there's like no analysis this isn't an analysis it's describing the system saying it's good but, saying they're reading the boxes like, are really an analysis describe about it. why it is it's almost like these are mechanics man, nature, in game well it's yeah. just the nature of making positive positive uh i get well edit criticism should be a neutral term but you know how people get yeah like yeah. If, if you're affirming something or if you're offering praise it's like you need to like actually build you, you need to qualify you need to explain it not simply describe yeah. what the system is in a general sense and then say that you like it or or rather bake in your positive feelings about it uh without even showing or explaining why or developing your thoughts on it <laughs> for you to engage with these three different factions and play them against each other you do things like break into a you can't like play them against each other what do you mean play them against you each can't, other you can't, you can't you can't encourage them to do anything to each other yeah like, there's no you can't bait them into fighting each other that's not something you can do oh dude when um remember the one of the last levels where it says like which who are we gonna uh, pin this on and she says pin it on the rebels they already uh they already hate the rebels and it's like why can't i choose why can't I sabotage yeah, one of these like, syndicates? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, of course, you know, so, someone might say, oh, well, this, you know, this would be too crazy to implement, but bearing in mind how much money this game costs, fuck that. So, um, yeah. why, why isn't there ways to create emergent opportunities for you in the open world by actually manipulating the factions? Why isn't there, like, a persuasion system, you know, like a conversation system that you can use to manipulate certain players into doing things for you to make your life easier. What if you did, what if you were able to initiate a war between two different factions that just made it so that it was easier for you to steal something from one of their bases, for something instance? Something that happens emergently in games like RimWorld, where if you have two mm. factions that hate each other's guts and they come onto your map, they're going to start fighting, and you, you're completely neutral, potentially. So you're just like, we're just going to sit here and pick up all the pieces, or the, like whatever... Um, like that just happens normally in other games other games it just happens because of course that's just what happens you know what's funny too theoretically about, um go ahead just the one that we were referencing right it's like oh yeah that'd be difficult to implement it's just like you literally could have had it be who should we frame this on and then it just pauses the screen brings up four options or including the rebels or whatever uh so five and it's just like just let me pick it wouldn't even need to actually substantively do a thing not a thing but le let me choose one of the five, and I would have at least been like, hey, let you choose. <laughs> Even yeah. if there's nothing that happens as a result. And yeah, maybe it would be it would be difficult to make a robust, fully functioning um, reputation system between four different syndicates, should be five, but four different syndicates in this game. Yeah, that that's what you decided to put in your game, though. If that's it sounds like that's aspect. a tough job. Yeah. yeah, if that's going to be the underpinning element of the game, then perhaps that might be a good place to allocate resources to have make it functional, rather than putting them into gratuitous graphical fidelity that doesn't even impress anymore. Or yeah, this game like wasn't acres production. upon acres of open world space that doesn't see any real use. Yeah, and this game wasn't production for a long time, right? Like, it's, it's backed by a like big years, fucking... I think. I think the so. idea that we could ever... you can choose where you put your resources. Like... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the idea and we could like ever get a point. it's a big fucking company. Like, you, you, you have the resources, you can't tell me otherwise. The idea that we could ever be at a point where the response is, yeah, but that's really hard to implement. Like, yeah, okay. yeah, right. that's sure a job. Is. 
I'm that's what that's why you put 200 million dollars in four years into developing it because it it's just difficult. sucks the uh i miss i don't know if we're ever going to get back to an era where games are competing on a mechanical level ever again oh yeah, well, yeah where you have like a bungee behind the scenes you know good enough sucks you can't do good enough as a mm. just sort of a guiding principle Not in the triple a sphere marketing on mechanics no. showing off new systems new technology in that way like god i miss those days it was like the last time mm -hmm. that that was the thing that was happening regularly was on the playstation 3 xbox 360 you know it's been a long time <laughs> yeah. now it's graphics like there hasn't been because yeah. the thing is with something like star wars outlaws what makes it like meaningfully substantially different from a game that is on playstation 3 in terms of like its mechanics you know, what? what is it about this game that would be impossible to achieve on older systems, aside from the graphics? I think that the, um, I think the Street Food minigame just wouldn't be possible in older hardware. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think it had the, the computing power to be yeah, able to point, put yeah. It would be funny if God of War had that game, it would have been him with like a fucking, like imagine the food he had, he's like slamming it into the ground, getting a fucking machete, just chopping pieces off, and you're like, oh, blah, blah, and you have to like, and the QTs would probably be difficult, like, but no. Some at least they nailed that easy, part. I've know. not seen anyone experience bugs in that part, so at least they nailed that. Yeah, good I job. mean that part looks particularly polished, and I think it's because they were trying to go for like the immersive quality. You see, you got your little buddy here. You're eating the weird space food. Look, you're you're in a you're in a place. There's aliens around. Look, there's some stormtroopers back there just walking around. Isn't this Star Wars? You love being in Star Wars, don't you? It, right, it's it reminds me of the um, funny. On. The sequences in uh, when Vale first meets you, I think when when Waka betrays you. There's a couple of when you escape with Vale from the um the outpost. There's these little spectacle sections where oh my god, things Watching are falling apart. People are shooting at you. The whole world's coming down. And it's like oh, the Tie Fighters above you, and you have to run forward and jump and run forward and jump. And the music is blaring, and it's just like the, this was yeah this this was probably something they worked for a while on because it's supposed to capture the cinematic feel of being in the Star Wars world. Have you played Dying Light? I've played it. If you haven't, you yeah, should have a lot of fun. Um, but in that game, there are sequences where you have to escape detection from essentially these alpha zombies that come out at night and they're very fast and agile and they chase you better than other zombies. And it doesn't tell you how to do it. It's just said you have to get away from them. And so during these different sequences, you always end up escaping from them in different ways because you're in different areas. You have access to different movement skills and abilities and uh, things of that nature. So every time that objective happens, you fulfill it in a, in a different way. And sometimes it may take a while. Sometimes it might be you know easier than you expected, but it's always kind of different. And so... That's just not something that pops up in something like this. It's game, so on the rails. The game does a pretty mm -hmm. good job of incentivizing the player to behave in such a manner that aligns their mindset with that of their characters. You generally yes. want to like stick to the rooftops, avoid conflict where possible, and like mm. not get bogged down into fights, not be roaming around on ground level, don't go out at night, those sorts of things. Which is until easy. you get the jump kick, because once you get the jump kick, the jump you can kick just is kill it's, yeah. <laughs> fun. Yeah, the jump kick's fun. I, I think that game's at its worst when it's letting you actually fight things, and when it gives you the like grapple and stuff like that. But that's a slightly different topic, I guess. Mm. I think so, but the the game does a good job at being like, you know, what if you don't have fun with this thing, you don't have to do that thing. You could stick to what you actually find fun yeah. and. Uh, yeah, dying. I haven't played the second one. I heard it's good, but uh, yeah, first dying light, fucking excellent. You know, on that note, about, uh, directing people somewhat, like uh, I don't know how many people I know Fringy will be, but the 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 nature of uh, the relationship between I forget who is he even the the character who's advising Arnold Schwarzenegger in that film, the president. What is he um, like? What's his role? I forget if he's like. Uh, it doesn't really matter. The point is, he presents five plans, and then he like crashes one of them in particular and uh well that's, that's what he of, does yeah the second time around that's what this game is it'll be like you've got all these options and then it pushes one towards you and you're like i don't want that one it's like yeah you do yeah <laughs> this is the best one. <laughs> like, no i don't though and it's Obviously. like you do and you will die if you do the others so they're like well then the others aren't options and they're like yeah they are yeah can you see they're right there options
Imperial bases to steal stuff for a syndicate, or you go up to a cool space station and get that Pike what trader. Cool space for station? The space exploration. There are no oh. good space stations. <laughs> Holy shit, he, right? Sorry, he mentioned been... cool space station, and I was like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Yeah, I've been going through your playthrough. You fucking hate space, huh? I hate space. <laughs> fuck space. Fuck space. <laughs> There is also pretty good in my opinion. Again, not mind-blowing stuff here. We're not reinventing the wheel, but for what they set out to do, I think they, Did they even in, did, is it even a wheel? It's just a square. And they yeah. just made a square and said, "This is our wheel." And We're it's just clunking along the, along. the wheel. Clunk, clunk, clunk. Ubisoft has had their wheel for quite a while now, and we're not even able to manage the wheel. No. Ubisoft <laughs> used to make good wheels. Maybe once Damn it, time. what happened? <laughs> they Pretty made well. fun wheels. And it was fun for me. Outside of each of the planets, there's a little chunk of explorable space. And on this planet, there are some debris fields and two space stations you can explore. First one is more for story reasons, but you can go back to it later if you want to. And the one of can the things you... I was thinking, you, you paused at the same point as me. I was thinking, um, one of the things I thought was interesting, a random thought that occurred to me, is that the two space stations, the little tiny ones you can go into, they didn't even... They didn't even have the fucking dignity to flip it and reverse it, so it's the same ship, just like inverse. It's the, it's just the same one. See, exactly. I was about to ask that because I was like, I thought, was there one ah. or was it two? And they were just the same fucking <laughs> looking station. Because <laughs> they were the same one. Mar. Did anyone they else? Were the same one. For me, I tried to drive into one manually, and it just stops you really awkwardly at the front, where you just sort of ram into nothing in the hangar. And then you have to press, like, land, and it'll just port you back a few meters, and then you land in the cutscene. Uh, I thought that was so fucking lame. I can't manually land. It's like, god, this game sucks. Well, in Star Citizen, as far as I've been told, you can choose to manually land your ship, which is obviously more difficult, but much more immersive and engaging. Or you can use, like, an autopilot feature to where it does it for you. So you just That's have the, the option. Both of them work. The other is an imperial base that we get to infiltrate. But Listen, I like you, you but the way that, that you describe things makes me upset sometimes, because it's so lame, <laughs> like, in the actual game. That guy on the left, he has such a- he has that stupid hat, <laughs> the dumbest hat ever. Like, Talking just wear something with the hood, or wear a hat, don't try and combine the two. You know, Rags, when they gave that as a concept, they were like, look, sci-fi hat. And you're like, what? Sci-fi hat. <laughs> it's sci-fi because it's stupid. Sci-fi hat. Messing with the Empire hat. is gonna come with a wanted level. Which really oh. doesn't mean shit, to be honest. The inclusion of the oh. Empire in Star Wars Outlaws <laughs> was actually something that was very interesting at first, very intriguing, but... Because they were the Empire? As in, that, that was because the interesting the Empire, part? Yeah. That they were the Empire, mm -hmm. yeah. The Empire is here. <laughs> Look, it's the Empire. <laughs> I'd... I just think that at this point, Disney and through, like, because obviously if Disney's going to, if they, if they give up the Star Wars license and stuff, there's things that they have control over in terms of you're not allowed to do this, you can't do this, because they have, you know, they want to protect their brand or monitor it in their own way. I just think they're fucking terrified of the idea of letting players engage with the Empire and exploring the Empire and doing all that. Andor's the closest that we've got to yes, that, it and is. it actually does it interestingly, but Andor, again, is the black sheep. So I would speak. say, right? It's just like its own weird special thing. In a perfect world, we'd be saying Andor sort of kind of addressed a bit of how the Empire works. Unfortunately, we're in the world where we have to say Andor did a thorough examination compared to everything else. <laughs> so we've gotten so little information in an interesting way on the Empire with everything Disney have done. It's almost made it embarrassing and awkward. And you, you kind of like, you, you sort of do the cringe face of like, oh, let's, let's not. We don't need to, don't, don't include the Empire. Just leave them alone. I, I think it's more that they don't want people to sympathize oh or empathize God. with Imperial the characters. Bad guys. Yeah, I think that's yeah. the, Whatever, that's, the that, that's a it part really of it, but like they cannot the portray bad, them yeah. properly anyway. They want, when you have, um, what's Even his Even as name? evil, they can't, yeah. The, the Gu Gus in Mando, they want him to, you can guarantee they want him to be intimidating because he's supposed to be like cool and stuff, but they make him a clown every time. You know, he's defeated. You it? It's it's uh they don't know how to do a fucking anything. The idea that like it's all being held back because they don't want anyone to think they're too cool or to want to join up or some bullshit like that. It's like I, I don't know. At this point, that's just an excuse for how shit they are at doing anything. It's definitely portrayal. part of it, yeah. Because even when they want to portray him only as evil, they're shit evil. They're stupid evil. They're Ugh. incompetent clowns. <laughs> okay, no, it all went um, to plan. What are you talking about? Give me back, Grandma. Talking. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna post something in the chat. I don't know if you want to bring it up or not, but right uh, now? I think it was a moment of triumph. I think it was you, Metal, who's <laughs> doing ten. You what? Someone said, "Yo, picture. 
Someone sent me this picture and said Tatooine tens. Tatooine tens. <laughs> Wait, is that a, all right? Is that a lady Tuscan Raider? Is that what's happening? What's, They're called yes. Tuscan Raid dress. Raid dress. <laughs> Raid dress. My goodness. But it I'll quickly, give her quickly fell stick. off and became one of my least favorite parts of the game. When you first get to this planet, it's clear that it is occupied by the Empire. There I don't agree. Why, why are people I saying this? <laughs> I've why? Got a, why? I've got Empire a around. Is about Whenever it? he does... I, I feel like I've lost the thread here. What is he saying is the least... He said he said the Empire were like super interesting at first, and then we oh, the joked wanted. that it was literally right. just seeing them. But then he said he got tired of them real quick, and now he's introducing the idea that yeah, so the Empire have a big old grasp on Tashara, which they're around. They uh, are around. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. And then you steal all their grenades and put them in a little pile because <laughs> you can only have three at a time. <laughs> That's too one, of the, one of the things I will say that bugs me about this editing a lot is because. Um, you see this in webcam videos and things of that nature where people say like a sentence and then there's a cut and then they say another sentence or part of a sentence and there's a cut like they can't string together mm. one measly short paragraph of thoughts before there's a cut. They can only do a sentence at a time, which is doubly weird when you're watching a video where he's put time and effort Listen, into Rags. compositing himself. I don't know you... why you're attacking me personally. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> also, uh, you get that on Nebula, okay? That's where the big bucks end up getting. Oh, so, no. Bro no, video. no Wait, value. You, you get that on some TV shows, for fuck's sake. Like, I, man, I recall watching, I think it was season three of Star Trek Discovery, and Ooh. there's a, there's a scene where they clearly did, like, a fade or a morph in between two takes. It was supposed to be one long take. And you can't tell... But I, I like looked at the, at the edge of the screen. You can see like a little blur, and I'm like, "You guys, fucking, you you guys couldn't do one take. You ha you had to do this shit." It's fucking weird, especially when you're just sitting down and you're facing a camera. It's like you couldn't, you couldn't just remember a few parts or just look slightly off screen to your script or. It got, I think it's just for have pacing, your to be and fair. Bullet points. And well, I'm sure they'd also say another like, take though, right? They'd also say <laughs> yeah, that you got to get this shit takes. out. You know, like they've got other videos to make and stuff, probably. They, they, they started they, a... There's a line, and they wouldn't consider it worth the time to fix, I guess. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> there are stormtroopers posted all around the planet, <gasps> sometimes harassing you or other citizens, now, okay. or otherwise... Yeah. Doing a cut in the ways. middle of a sentence immediately well, yeah, after saying. that conversation. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like mid sentence. They will mid do sentence cuts. is pretty bad. They can't do a sentence without fucking up, and so they have to intercut a different saying of that same sentence and then composite those two together. Like yeah. it's bad enough that you can't say a paragraph without fucking up, as if oratory is just this this divine, arcane, hidden occult art that no longer can be studied or practiced. That we have to cut ourselves to pieces. Ugh. Don't cut yourself. Is that guy's hand absurdly long? <laughs> that is a very long it's hand. really long. <laughs> wow, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> they, make, they, make, they, make, they make hoods out of those hands. <laughs> oh my god, that's a big hand. You know what they say about big hands? Big gloves. Big gloves. Big head hats. It's getting involved in various activities. Like, for example, one time I went to a merchant. By the way, even the background cuts too. When I thought that would be its own separate. Oh yeah, you wouldn't need to do that. Thing. Why does why does the why does the background also cut whenever he has himself? Yeah, his his video getting cut the... to pieces wouldn't change anything about the background one necessarily. But strange. I wonder how he. Decided Maybe he's recording to do it directly it. into OB. Like like he's this is the background on his OBS. You know, green screen. He's not green screening mm. it. That, It'd be weird to do it Seems less that way, efficient, but... but yeah. Yeah, that seems odd. Like, it would just be its own thing playing constantly. Like, you'd get your footage of the background, and that would be X minutes. And then you just Imagine put a slap there. from that guy. <laughs> oh my god. Now, <laughs> he, now, if he was going around slapping stormtroopers, I could believe that they'd be <laughs> out of hands. And I was just talking, and all of a sudden a stormtrooper comes waltzing up and demands that this merchant pay him a fee. I was given the option to either use yes, my connection with the Pikes, the who have an in with the Empire, pay off the bribe myself, or just kind of stand back and let it happen. The problem is I didn't have a good enough reputation with the Pikes, so I was locked out of that option. There's examples like this all throughout the game, and honestly, I think this is a really cool angle to show the Empire. But what was the example he gave about, would that, would... 
would you need to have a any particular reputation with the Pikes to say something on behalf of the Pikes? The well, so that's interesting that you say that, right? Because you could just lie. Uh, in theory, yeah, you could just lie. In this theory. Ga this <laughs> game is not fucking capable of that. The what he just described is one of the most complex interactions that are even possible in the game. The fact that you can walk up to someone, they get accosted by a Empire dude, and you can choose to either trick bribe or, or leave you know so like the fact that that's even happening is amazing because it happens so rarely but of course what you'll find is most of them lead to the same result other than you lose credits or gain reputation or something like that you know like it's, it's always very very uh shallow um but yeah the having they a good reputation with the pikes means yeah. that you have an in with the empire somewhat because they're connected and you, you're trying to help this shop owner or whatever but does the game ever say that yeah this, the intro to the Pikes is that they have a connection with the Empire, I'm pretty sure. All right. Empire, occupying a planet, but you're playing a character whose main goal isn't exactly to fight the Empire or anything. You're just living under their rule. There's opportunity there to create this realistic feeling of this imposing government all around you that you really can't do anything about because you feel... Well, you're well, not allowed would, to. That would, re that would <laughs> yeah. require, for starters, to make them competent and actually worthy of my respect and fear, which just doesn't happen. But so it's already by making it's that presence felt anyway. Mechanically. It's easy to fight them. Well yeah, you just yeah. Dark Souls roll punch on everybody just like mm -hmm. everybody. There's no differences. You never have to change up your tactics or strategy based off who you're fighting and what their capabilities are, because everyone's a moron and you could just Dark Souls roll around and then punch them. You know you can roll another game right? properly games follow Dark through. Souls. It's funny though, so it looks like Dark it, it Souls. It is pretty funny. It is funny. <laughs> To properly follow through on like a fantasy like this, you probably shouldn't be able to successfully fight the Empire yep. in any real capacity. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, like Kay should not. Fills up right. once... Kay shouldn't be able to fucking punch out more than one person with great success, really. Like, uh, especially I in, like ignoring, a... yeah, ignoring concerns of like punching people out. Even like, let's say, combat plays in a way that's even remotely like <laughs> apt to the experience or whatever. Um, if the Empire, if, if you piss off the Empire, that should be very, very bad for you. Yeah, it should be <laughs> that GG, should be basically. The games, that should be the diegetic way of the dev saying, you're getting way too unruly and crazy. The Empire's going to come and get you if you don't. Yeah. Yeah, like send maybe down. death troopers after like you. A, Would that be nuts? Yeah, like a <laughs> no, they don't, no, no, but they're gonna plan their meeting three point two kilometers away. Go and go and, and get then, them if you feel like it. Yeah, but then no, they'll shout. Fine. Come it's, it's get fine. us, K. You bitch. Go get, well, you know when you get when you get six stars in Grand Theft Auto, and so it just lets you know that hey, down at the police HQ, boy, they're really planning something big to <laughs> yeah, stop they're you. They're coming for All you. Right. So you better consider that. You know what should happen immediately it's is so... anyone you're on top reputation with should contact you being like, what the fuck are you messing with the Empire for? What are you doing? If they find out you're working for us, they're going to be on our ass too. Yeah. Exactly. It's so funny because the, the syndicates are way better at hunt, hunting you than the Empire because they actually send death squads towards you all the time. <laughs> Yeah, well, the are, Empire's like, so funny, they yeah. send the best of, our, of their best. Oh, where are they? They're over there. Go grab them if you want. Um, like, oh, if you max out your pike rep, you get the Empire outfit, and it's funny because you'd be like, oh, does that mean I can go into bases and they won't actually start shooting me? It's like, no. 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 Okay. What's Why would you literally think that? literally just for the bonuses and the drip if you care about that sort of thing. Yeah. At least so they let you change the uh, aesthetics on your gear, so that's something that was pleasantly uh, surprising just... to see. I'm like, oh, that's something. I find every genuine compliment <clears throat> to this game is always in the format of, at least they let you do the thing that you obviously should be able to fucking do. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, I guess. We gotta, we gotta beat this game on its level, all right? The people who made this game clearly don't like play games, and they maybe actively despise video games. At right? least I can so... change the color of my thruster color. <laughs> Yay! Yo, that's true, you can! Orange And you know what, Rags, if you do, it makes the white text more readable. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's right! Nice. I had that issue at the beginning of my game, oh, where I'm like, oh, so the UI of the, the, the text UI for subtitles, when it's over your health bars, you just can't read half the letters because it's white on white. Thanks, game. Good job. I always love when that happens. This imposing government all around you Perfect. that you really can't do okay. anything about because you feel so small in comparison. The problem in this game <laughs> is that when you do cross the empire or do something like 
I don't know, rob an imperial base? It is so easy, mind-numbingly easy. If you thought the yes. takedown animations were funny before, they are ten times funnier on the big bucket heads. I should not be able to walk up to a full group of stormtroopers, fully armored on death. the hardest difficulty, all holding blasters, and you just start punching them out like yeah, Batman. That's There's no combat system. There's no real combat system. You hit yeah. you hit the square button three times and then you win. Yep. That's yep. the combat system in this game. It's really good. It sounds like you're implying it's not. They didn't think about what might happen if the player doesn't buy into the fantasy at face value without being given any mechanical incentive to do so. Um, Give me one second, actually, because on this topic, I can't resist showing what happened on my... Uh... The last, guys. The last time I ever streamed Outlaws. Oh, wow. Oh, Even though it, I streamed it for way too long. It was kind of a <laughs> huge, horrible error in a way. But uh, Let me pull up the Strumble here. Yeah, you're <clears> going <throat> to have to, because I can't drop it into Watch Together as easily. But um... Oh, James says Metal has seen this clip. Oh, then probably it was some... Oh, then I think I know which one it is. Yeah, probably, yeah I probably wouldn't be surprised if you had, but just on the I mean, people of, just send me shit. <laughs> I'm surprised he wouldn't have played a clip of doing it, since everybody's been there, but this felt like the extreme version of... That's uh, really funny, I can't wait. Uh, yeah, yeah. Finding a spawn, <laughs> and then just going to town on all of them. Oh. And she she can hit multiple people, as many as like three or four in one fist. Yeah, movement. that's something I didn't even know uh, as possible. Monster, okay, Vess, you can't stop it. Ba -bam, ba -bam, ba -bam, ba -bam, that just looks so stupid, dude. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's, uh, what it I like is how he, he could probably have gone into it a bit more, but someone could easily make the thing of, like, you know, what do you mean you can't do that? It's their game, they can make whatever they want. You're like, no, you should not be able to do this. This is insane. Mm -hmm. Embarrassing. <laughs> you can see him, like, spawning in there in the dark. Yeah, those poor fuckers, they don't know what's happening. They're new to this world, they were literally born seconds ago. <laughs> reminds me of a, it reminds me of a video, I don't even know who made it, it was basically someone just grinding goblins in a cave, and then some <laughs> other goblin comes to us like, what are you doing? It's like, I'm just farming caves. It's like, they'll be back in the next time they respawn. It's like, no, those are extra people every time there's a new people it just pans over to like a big pile of goblin corpses it's like ooh. because yeah there's plenty of stormtrooper uh sort of opportunities to do this with them as well but this is near the beginning of the game and um i mean if they drop a rifle too you can just mow them down because it's like one shot and they're dead from there on what difficulty is that is that on you can do this on any or... difficulty Oh, okay. <laughs> Obviously, the harder the difficulty, the faster they will be able to kill you. Oh, yeah, did you see that bit? That's... <laughs> oh, there it is, yeah. <laughs> Yeet. Whoa. <laughs> hey, man. 7 out of 10. Oh, <laughs> Physics, woo! All right. Yeah, yeah. You are 7 out of 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... <laughs> oh. I wonder if it's funny to have incorporated this into like one of the scenes surrounded by stormtroopers or on the Empire base. I would have thought it'd be kind of fun to have that. Yeah, it would <laughs> like be funnier. Pussy! The world around you reacts to the Empire as though they are this imposing, insurmountable force. But when I go up against them, it's just a couple of shots from my pea shooter and they're down. It completely rips away any stakes or tension and it's not just the gameplay that does this. The story continuously flip flops on how they portray the Empire. I would have loved to have been worried about the Empire, careful about when or even if yep. I engaged with them. Doing something mm -hmm. like raiding an Imperial base should have been an impossible task. I think narrative- Hold on, but wasn't he just praising the way that Impact is felt in the game? Like, in the way it's presented? Uh, I can't remember if this whole section has just been shitting on the Empire, because he opened with saying they were interesting at first, uh, implying yeah. that, 
Uh, but he did say something about how it's like clear that they. He's not the only person who said this. Like he's like, oh, the Empire have such a. Yeah. I mean, he, he said that planet. that it's clear I, that they have the a grasp on the planet. But then he went on to say it's like it's actually not the case yeah, because I, I remember he, a long spiel about how their impact is felt and stuff within. Don't the you talk drum to me, Theo? What the fuck? <laughs> 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 Didn't even realize my bad. <laughs> Completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> Wait, am I hitting play then? Or... <laughs> yeah, sure. Right, yeah. Sorry. I'm, I'm back, back. <laughs> There's no going back, right? But from a gameplay perspective, a lot of this could be fixed by a difficulty change. Or maybe some tweaks to the wanted system. I swear to God, making it so that the stormtroopers can hit you in one shot would not fix what happens okay. in those dumbass Empire bases. Difficulty is a start, but it's not. The issue is more fundamental in terms of their engagement with your ability to interact with the world. Yeah, there's so a there is a point where difficulty might just lead to frustration instead of like a challenge I want to overcome, especially with how broken this game is. So that being wanted by the Empire was actually a thing I was even scared of. That really is just my major complaint for this game. It's so easy that it's boring. There are some other cool. That's a huge right. problem, man. That's a huge problem. Oh, that that's is so easy. Yeah. Yeah. It's hang so on, easy, on. it's boring. You're right. That when is a huge problem. Okay, I'm sorry. This can be your favorite game all you want, but I don't believe you would tell me in your video that it's boring. If you say to me that this game is boring, I don't understand oh, yeah, how this would be your favorite, favorite game. game. Yeah, his favorite Star, Star Wars, Wars game. game. I don't, I don't <laughs> know how that would happen. It's Jesus. so easy, it's boring. What does that You're mean right. about his That's opinion on all of the problem. Star Wars games? Damn. They're so difficult, they're exciting. Like, what? I'm just... So well, he, he, did, he did only, get a free. The, the only positive ahead. we've got so far, <clears throat> without mitigation, is there is a speeder that you drive around on. Which I was... love the speeder. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything else has come with plenty of asterisks about how this is actually really badly designed. <laughs> So, so he did get the free copy, right? And he did yeah. say, you know, the the first five to ten minutes of this video was was lots of praise. So maybe now he's thinking like, okay, Ubisoft's not watching anymore. I can start putting in. <laughs> I can now start like saying what I don't like about it. Even then, the fact he has to think about, oh, Ubisoft isn't watching anymore. I could be honest. <laughs> like, ooh. <laughs> they show of the empire but those are on the other planets and we actually have to get there first and to do that we need the final part for the trailblazer for waka to fix it and that part can only be found in the Man, wreckage we get into the real difficult part to watch where waka betrays you so <laughs> oh by the way this is the segment that ended essentially my first stream on this game because it actually made me sleepy it made me <laughs> drowsy and sleepy the third person platforming in this game was oh, is God. I think also, it's my least favorite part of the game. Rags, you know, the death of Waka and the hyper driving away from Toshara, that is technically the end of the tutorial. That's what people I refer think to. You're right, yeah. Isn't that insane? You got Indy five now. You're on your real mission to assemble your crew. Now the game can really start. And I'm Ugh. like, but I've already played for Oh my god, is this the fucking Twilight Princess tutorial? That's eighty nine hours? <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> Of yeah. this High Republic cruiser. Whoa, that's pretty goddamn cool. Why? Let's do a little uncharted is it, style is it? platforming. It. What? I mean, what can I say? Except, hold on, hold on. What a piece of junk. <laughs> Here, go back like five seconds, maybe. Okay. okay, let's just play it a bit. Of this High Republic cruiser. Okay, that that screen tearing is that in the in the replay that's or his, is that yes. that's, his that's his game? That's his footage. Yeah. He does oh, not God. have. He doesn't have the G sync because he's a loser. Can just yeah, okay. change your settings to not have that cool. like anymore. That, that looks oh, fucking that's terrible. Bad. Oh, yeah, that's bad. Oh, yeah. I've pretty got bad. a very good computer that's at this point, tearing. but it's been a while since I've seen that. Like, well, yeah, <laughs> it's, I haven't most, seen mostly it's like a in years some... because of G Sync. Yeah, yeah. Same, mostly you can same. fix it with like one option. I think it's like yeah. some form of uh, AA or whatever, if I remember correctly. Just need to switch it oh. over. Does, doesn't just V Sync do it? Just or amazing. Amazing. When, I th yeah. think so because it limits your frame rate. Because screen tearing happens when your the frame rate of like the machine and your monitors like not quite. Yeah, yeah, that's, um, that, that's probably yeah. it. <clears throat> so yeah. Yeah. I always forget which option that is, but that sounds right. Yeah. Every once in a little... while in gameplay footage, I'll see screen tearing, and I'm like, oh man, I used I used to remember like many years ago when that was a thing I ever had to deal <laughs> yeah. with. Yep. Thank God it's gone.
Uncharted style platforming, we find the piece we need in the bridge of the ship. And as soon as we grab it, we realize we're not alone. A couple of Zarek Besh agents Whoa. have found us and they're coming oh, to gun us no. down. But they don't know Kay's middle name is Batman. See, ever since we stole the trailblazer from Slero, he's put out what's called a death mark on K, which is essentially Which is definitely not he doesn't want you dead. Just to be clear, he wants you captured, so he put a death mark on you. That's very smart. I would have put a capture mark on <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Instead of a death mark. <laughs> Zero, because that's because you killed K Vest. Like, wait, you did what? You, oh, yeah, you put up. a death marker on it. <laughs> yeah, it's like. <laughs> be killed. But how did they find her all the way up here in this wreckage, though? What could they have possibly. <gasps> no way! Waka! Wait, them finding you has nothing to do with Waka finding you, right? Waka tells them. Yeah, Waka tells them. But why? Right. Wait, does he? I. Why would he do that? Because that gets him killed. <laughs> Technically he, speaking, anyway. He gets killed by someone else who's well, no, working he, no, for Slero. No, 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 no. So, so Vale works for Slero, who is Zarek Bash. Yeah. He so gets killed Waka by killed himself person. by letting them know that. <laughs> yes, but he didn't know that when he made the phone call. Why would he assume but, that Zarek Bash would be pro Waka? <laughs> what, well, look at him. He looks so would... reliable and cool. Should be Was an extra he, stat in the game. Is games. he supposed Bounce to be? Waka. Yeah, I guess either way it's a problem. <laughs> if Wal, if Wal, well, I would call them Walker for some reason. Walker. If, <laughs> if Walka, if Walka is a member of Zarek Bash secretly, then they he's should not. not want to kill him because he's one of their agent. But he's not. So if he just does the job because there's a death mark. Well then, why if they don't honor Oops. the death mark, then that means that oh, whenever they put out a death, he mark, didn't even. He just wanted the trailblazer. trailblazer, you know, like yeah. yeah. But he could have taken off with a trailblazer anytime she wasn't present, well, and he could have shot her in the back with a stun shot whenever he wanted anytime. to as well. Yeah. So not, uh, Walk is too dumb to live. <laughs> yeah, no, he's not allowed to be alive. He's too stupid. How could this have happened? Who could have foreseen? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what. Are you kidding? He was just like fixing shit up for no reason. What are we talking about? Yeah, here? and Kay trusted him. Yeah, it's Moron. stupid. It's a stupid yep. story. Kay is really stupid. dumb. Yeah. What are we even talking about? I wonder about stuff like this in some people's videos because he's playing with it, but I'm like, so we agree it's <clears throat> stupid, right? Like badly written. That is a problem. Mm -hmm. You're not just lampshading or like poking fun. This is an issue narratively. Kay is a retard, and so is Waka. Yeah. I just wonder if you if you uh, if you would ask him right now. It's like, oh, do you like think this is a problem, or do you just I don't know, knock this off as, oh, that's just what you do in writing. Yeah, I, I think he would tell us be, this is in all stories, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it'd, be, it'd mm. be mitigated as, like, commonplace, tropey, one, you know, one or something like that. Mm -hmm. Been known this. Like, we're not brother. Neither can I. Who are you again? There's actually a whole bunch of stuff that happens. Isn't that her intro, kind of? Like, seeing her physically, I don't think we've, we've really heard about her up to that point. Yeah. But to be uh, fair, I think so. Yeah, I yeah. did completely I, I, forget about it by the time we get to like the end. I believe anyone would have the reaction, "Who are you?" As if you can't remember if you've met people or not. Oh yeah, like game. like the the <laughs> moment of wait, am I supposed to know who you are or not? And the game is like kinda, <laughs> yeah, kinda. <laughs> It's all compact right here, so I want to explain it as simply as possible. All right. But the Zarek Besh agents show up. K kills them. And then Waka walks in, and he's going to kill K. But when he goes to kill K, a bounty hunter for He had to cut. Do you hear the, did you hear the cut when he was reading that line? That was a tough set of sentences to say. You know, person kills person, person kills person. He's not even person, on person, camera. Person, he person. could just read it. He could, no. the little symbols that make words, he can just say no. those. No. And... Uh, Zarek Besh shows up behind Waka and kills him. Her name is Vale. She's a bounty hunter. She's really not like that crucial to the story. She kind of comes up. She makes it so that they win at the end. Yeah, she, she is very brutal. In the we just do another fucking unit. synthetic bad aggro, but it doesn't do anything in the story. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she yeah. doesn't. <gasps> A little bit later though she killed waka and now she's gonna take k in alive but k runs away and she gets saved by a robot there's a whole lot of stuff going on all that matters is k got the part there's a bounty. that's funny by the way the idea that veil vale had to stop waka from killing her even though the so so waka didn't care about the death mark he just wanted the trailblazer yeah he was just gonna get rid of everything mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, uh, this is what I mean. It's so fucking K, confusing. And there is yeah, a robot stupid. protector named ND5, who is actually the best character oh, in the uh, video. There, there we, we go. go. Who the fuck are you? Why are you awesome? Mm -hmm. Now it's Danka. Why are you... 
That was the coolest motherfucker I've ever met in my life. I love this. Really? Guy. Putting a droid in a trench coat. In a trench, yeah. Because that, that's it. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. My it God. Takes. It's so shallow. <laughs> it sucks. It needed to be done sooner. I don't know why it wasn't. But whoever did it, he's a genius. I wish I could have played as him. It's a whole roller coaster of plot mm -hmm. armor, but it ends up with Kay escaping. You didn't say anything about his character. <laughs> you just said he's a droid <laughs> with a trench coat. That's it. And getting back what to the trailblazer, where of? her ship has been invaded. That droid, ND5, is actually owned by a guy named Jalen Vrax. I know I'm throwing around a lot of names right now. These two are really the only important Three? ones at the moment. See, Jalen's been watching. <laughs> That's Kay. a lot, okay. He's impressed by the could of her gym. Jalen wants to rob Slero's mansion again, but this time actually take something. And he figures since Kay got in there once before, she could probably get in there again. And considering the death mark that Zarek Bash put on Kay, she doesn't really have much of another option than to strike back at Zarek Bash. Kay accepts. She could refuse. I was about to say, what? Do you, couldn't you just say that's like the worst thing to do? As in, make yeah. the death mark worse, potentially? Or just like, I'm going to go to a faraway planet thought, and just lay low. Because well, the logic was, make as much money as you can to basically outclass the uh, the death mark, right? Like, to go mm -hmm. away somewhere forever. But, like, striking back at Slero is not the point of this mission for her. The job and Jalen tasks her with putting together Jaylen a crew to strike back. infiltrate Slero's mansion. With. He also yeah. leaves behind ND5. Who yeah, we also left awesome, out the, cool the, the hilarious detail that she says, Oh man, now that I, I was betrayed, I'm we're doing this alone, Nick's promise. And then two minutes later, Oh, we got this job now. Guess we'll go get a crew of people we don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Robot co -pilot. This is where the game fully opens up, and we can choose between fully three new up. planets. Now to the explore. game starts. Each one of these planets has a potential crew member for you to recruit. And what's so cool about it is you can choose which one you want to do and when. You can even bounce between the different planets. Yeah, and then the you want. game this breaks because fully... the game doesn't know what to do when you do different missions first. <laughs> can you believe this open world Star Wars game? And he says you can even go between planets whenever you want. Whoa! Wow! Incredible! That's in, that sounds like an open world game. Yeah. Yeah. My space game. I don't think so. There are graphics. I, I, you I, can shoot guns. Guns. <laughs> I think I, I said this last last time, but I mean this 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 is just Mass Effect 2, but a lot worse. It's the same sort of you know, recruit a team, you know, upgrade things. But yep, like the mission at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, there's a mission there's there's two dedicated missions for each of the people. The one where you find them, and then their loyalty mission that focuses on them and their backstory and character and everything. It is not yep. a complicated formula, and they did it really badly. Because the writing is shit and the story is shit. In, in this game, that you you recruit a guy and then he sits on your ship, but he also just doesn't appear in any cutscenes because you might not, not have actually got the other guys yet, so they just <laughs> yep. deleted them from the game. <laughs> yep. Utilizes the open world format and lets you tackle the story as you please. Each one of these missions. Yeah, but they didn't want you to do that. Of... Yeah, what they could have done. Go, Go ahead. Okay, they could have just said that the the main story takes place on its own track, independent of what planets you go to. So you can go to planets and everything. You don't have to do the main stories. Like, in, instead of tying it to... Um, you unlock playable areas based off of your story progress, not, okay, now all of the planets are open, do them at any order, and we're going to do that terribly. They should have done the other way. Where it's just yeah. okay, you here is your mat. Here's we're going to Tatooine first or whatever. Here's your massive Tatooine open world, and then you finally do the story that opens up the next place, so that you can ensure that people do it in order, but it still unlocks massive open worlds for people to play in, and that would still that would be a way better thing than them going just do whatever. There's there's, there's literally it doesn't make sense, but whatever. Yeah, you can always go back. Yeah, because now the, we have these hilarious things that happened to me. <clears throat> I did the mission where <laughs> the droid gets shot, and then I fuck off to another planet, but the game wanted me to go to the planet again to actually start another cutscene for the main story. So I did a whole planet where ND5 is actually shot, but it's not accounted for, he's just normal. <laughs> and then we, <laughs> then I go back to explore somewhere else, and it triggers the the cutscene they wanted me to see. As, uh, yeah, it's... It's really good. There's loads of interactions like that. The the big one being if you end on Akiva uh, being your last collection of a teammate, Akiva's the only one that ends its story with putting you in space and telling you to run. Like, leave. We don't want to be in this area. And then you're like, okay, next mission's on Akiva. And you're like, well, tell me to leave. <laughs> like, nah, go back to Akiva. You're like, okay, I'll do that.
to find a new crew member, as well as the planet you get to explore throughout it, not only makes the game feel bigger and bigger as you get to each new one, but also keeps exploration so fresh throughout it because mm -hmm. it, it, it had the opposite effect on me because I was I was seeing the repetitions of the limitations everywhere I went, just with a different coat of paint. And so even though I went to a new planet, so I was like, same. oh, this, it's just the same issue. It's yeah. the same stuff on a different, so the whole galaxy is just really shitty. I don't even want to go there if I could. At least when I started the game with Antishara, I was like, oh boy, I was filled with wonderment. What could possibly be waiting for me in all of these places? And I'll, oh, wait, it's shit. Never mind. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, well. Each one is so different from the other. The first planet I decided to visit uh, aesthetically. was Kijima. Whoa. Wow, that's what it looks like. That's the planet without a real open world. <laughs> yeah, that's all <laughs> it looks the... like, in fact. A food. A food. A shop. A floor. The wow. Whoa. A, more of the oh, stuff the that I saw before. Hey, a place. you know where I can find a good cantina? You know, the ones the locals go to. I might. Your map. A couple of credits would jog my memory. They got Fucking get a job. That guy bum. sounded like a Team America voice. <laughs> Couple of dreads, Jack Man. Well, they yeah. look. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what species these are in Star Wars. I'm sure someone in the comments will, or the the chat will tell me. But like, it's weird to see people who are Mon Calamari's and these guys yes. and whatnot, and they just sound like normal humans. It's so fucking weird like do you have the occasional no one that has like a bit of a muffled voice because there's tentacles in front of his face but that's about it it's like, really weird to hear yeah. like oh you're just a the voice actor for you is just a guy talking mm. they didn't you didn't even try to make you sound like an alien or mm. like put something on his mouth or have him hold his lips in a particular way so that you are like, no none of that it's yeah, just a I'm guy there's a dude yeah. who looks guys. like that who has like a really posh british voice is Oh, that guy, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I think I know who you're talking about, yeah. And I, I think it's actually a, a, a worse than normal sin to do it in Star Wars, because Star Wars is kind of known for that, that trope where everyone speaks a different language, and the audience doesn't know any of the languages, but everyone in the universe knows them all. Because Chewie's always going, Rrr, and yeah, everyone knows what he's saying, you know what I mean? Yeah, and everyone knows what they're saying. And they just don't do that here, even though they really should do it here. I don't think they do that much in the Disney trilogy at all. You got... I don't recall. The robots all do binary, right? And then, yeah, you got... You got Hutties is relatively... Eh, but... He's nuts. He's nuts. It's, that's <laughs> just another language, yeah. Star Wars? No damn way. The way the snow falls on the people in the environments, it's impressive, and it gives this location No, it isn't! Feel. <laughs> Could you stop it? Stop in Battlefield... It. Is, okay, is this in really Battlefield all 5, when your soldiers in Battlefield 5 go into water, they will get wet up to the point that the water on the model got up to, and then it will slowly dry from the top down the longer that you are out of the water. You, when you dive onto the ground, your character model will have dirt based off the side that was on the ground that you were on, and it persists. It's like, guys, we've got to stop giving these super amazing praises of the shittiest versions of those things in other games. Like, I, I sometimes I wonder, man, like, oh, there's snow on your character when you're out in the snow. It's like, yeah, you don't get bonus points for that. It would be a negative if you didn't have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What wasn't this done? This being impressive. Yeah, yeah. Well, wasn't this done in Uncharted Two? Like you go to the snow area in Uncharted Two, and I think this happens to Nathan Drake in that game. I mean, more simplistic versions of it happened in like GameCube games. You know, like Link would get wet in Wind Waker, and you'd like drip around. You know, like this is this is now like twenty year old. You know, um, graphical effects that we're talking about here. Yeah, this has gone from something that's neat to something that's cool to see, to something that is expected. If you don't have this in a game, especially one that's this expensive and looks with, you know, this graphical quality, you, you just have to. It's a thing you have to have now. Mm -hmm. The next step is to make it reflected in the played experience, which we seem to be roadblocked on for quite a while. Uh technically the smallest location in the game but that's because it doesn't have one of those big outskirts areas bro yeah that's what, what you mean bro. technically that is an explanation isn't it hmm. what it's the smallest because the it's smallest. yeah it's the smallest yeah. because it doesn't have an open world oh okay 
<laughs> How did yeah. you feel when so, you first discovered that guy? We, we 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 talked about this earlier, and we yeah, I think Mallory said we all had the same reaction of just like what what the fuck. But yeah. I, I recall I recall specifically leaving the town for the first time, and you're you're in like um a covered highway. And you can summon your bike. And it's like, okay, let's go. So you, you hop on your bike. Oh, and you yeah. drive for like 15 seconds. Oh, yeah. And That's it's just a thing. straight road. And you just get off right at your destination. And it's just like, oh, oh. oh. Dev. So the, yeah. Did that it. make you did that make you think of Novaria? Yes, actually. Yeah, from yeah, I knew. Yes. yeah, it did. Yeah. It made me think of that too. Where like, okay, it's not like an open world, but this is like a story segment. We have this the research station that you have to get to, and this is the vehicle segment where you get to the two that connects them, and it makes it feel isolated and claustrophobic and out of the way because it's like the research station for not that great projects and stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> this is like Novaria Mass Effect. And then <laughs> like two seconds later, we're here. Like, oh. <laughs> all right yeah yeah and, and and the fact that the quest that you're given is like, okay you have to go and infiltrate the hideout it's like okay i got it it's just down the road it's the only mm -hmm. road it's like oh okay this is really, road, this, this this is really a hideout here is <laughs> <laughs> like the others this is really just the main city that's not even really oh. a bad thing this yes it is it is okay <laughs> i would say that if Instead of an open world, you had a super expansive city to the point where the city was the open world and everything was urban related, like like a like a Coruscant esque. You're in this massive city. There's no like speeder bike open world, but you have so many options in the city that it feels that way. I'd be like, okay, they're trying something new and it feels different. And but that's not what they did in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the city is there, the same amount of shit in it that. as your average fucking Mos Eisley, and so it's just the same thing but less. That's all it was. So it's, that's why it's bad. It's well, it's probably it's probably got less content in it than the Tashara city. Probably, Do you think yeah. it has more or about the same gonna, amount or less? It would definitely be less than Toshara. It would be interesting if it was less than Mos Eisley. I think it is less than Mos Eisley as well. Um, I think oh, Akiv, uh, sorry, Kajimi is probably the place they finished last. Least development time. Yeah. Especially People considering the, the, saying, the Ashiga don't even get ahead. to be in the game for a long time if you don't go here. Like, if you go to all the other planets first, they're just not even incorporated. Like, they're not even relevant. And that's probably why they told you to go to, to go first. TV yeah, first, yeah. So yeah make you feel like, like it's bigger. <laughs> exactly. That would be. That would I be went weird. there yeah. second. It's really funny because I ended my stream after I fin finished this the, the part, the main story part. It's like, okay, next stream I'm gonna do the whole uh, outworld thingy. See what's up. And I was like, oh, let well, me. It's it, probably it, down there, right? And I, I can do this. Wait. We I can't go. A, I can't leave. It would have been like a Hoth <laughs> planet or something. They probably did have ideas for an open world where you could go across. I'm a, sure they did. All yeah. Kinds of yeah, and they just but like fuck just, it. Just that's just the review of the game. They probably did have ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I can't imagine. Yeah, people in the chat are saying, like. um, you know, they they could have made it like Yakuza. I was thinking there's a Deus Ex game that does it, but yeah, just the idea of having a larger city. Where stuff just happens in the city, or like like cyberpunk, you know, there's lots of examples of what they what they could have done, you know. Oh well, I mean, of course, I mean, if you're talking about Deus Ex and Mankind Divided, there's one hub world, but the hub world is incredibly dense. Like every door, like every every building has an interior. There's one yep. building that's six stories high that you don't even have to go to for any of the mandatory story missions. Um, you don't have to go there, but it's filled with things to do. It's huge. And 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 yeah, and and that's not even an open world game. Deus Ex is not an open world game. We can even go back further. The Citadel in Mass Effect. The first time you get there, one of the complaints some people have is that it's a bit confusing when you go there because you don't know where to go because there's so much stuff. It's like yeah, there's a lot of stuff. It's like a massive ring yeah. in terms of a map that you can go around and you can do all the things if you want. There's so much to do and see and yep. different people and stuff. And it's like yeah, this is. This is like, hey, this is our science fiction world. Check it out. And you're like, yes, I, I would like to. This is interesting. Vampire oh. the Masquerade Bloodlines from way back in the day did this pretty well. You know, they just got like a living city, you know. Like, there's this sort of thing has been done, and it's been done 10 to 20 years ago. So they could have done it. Yes, they could have. Yes, they could have. This area is so densely packed. No. Full of activities. If anything, I'm Densely glad it's more packed focused with furniture, not... with moving Densely furniture. Packed. Just call them with snow, furniture. basically. I don't expect to be able to interact with every NPC meaningfully. That's an unrealistic expectation for the most part. 
But if you give me enough of them to interact with, that's fine. It still feels real. It feels like a is, real place. Again, like Red Dead Redemption 2, you can fucking, any person that you walk past, you can have an interaction with them. Yeah, you, you can, can. Even if it's just you bumping into them, pointing a gun at them, you know? having them... Hey there, mister! You can do that. And then you can yeah. antagonize them. And then you can fight them. Like... No one talks to you. <laughs> There's no, like, interesting background chatter. You can't bump into people and they go, hey, watch it. It's Slim Ball, uh, Nerf Herder. They, they don't say anything like that. It's all just, it's empty. They are just moving furniture. That's all they are. Just needlessly bloated. And when I got to Kajimi was the first time I ever actually looked at the cosmetics in the game. I figured it was like a snowy area. I might as well put on like a big coat or something. And you got three options here. You can change the top, the bottoms, or the belt. Different pieces of equipment will come with different stats, but luckily you're given the opportunity to just use things aesthetically, which I actually really appreciate because I hate wearing the ugliest thing in the video game just because it is, has the highest stats. You yeah. Um uh sure. that was what i did though not necessarily that i wore the ugliest thing but i wore the stat related thing i didn't choose for aesthetics you can't some games do this you can't do it in this game you can't choose an aesthetic thing and then a stat thing as in yeah. i want the stats of this yeah. but i'll have the aesthetic of this if if you'd let me game that would have been cool but yeah they don't you can do that you can't that's in this game i couldn't do, do that um that is that is in this game that's Maybe we're talking about different things. You can choose the aesthetics. Every slot has an aesthetic option, which is what you want it to look like, but then it has the actual stats. Where... That is in this game. Where in the menu is that? Um, it is change appearance. Why? Right there on the right. So you can... Uh, nobody... I never even got to play with that. Like, like I never even uh, came across it. That's fascinating. Mahler, the only reason I know about it is because someone in my chat said so. Well, because um, I, didn't I have missed know. full mechanics that, that in this game thing. because they like don't introduce them. Remember the whistling thing? Like I had no idea it existed. <laughs> I used it twice, <laughs> and I think once was by accident. Yeah, I fat fingered it. It's the kind of just thing pressed that the wrong button. You, we never really get a chance to talk about because I don't. I thought this was solved. The introduction of mechanics, you know. The first time I open a menu, if you pause my game to be like. Here's what everything does. Are we good? Okay, off you go. That's like, okay, <laughs> sure, it's a bit clunky, but it gets the point across. But in this, yeah, it's interesting that you never... I never, no, I, I never knew it was there. It, but... I definitely yeah, would have used it if, I, <laughs> if I'd seen it. Uh, but yeah, I missed it. Well, like I said, it's not the only thing I've missed. So, um, in fact, there's probably... Because I've not done the um, the Jet Cordo thing. I, um, after seeing what you went through with just one of it, I decided I'd never touch that in a million years. Jet Cordo. The, remind um, me. When you remind me of my own experiences, please, because I forgot that, that little <laughs> device that beeps. Where it. Oh fuck that! Oh, did you saw my playthrough of that thing? Yes. Oh my <laughs> was, god! And like I said, I'm not. I've not. I've not 100 percent of this game, and I don't intend to. I don't want to. Jeez, that was frustrating. I remember when I did eventually find the button, and even everyone in my chat was like, "What the fuck? That's what you were supposed to find." Holy shit, that you gotta tiny do that. little fucking button. You gotta do that a whole bunch of times. It was just like, yeah, fuck that. Yeah, that was the part in the game where I said, yeah, whatever Death thought of this should kill themselves, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is, it's like, there's a lot of busy work in the game. And, uh, a, like, it's just, why would I, you know? What would... Yes. What would I, what do I gain from this? It's like, well, you get more credits? You're like, I'm all right. Jack Cordo's story? Do you want to know his story? It's like, not considering the other you know, random guy... in this game, but... That we learned about through a recording or two. Eh. I just, I don't like it. If if that's just a mechanic in video games that dies and never comes back, I'd be happy. The idea of, oh, the beeps get faster the closer you are, or depending on the location that you look at, and you have to go by the beeps. I'm like, I think I'm okay with that mechanic just going the way of the dodo well, a big and problem never you showing well up ever again. You weren't sure if it was up, down, or around up or down, or yeah. underneath shit, yeah. You just know, like, a general kind of area, but there's multiple layers, and it sucks, and I hate it so much, and I hate you, Dev, who put that in the game. I hate you. I don't know you, and I don't need to. Damn. Sorry about that, Rags. Yeah, you hate oh. Dev, huh? Wow, Dev. You're oh, wow. the one. <laughs> you're the cause of all my... You're the cause of all my suffering. Um, <laughs> you fucker. Plus one point for the, uh, you can choose... Uh, apparently, I can't confirm. I'd have to go do it myself, but I can believe from that option being there. You don't believe me? 
<sighs> wow. Uh, you actually, trust, you can trust look. me on this. Uh, I wouldn't lie to you about Star Wars Outlaws, man. <laughs> I'd lie to you about other stuff, but not this. Very important this thing. Is serious shit. At the cosmetics in the game, I figured it was like a snowy area. I might as well put on like a big coat or something. And you got smart three guys, here. smart guy. The top, the bottoms, or the belt. Different well, when you of have it, will come I guess with different you can stats. do that. What is yeah. it? Uh, does it display two jackets then? One for aesthetic, one for stats. If you put two uh, different ones on, or you. Is it if you go to change appearance, it gives you basically another menu where you choose what you want it to look like. Deb, did you really just post us what we discussed for the past 10 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> the, Deb's the, proud of his work. He's the one who put it in the game. The <laughs> idea that he says, I guess I might as well, rather than actually considering it as something that would be worth doing within the context of the game, to me, like says something about a failure on the game's part. Well, you want an immersive Star Wars experience, be like, it is really cold on this planet. If you do not wear this kind of gear, there will be negative repercussions. You can still play, but there's sure. going to be a negative aspect if you don't wear like a coat or something. And that could be one of your first missions. How do I get gear that is appropriate for this world on this world? Or and one of the Massive first things has already is... done that, right? Like Massive has done that in The Division where you had to get clothing in order to stay warm outside. that That's a, a function or a feature that they've already put in their previous games. That could be your opening opening mission for this place is, is K is like, holy shit balls, it's fucking cold in here. Jesus Christ, it is so cold. And Indy laughs at you because he's a robot and he has no feelings. And then that's your first mission is you have to find appropriate gear. And then that leads you into the stuff that happens on the planet. And like, that's a that's a good way to do that. That's the thing they do yep. in the new Zelda games. It's like, oh, there's yep. this new area that's cold. Guess I now need to find a way to be I mean, warm. And then we have like different options to do that. She does actually make a comment about how cold it is, but it doesn't affect anything, obviously. Like, oh, yeah, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, it's dark. So long as it doesn't <laughs> affect anything, it's just set dressing and kind of i think should be disregarded like <laughs> what yeah, dialogue like the, um... needs, yeah it needs to be made manifest in the played experience or else the dialogue doesn't actually like count for anything not mm -hmm. really no the cold should be more than just an aesthetic in a game like this especially if it's about immersively exploring the galaxy the star wars <laughs> world like you know what would be a really cool way to make planets feel different is to have them feel different actually <laughs> feel I mean, a lot different. of games that's you have a crazy that's we'll crazy a basic <laughs> take back a lot of games put a basic effect on your stamina, right? That's like a really obvious way to yeah, do it. You could do that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like there's, there are some, depends on how harsh you want to be, uh, but there are negative repercussions of not wearing appropriate gear with, um, yeah, in a certain environment. It's if you want to go back really, really, really right. far. Always. It, take if you want to go back, if you want to go back really far, someone in the chat mentioned, um, yeah, Zelda Ocarina of Time on the, N, on the N64, 1997 or whatever the fuck it was. You had to wear the red tunic to go into the, to go into the lava areas or else you'd right. start getting hurt. What, do you say like, lava? It's, this is something that's... Yeah, lava. Lava? Sorry. Lava? You mean lava? What? You fucking lava. Canadians. Yeah, la like lava, 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 whatever. <laughs> anyway, lava. Yeah, lava. Like point a, is... A lamp? It's the 70s, yes. my dude. Get out your groovy lava lamp. <laughs> lava. I say lava. Wait, yeah, okay, fine. Canadian accent, got it. But any, anyway, anyway, yeah, like this, this sort of thing is has Can just been a staple Canadians of games. We have fellow Canadians confirm this that this yeah, is this this a can, I've never heard this thing. before. I don't want you to be you able to get it. Before? You can't, you can't, squ you can't squirrel your yeah, way. Yeah, Mel out always this uses Jim as an excuse. We don't, we don't let him get away with it. So. Yeah, we don't. Let no, him. I, I'm, I'm not excusing anything. You guys just shit on me, and then I get sad. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so. It, in, in any case, th this sort of this sort of thing where you have to like wear different clothes for a new environment has been in games for a very long time. There's no excuse. It's not in this. Yeah. That's but luckily you're given the opportunity. Oh, and, and by the way, like even if it was just aesthetic, even if it was just like as she walks around, she huffs, she holds her arms, like rubs her arms or something, um, kind of hunches over a little bit. Even that would be like, well, that's something, I guess. That's mm. some level of immersion just to see and, aesthetically yeah. some changes. Ubisoft that's does something. that in their other games too, right? Like Ghost Recon, uh, both Breakpoint and Wildlands. If you're in the cold, your character will rub their shoulder. The, all these things. They 
are in that? other games <laughs> that they make. Like it's different when you're oh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Right, but it's not just that some other game from you know a multi-billion dollar company did it. It's that Ubisoft's own games do it too. Even Luigi, even though again, it shouldn't even fucking matter because it's Ubisoft is a big company. I mean, obviously they're declining mil. at the moment, but like they yeah, it's a lot of money. I you know. You, yeah. I think it's fair to compare, and people are going to compare it to Rockstar, sorry. They're going to compare it to the other games that they see, because they have the same fucking price tag. Which, Which is, is only good. Fun. It's just that you it's don't even It's not just fine, it's to. good. We want to increase people's expectations as games come out and we see what games can do. It's a good thing that over time, the bar for what is expected of games goes up and increases. I agree. Yeah to just use things aesthetically which i actually really appreciate because i hate wearing the ugliest thing in the video game just because it is, has the highest stats you're given a couple base cosmetics too, and there are some that you can get from merchants but there are also exclusive cosmetics that you can only get through maxing out your reputation with any given faction a little bit underwhelming with those i thought the uh yes i was really disappointed the pikes didn't get their own thing i didn't care for the uh the huts one i've almost forgotten what it was you remember what it was, Rags? It it looked like the the hut ones were that the shitty painted looking ones. Like there was like random paint splotches on your on the brown gear. Yeah, and then Crimson Dawn have the sleekest looking one, and then That's why I chose them. That's the only have... reason I chose them. Ashika just like it. It's just that outfit you wear if you're cold. <laughs> like that's the shit. It didn't feel like oh, this is the Ashiga gear. It just felt like oh yeah, that's a. That's yeah, a this coat. is like cold stuff for yeah. the cold planet. Like. Yeah, I guess that's what they would have, yeah. Crimson Dawn, I think, the only ones that actually got to feel like they had Crimson Dawn stuff. But... They had the insignia on the front, and it was black and kind of simplistic, and it was supposed to be your... Like, it's it's the best for stealth, but... Like, lol stealth, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. so... Yeah. Well, that, that's what I meant about, like, the, the stats. I felt like the Ashiga gear just fucking slaughters all the other ones. The stats on them were insane. Once you realize that... Once you realize that stealth is a complete waste of time and effort, then it's like, yeah, the Ashiga stuff is just clearly the best. The problem what, I what have I'm curious with about this now thing. is, did we, did we even need a gear stat system in the game to begin with? Is this, is this effort that could have gone somewhere else more usefully? Do we need more like tacked on RPG mechanic adjacent stuff in the video game? Um, what I will say is that when you look at like a broad, if you unlock them all, let's say, and it's like, oh, you got like fucking 50 different jackets with different stats, time to read them. It's like, yeah, but all this scope will all relate to more health, health regen, grenade slots. More carrying, more vials exactly. and yeah, grenades. Like the yeah. scope is so That's the only narrow thing that, matters. that it's just variations on that every single time to the point where one of them will outclass. Like, there'll be like five choices at best, probably. Statistically, because anyway. like, a lot of them are just worse versions. Yeah, realistically, mm -hmm. like, is very the huts out it elsewhere. Oh, see, look at that. That's the hut one. Isn't awful. It? Like, who would Dude, wear this? Yeah. yeah, they have like they have like the weird durasteel pattern underneath it, but it doesn't mean anything. And also, it's like, what is it? It's purple, orange, and red. Why can't you customize the colors? It looks like <laughs> it looks like it, it looks like shit. It looks like it's from Fortnite. Yes. It looks like, yeah, it looks like it's from <laughs> Suicide Squad. It doesn't look like it's from a thing I like. Outfit? <laughs> Sauceless. No point. Here, I grabbed all four don't... real quick. Yeah, that's them. So, like I said, I don't, like, the Empire one would probably be something I'd fucking wear if I was trying to pursue an Empire, you know. Role play as an Imperial, like, contractor. But that's the Pike or, one. Yeah. It's so weird that they just threw that into that. They clearly wanted you to be able to unlock an Empire outfit, but they were like, where do we put it? It's like, the pikes, also, a little bit of an elephant in the room, but there is no head customization. There's no hats, there's no visors, there's no all that cool Star Wars stuff. The masks and the helmets Dude. and all that, none of it, nothing. With how floompy no the hair is already, I don't think yeah. they want it to go near Do that it. whatsoever. <laughs> well, listen, different hairstyles all glitching well, out. Well, really, they, they, they would only have to make a couple bases of what happens to her hair if you have certain, like, helmets and stuff on. You have, like, the hair sticking out the bottom or, like, out the back or it's completely covered. So they'd only have to really come up with two variants or two or three variants of it because it's all for a single hairstyle and character to build around. So it wouldn't yeah. really be... Obviously, the way to go is to have the Han Solo outfit for the whole game, anyway. Han Solo, <laughs> yeah. Han Solo. Oh god, <laughs> just so cool. 
on weird looking a very military not feeling it the pikes get out of town i'm not putting that on my body if you pay me the only okay what he says that the, okay. he says the crimson dawn one looks military at mart no it doesn't what military are you talking about <laughs> Oh, no. Space military. The, the Hutt's outfit, sauceless. No point in it. Crimson Dawn, weird looking. A very military, not feeling it. The that is, okay, <laughs> That's, that is a that bizarre military of you, my dude. <laughs> that is a get out of town. I'm not putting opinion. that on my body if you pay me. The only cosmetic I actually liked from a faction came from the fourth faction in the game that I haven't mentioned yet, but they are specific to this planet, so I wasn't going to mention them until right now. Get off my freaking back. Is the That's Ashiga. Really That's it, though. There's four total. Those three other ones have their place in Star Wars. I like how you show the Ashiga queen, and you're like, oh, what's the outfit? It's like you know half outfit basically random like, yeah what? Hoth, it's half outfit. what does that have to do with the shiga and you're like it's cold <laughs> it's cold because you know they're they're a bug race so they really like cold planets don't think about it makes sense okay that's weird that that's a thing and also all their faces are covered so they didn't have to animate anything but all right. oh you can <laughs> tell that's why they it's funny though because they don't yep. fucking animate anything else anyway <laughs> people's faces the amount of dead sold people you find in this world and were pulled from various pieces of Star Wars media, but the Ashiga were created specifically for this game. They kind of look like bug people, and they don't really have much territory. I don't, I mean, no, they don't. They don't, they don't look, look like, like bug bugs. people. They look like humans with masks on. Yeah. There's nothing buggy like about the way they sound, the way Japanese they behave. Enemies. They don't even move differently than humans at all. Yeah, I just don't... I mean, they don't get any points. None whatsoever. There's nothing buggy about them planets at the start of the game but they do have some of the best cosmetics in the game why a, <laughs> yeah they look nice yeah it's coat. but, but don't... it's a nice jacket <laughs> nice coat sure. relatively right. neutral to me you <laughs> Kajimi, you're confronted by some of the ashiga and they accuse you of working with crimson dawn apparently the ashiga rule kajimi and crimson dawn has been poking their little nose in over here too so a lot of the faction war on this what planet are those two the crew member we're looking for here on kajimi is named Ang. a lot of the best safe cracker in the outer rim you can't say cracker yeah, of all the crackers, she's the safest. So it makes sense, <laughs> you know. Without her. She is just this crazy bomb lady. I love her so much. Naturally, if you want information as a scoundrel, you give me two of her traits. <laughs> he is erratic and Lumbo. All right. You can't say short, that's not allowed. Damn uh, it. Small. I don't know if Lumbo. Small. Damn it. <laughs> Tiny. <sighs> He's like, meh, 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 meh. That's vertically you challenged. You go to the nearest bar, and that's where you can find a bartender who will tell you that Ank is in debt to pretty much everybody, including the Ashiga. But this debt to the Ashiga is a pretty big one, and Ank is working off that debt in the factory probably for the rest of her life. Turns out there's a little family drama going on with the Ashiga, though. You see, they call themselves yeah. like a hive, and they've got of a strange format because like you wouldn't need to really summarize all this would you you could just say get it i guess it makes me somewhat wonder how He's... this has to become the fate of the best safe cracker in the outer rim surely someone could think of a better thing to do with them i just feel like you wouldn't know the identity of the best safe cracker in the galaxy but that's just me you might have an alias to go off of, I don't know, but yeah, yeah you wouldn't have alias. them, their face, Well, that's how you find address. Garrus in Mass Effect 2. You don't know it's Garrus until you, like, go there, because he's using an alias. He's only known by the alias. I've seen alias. Um, Elias? Yeah. No one here's even fucking watched. Shut up, nerd. I don't My know alias has watched about. it. A queen, but the daughter of this queen doesn't queen. exactly like how the queen is running things. Our expansion has made us vulnerable, mother. It will make the hive stronger. We don't need the outer. By the way, all of this backstory about the hive expanding and everything, literally nothing. It's it's nothing. <laughs> well, it's just like it textual. Yeah, it's just textual textual backstory. It's like a little li narrative, but there's nothing relating well, to anything the... happening. Like it doesn't it matter. Like this doesn't exist. Sort of a, an essential promise of the game is that you should expect to see that your actions will create consequences that are visible in the open world. That if there are certain sides that you're helping more, that them becoming stronger will become more apparent. That it should be the case that the, that, you know, they can gain control over new planets instead of it just being, oh, 
here's this zone where they are so watch out or alternatively hey cool but like it doesn't it doesn't result in any meaningful changes well it causes narrative issues if anything because if you're yeah. the best allied with the ashiga then well they shouldn't want they don't want to get involved and expand into these imperial like why would the ashiga ever after all that you've learned about them why would they ever attack the empire that would be insane right oh but they will so all this whole all this backstory does is just create a narrative issue um i i think it's best sort of summarized by the fact that if you choose in this storyline to side with the queen risk dies if you choose to side with Crisk, the queen dies and she takes a little helmet thing that is scepter thus <laughs> beaning yay you <laughs> can't tell the fucking difference no matter what you do <laughs> it is so funny how uh i'd be curious to check you see how the, the colors are a little bit different on their shoulders I wonder if yeah. Crisk's color changes to the Queen's one, like a scene after he takes the uh, the helmet off her. Ooh, that'd be fun. Because it's the same texture, because they all wear like the same outfit, because that's cheaper to just make one model well, yeah, and it's, just copy um, and paste it to all the Ashiga people. Every time, it, it, it's, it's that thing of like, uh, you know, they make this joke about Bethesda, right? Where it's like, you get asked a question, and it's like, yes, yeah, uh, no, but also yes, or yes, I'm thinking, <laughs> but no. You know, like, all of it leads to the exact same yeah. fucking result. Yeah. Karim, our place is here. <gasps> we have decided. So she scurried on down to Crimson Dawn, and they've been conspiring to overthrow the queen. Now these two have agreed to help you get Ankh out and let you leave with her if you will assist in their overthrowing of the queen. You can choose whether to you side finish the that in one sentence? or the queen, but Shit. this is a situation where the conflict is very much coming to a head and you have to make a decision. Makes no difference, except of course, yeah. it actually does make one difference that it shouldn't. Um, I feel like you're about this, it's annoying me. Chris, if you side with her in Crimson Dawn, it'll boost your Crimson Dawn uh, rep. That makes sense, and it'll it'll. Uh, I, th I think it doesn't change your Ashiga, but if you side with the Queen, it'll lower your Crimson Dawn and and higher br bring up your Ashiga rep. It's like wait, the Ashiga rep should go up both ways because when you side with the Crimson Dawn, you're siding. You're going with the yeah, Ashiga. Yeah, exactly. Siding with the, the winner queen. of the Ashiga winner. Yeah. yeah. The game is too stupid. <laughs> I just realized. <laughs> no, it's a really interesting and cool mechanic that's awesome and really great. It's pretty good. Good stuff. Yeah. Because, uh... because someone is not making out of it alive. Before things get too big and crazy, though, there are some side activities on Kajimi that I think Whoa. are fun. Oh my god. Oh, no, please. Please. Here we go. Uh, please, well. please talk about the. I. Fucking stupid uh, mini game. I hope you mentioned that you can't fail these. Oh, I it's I also so funny. Available cute news are a thing of the past. I guess he's playing um on a controller here. On PC, if you're using this metal, you'll probably know because you played it on PC too. I did. They use weird ass buttons for It's the just PC random quick buttons times. on your keyboard. It's like J, I, K, L, E, F. See, it's like all these random, random yeah, ones. I thought what they were going for was like, oh, I'm probably going to use WASD and then maybe something like uh, K, J, and then JKLI like or something. For, for Nix, because they're left and right. But as yeah, far as it was just really then it goes weird. To like P or V? It was like, what? what? <laughs> I had to, I ha that's why I hated it, because I had to see the button then then look, because I'm a really good typist. But when you're telling me to like, press quickly this one random key when it's not contextualized by a word or anything i have to yeah. like look at it and hit it so i was constantly looking up and down from my monitor to my keyboard to make sure i hit the right buttons it was really not fun at all it was a, a chore to do it wasn't like a fun um like in resident evil and other stuff generally quick time events there's only a couple different assortments of them like uh l and r or a and b or if you're on a keyboard, it's like maybe like shift E, like mm -hmm. stuff that you're used to pressing anyway. Not like search and find the letter on the keyboard in the correct time um, just... that you never use for gameplay. Like L? L is the <laughs> button, really. I have to go L. Oh, all the way over here. All right. And then what's the next one? Q. Oh, that one's over here. J. Uh, 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 v. Ah. Mm hmm. Just cannot understand what they think this accomplishes. Like. Do well, they think, I think this is a immersion. useful use? Do, but like, if they think this contributes in any way to immersion, that's like, I I wonder how they ended up making a video game. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, in I, the planning I stage, yeah, planning in the planning stage, what they 
I think created these were it was it was for pure immersion. Look, you're eating your weird space food. You got your little nicks there. You got your character. You're out here at the street vendor. You got all these people sitting next to you. The robots chopping food. The background is the planet. Is like that's what the idea was behind it. To the point yeah. where you can't even fail it. Me inputting the Konami code to eat my food somehow adds to this in some way. Someone in the boardroom or like the ideas room said, and nobody looked at them funny. <laughs> I guess it's like an immersive, yeah, immersive food mini game was how it got pitched. Because a lot and of the time, the yeah, a lot of the time QTEs like this are used to like punctuate particular bigger motions, right? Like even in their yeah. words uses, right? There's like some. Like, yeah, you know, to, to dodge Resident something Evil coming 4, at you or whatnot. Yeah, the, Resident Evil 4. Tap A as fast as you can to replicate the frenetic energy of you running for your life away from a boulder. Wham, 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 wham. It kind of connects you with a character in some way. That's like a QTE at its best, potentially. Mm -hmm. It's some way to get you to exert yourself in a way that's supposed to mirror the character that you're controlling. Um, and this is just like, <laughs> it's just press the buttons. So that you can progress to the yeah. next stage of the game. And then they let you then let you hold down the button, but then you can just stop and then it just goes back down. So you go like your hand moves and it's like, oh and go, it oh, goes. It's especially I'm gonna eat it. No, I'm not. Especially funny this one when Nyx get us uh, gets the tongue oh, cut the on the, ice. the ice. Yeah, that's terrible. It... Fringy, you I saw Fringy playing this bit and I was like, he and I had the same reaction, like, oh no, that's what terrible pain you've put him in. That's gonna Why be would horrible. you ever do this? That's uh... awful. As I understand it, if your tongue gets stuck to something because it's cold, it's bad ripping time. off is a bad idea. Very mm -hmm. bad idea. What, you, as I understand. You, you uh... get warm, warm water and you pour warm yeah, water over it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't rip the tongue off of the thing that it's stuck to. Like it's freaking a Christmas story, okay? <laughs> you're hurting you're hurting him. You're supposed to be a steward. He's your pet. He's your friend. Well, it's just weird that there would be a meal that could like seriously maim and injure. <laughs> uh, the person who's eating it because they don't realize that they're not meant to eat it. Like, it, it has an instruction perfect. manual. Yeah, you think you'd say, hey, don't lick the ice ball. It'll freeze to your tongue. You're supposed to melt it first. And you'd be like, okay, thanks, man. I won't do that. Because if I did, that would be really bad. And I would sue you. There's this little mini game that you can play with Nyx. It's like a bonding experience. It is a glorified, like, quick time event, but just. No, it's not a, glor a glorified quick time well, event. No, it's it a like literal amazing. quick time it, event. It's, yeah, yeah, it's just it's a literal, literal quick, quick time, time event. event. It's and not it's even a not quick good. time event because yeah, quick implies you that you have, like, fail. a timer. It's just a time event. Yeah. It's a long time event. That shit goes it's on forever. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's an extended button pressing sequence for the two eating noodles or something it's cute right it's cool i'll shit on disney all day long for creating cute, these little cool. money makers but at the end of the day i like him it also helps the dude is crazy uh, why why that's why uh, why not make it a cutscene? what what's, why yeah why is this cute and cool? it really should have been a cutscene. why do you like nicks why He's an QTE angel. part of this like strikes me in this really weird way. Like the game's just gone and got an ice cream, and it you're standing there next to it while while it eats it, and it just sort of like guiltily offers yeah. it to you. You know, it's like oh, I, yeah. I guess you wanted to do something too, huh? Right. Uh, sure. Press some buttons while we play our cutscene. I guess. And I would have been fine with that. I would have been okay with just watching a cutscene uh, that is totally optional, and if I want to see them, you know, bonding. Totally fine. I would have been fine with that. Sure, Instead especially of if it was skippable. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, he can attack people, he can distract people, he can sneak through stuff and open up vents. What a, okay. what a strange so, place to talk about Nyx. Yeah, like, oh yeah, I like him. He can do two things. You can oh, mix it also his like... gameplay functionalities and I don't have to safeguard him in any way. Well, yeah, the thing is, yeah. Nyx is, from a, from a mechanical standpoint, Nyx is insane. He's fucking bonkers. He could do everything. He could do all the things. He tells you where enemies are. He fetches items. He distracts. He sets off grenades in people's pockets. <laughs> Nyx does everything. He holds doors open for you. He presses buttons that you can't reach. He is just, he is this Swiss army knife of insane mechanical, um, you know, yeah. abilities. I mean, you say that, but at the same time, it feels like that's kind of not even the case, that there's a whole bunch of things that you can do. It's like, well, there's a very limited set of ways that you can have him interact with the environment, and that's kind of, like, the, the deal. 
right? If ever you hit a wall, oh, well, yeah, just wherever there's a button, get him to press the I guess, button. That's, yeah, that's it's like weird, because we're basically... That's not worth complimenting. We're kind of, <laughs> like, both correct in that he can do a lot of stuff within the very strict parameters of what you're allowed to do at the moment, you know? Yeah, exactly. You can't there, use him a, creatively. That's the thing. Yeah, pretty much. Like, there's nothing that you can do where you'd be, like, really surprised by your ability to have him interact with the world. It's a, it's a, it's, it really is limited despite the list of things that you can purportedly do with him. It's um, like, um, yeah, it, he's like, he's like the key that can unlock the single door in front of you all the time. It's like, yeah, I guess it's, a, it's insanely useful and it can do everything as long as that thing is whatever the door is in front of me at that given time. You would also be, as for like, um, wanted by everybody in the world. Yeah, goddamn. Well, well, remember his on use... Tatooine, they really want that. Mer what Murkal? Oh, well, because of his called... rarity. I but I, I'm saying like they'd want him because eh, who wouldn't want this creature? It can just do everything. Like in terms of, he can as sense, you said, with the yeah, of electrical the scope. currents and people, and he's extremely intelligent. In Understands terms of the exactly that you what you want give. him to do every time. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, he always does what he like. He he's he's it's like. Calling him a, a dog feels like, well, no, but he, like, seems to fucking understand, like, English. Like, in a very robust like sense of the word. Like, right. can, yeah. Yeah, and he clearly has, like, expressions and vocalizes them. It's, it's just like a super pet, essentially. And the game makes a promise with the sheer wonder creature that he is, that it can't fulfill upon in terms of how things should go eventually. Once once people know about Kay and know about Kay's little fucking goober companion, people are going to start shooting it when they see it if they are hostile to her. <laughs> yep. They should mm -hmm. shoot at it regardless of whether or not they know what it is. The fact that it's jumping on them or jumping on their friends oh, yeah, or it's sure. just like this big old creature is like it. It's one of my issues with Kay like as a character is she sends this creature that she allegedly loves um, into these insanely dangerous scenarios where she should reasonably expect he can get hurt or killed, but he, she doesn't care. She is. She treats him like a tool, mm -hmm. right? Without any real consideration. In turn, the game is unwilling to follow through on the promise that this thing really should be able to get hurt. Rags, who, who do you like more, Nix or BB-8? Nix. Why? Oh, I just like his little smile, his little noises, and the way that he looks at me, and his and his eyes gleam, and he's just a he's just a, a beloved, lovely little great little critter. Look at him go! I just like him, I like him a lot. Who do you prefer, R two D two or Nyx? R two D two. Why? Well, is this does this count the time he tried to murder C three PO weirdly in Attack <laughs> of the Clones? That is a good element of his traits, all right? That's one of his uh, holy shit, what a badass. R two D two seems to be like like he actually he has like a bit of a like a character to him and he doesn't seem like he's uh, it makes more sense that he would be in the scenarios that he's in in a lot of ways. Um, that, like, he belonged to, um, someone, and, uh, he's being used by other people, and that he can interface with things reasonably, like, his ability to, like, do stuff. None of, nothing that he, nothing that he can do seems like, it's, it's just a believe me. Um, like, Nick's being able to sense both everybody around and convey that information to Kay, as well as sensing electrical, like, currents and everything. I just, it's tough for me to wrap my head around that, both of those being things that he could do. Whereas when R2-D2 does stuff, it is typically stuff that you can believe a robot to do. He can hack into things or access computers and open doors and stuff, but he has to have like a connection to it. Um, and he seems like he's used in more ways than just essentially a, just a, a problem solver. And he also Sorry, has like a I... camaraderie with uh, C-3PO as well. I feel so... like... The, the comparison between R2-D2 and Nick should emphasize why Nick sucks and R2-D2 is awesome. <laughs> R2-D2 has, like, a real personality. He has, like, a real kind of unexpected personality. Um, and it has to be conveyed through non-conventional means. Like, he doesn't have a face. He, like, shakes back and forth and makes beeping sounds. But you know exactly who he is. You know what he values. 
Like, all of that comes through clearly. Nyx is just, like, a space dog. Like, a space auto dog that's always friendly and nice. Like, and then does everything. <laughs> he needs to be saved. He needs to be rescued from Kay's like, cruel yeah. clutches. There's nothing, there's nothing like particularly inventable, interesting, or clever about Nyx at all compared to, to a character like R2-D2. R2-D2's great. I really like Nyx. <laughs> I like so his little okay smile, here. and I like his little animations, and his goofy jump over the countertops at bar. Uh oh, no, uh oh, uh -oh. oh I oh, thought it was me. me. He's run away. Nope. He's run away. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> I, actually, I actually wanted to ask Rags a question about this. Now he's waiting for him to come back. Well, I got a real fo good follow up. I'm curious how he's going to deal with it with this stupid like. <laughs> oh, it's cute though. Come on, Rags, slither back. <laughs> <laughs> wow, slither back, jeez. <laughs> That's rough. If he takes more than 15 seconds, I got something else. Well, go ahead, I guess. Let's, well, fucking let's, count. Let's count it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so while uh, one, one, of, one of my fans who's, who's watching DM'd me a PDF, and it's of an Edge magazine where they were talking about the making of this game. I'm just gonna I'm gonna put one page in here, real quick while we wait for Rags to return, because it's it's, a, it's actually about Nyx, and apparently according to this page, uh, they made a model of Nyx, and they and like they they mo capped the puppet, they they made like a Jim Henson style model, and then they they did like puppet stuff and they mo capped the puppet and put it into the game. Huh. And I'm just sitting, I'm I'm, th I'm sitting here wow. thinking like, what a what an incredible waste of money. A little bit, yeah. Why would you do that? <laughs> Almost seems like you would do that because, yeah, Star Wars, they do puppets, so we're going to do puppets even though our thing is 100% animated. <laughs> that, that's basically what this they is... say in, in the second last paragraph of the article. This is the kind of shit I mean when I talk about Star Wars being inbred. Like, every <laughs> yeah, it's, every it's single aspect of its construction is so self-referential and like constantly contorting in on itself like a fucking Ouroboros in this way. Yeah, it, it's, it reads, If you've been thinking that Vess's alien companion, Nyx, resembles a Jim Henson creation, well, there's no coincidence. There are so many practical effects in these movies that are phenomenal. Nyx's mocap was recorded using a puppet, and his in-game model is designed to match, utilizing shaders specifically created to represent a sort of latex material. <laughs> so yeah, they, they, they wanted it to be puppet-like, yeah. But it's not, though. It's, he isn't even. Like, he's animated, like, fully. Like in a, in a way that goes beyond this, like what would be practically achievable with like a real puppet. Yep. So yep. I don't, you know what I mean? Like I don't even. It, it, it just, really it's seems just to silly. me like, oh yeah, Star Wars has puppets, so we're making a puppet, even though he's not a puppet, even though he's just a fully animated character. Yeah, because it's in a <laughs> video game that's all animated. It's, oh, it's so silly. To be honest, there's there's a lot of glazing in this article. I don't know if you want to look out, look over it another time, but uh. Yeah, I just wanted to point that that part out because we're talking about Nyx. Are I think back, it's Rex? interesting. I think it's interesting. Uh, my in... computer blue screened and restarted, oh, so I'm Jesus. I'm having some sort of an issue where it sort of happened a couple days ago. Where it sort of happened in Hell Divers too. Mm. Um, but I don't. I think it's more. But it like I have like games are crashing again. Normally just a desktop, but sometimes my computer will just restart. It'll just restart uh. unprompted. So I'm trying to get to the bottom of it as to why this has happened, because things were totally normal. And then a couple days ago, like this started happening. So I need to figure out what's going on. Do you, so do I'm you, saving like some I'm, of these like, errors and warnings. Do you, do you get a, be like a memory a leak? Could be. So this this last, the, the one that just happened, I got a blue screen that said IRQL um, not less or equal. So I've saved that to look into that later. Okay. But, yeah, I've, I'll have to do something. I find it funny it's... that everybody in chat, like, there's a whole bunch of people in chat with a variety of different things. Like, yeah, I mean, a blue screen could be, like, any number of problems. Yeah, that's why I'm asking like, for the blue screen. Yeah. There's normally, like, yeah. an ID on it that you well, get no, no, no. check IRQL, like, like, not less or equal. Just like, oh, CPU, GPU, memory, it's yeah. like, it could be like, anything. I don't know, I don't know it's three comments I'm not one a after the other. I'm not a dying rat guy. Snakes. Maybe yeah, a memory I, dump. PSU could be on its way out. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, it, I guess it could be. <laughs> what if it is your air conditioner? It might be. Um, my air conditioning's not on. I don't have my air conditioning on. But it was on before. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> it was maybe, on. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's, it's, not, it's not that yeah. hot. It's actually it's a really pleasant time of the year here, where 
So you don't need air conditioning or heat or anything. So. Is, is that the error, regs? IRQL not less or equal is what the error is. I saw it before it. Um, yeah, I read yeah, it before I posted, it changed. I posted it in the, in the chat. Yeah, that, that's like that's the, the most thing, generic yeah. Windows error. That could yeah, mean like so. your hardware is dying, like your hard drive's dying, your, your CPU's dying, your RAM's well, dying. Like, that could be like anything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's weird that like <laughs> such a huge stretch of time went where I had no issues whatsoever. And like I thought, oh, the PC's finally fixed. It's all good. No problems because you used to have that bad crashing issue. And now in the last couple of days, it seems to only happen when I've got um, like a, a game or an application running because I had like Minecraft up and I was testing it to like run as administrator and stuff like that. But then it just blue screened and it just re just computer just restarts. It doesn't do any damage or anything. It doesn't say anything's wrong apart from the blue screen. It just reboots right back up. And so I'm like, well, that's something for me to solve later. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Those are all right. So you had a question, Mola. Oh. I had a question too, but go ahead, Mala. No, Dev, you can go first. It's all right. Okay, so you're doing these comparisons, Rags, and uh, let's do an, like, an apples to apples comparison. Okay, Between so what and what? Nix, yeah. Nix, and BD One, since they're both companions. BD One, he's the one from the Jedi games, right? The yeah, outlaw, the little robot the guy, survivor. Yeah, yep. I don't know anything about him. Oh, okay. He honestly has like a very similar personality to Nix. Because he just kind of oh. hangs around and beeps and boops and helps out. What a cheerful guy. I don't know. I think I prefer BD1, just because he seems kinder. Um, I mean, if they were identical in ter terms of personality, I'd be more partial to the robot simply because, like, a robot means that as the creator, artist, whatever, you're embracing challenges that are, that are harder to overcome. Like, Nyx is so much like a real animal... That it's like, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's like a cute animal, so that's way easier than if it's a robot. You know, robot yeah. means you got to try harder to convey personality and emotion. You have to be a bit more unconventional, and it feels <laughs> like that's got to be that should be worth something, right? Mm -hmm. So, so you, you can't send BD one to go and um and steal things. You can't do that. But for the most part, they kind of fulfill the same gameplay functions because they are your little companion. They both do like the, the room wide scan thing and they tell you where enemies are. Like all, all that sort of thing is done by both by both um, companions. But it makes more sense with BD1 because he's a robot and you can actually scan things. He's not just an animal, you know? Indeed. What was your question? The, does Rags like this or? Yeah, I just, I just want to know if if Rags, you knew if you played those games, which which I companion played the character first did you prefer? One for like four or six hours, that's it. I just oh, don't okay. really remember much about it. Well, I was going to ask about oh. uh, Baby Yoda. <laughs> the older. Why doesn't Why doesn't he get the benefit that uh, Nix is getting? He's an ugly fucker, and <laughs> he's a big jerk, and he eats babies. Oh man. If only you knew the horrors that Nyx has gotten up to. Oh my god. Is it the grenade thing? Is it all the things? The, <laughs> he seems to have a unique understanding. Oh yeah, I mean, Nyx is a participant in the in the wanton violence that uh, K perpetrates. She's mind controlling him against his better nature. She's, corru <laughs> she's a corrupting influence on him. He needs to be rescued from her vile clutches. <laughs> so, so since we are on tangent land right now, about 10 minutes ago, I, I left for a minute because, um, Fringy, you mentioned something, and you said something about the Ashiga basically having no consequence in the story. I think mm -hmm. it was about 10, 15 minutes ago. And that, that, that triggered something in my autistic brain, so I went to go look something up. And uh, that's not true, actually. It turns out that the, there's actually some, some wide lore implications regarding the Ashiga in this game. Let me just pull it up here real quick. So yeah, uh, the Ashiga storyline was made to give this character more backstory. Let me just post it here. You see that? You see that 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 red blob that they're running by in episode seven? Uh huh. Yeah. Oh yeah, R blob. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's so that is. So that that, that is a guy some... from the Ashiga. Wow. Did they take? 
So did they just take <laughs> like a background goober from the movies and say we're gonna build a faction around this random person? That's that's our guy yep. right there. That's what they did. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't have a problem with that if they built like an interesting faction. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have a problem so, with that actually at all. But yeah. That that's his only appearance in on screen. It's just this blurry shot as you go by. But this hmm. is this is what they're basing him on. Now I, I did I did dig up like a like a, like a costume photo of like like behind the scenes, and so here's here's what he looks like. So you can you can tell oh, us yeah, it's the sure same enough. race. There it is. Yeah. There, it is. there yeah. it is. So I guess they really did see like some picture. Maybe they were thumbing through like, hey, we're gonna make this entire faction. Let's go ahead and connect it to Star Wars by being like, yeah, actually this background guy over here, that's a whole faction, and he's got friends and allies and a people out there somewhere. Yep. Which he's probably not very happy about, considering the execution quality, but, you know. <laughs> and I, I, everyone in the chat is saying, glup shit oh, yeah, 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 but mm -hmm. I decided Just to look his name up. His name is uh, Sarko Plank. Sarko <laughs> Plank. Plank. <laughs> Sarko Plank. That, that is, that oh, is, they, the they, they, they is really a have a way with names. There. Disney all day long for creating these little money makers, but at the end of the day, I like him. It also helps the dude is crazy useful. Are like, you not self-aware enough to realize? Yeah, yeah. That's what's annoying about also it. Also, you, Rag supplies, too. <laughs> yeah, like, I it's the recognition know. that it's just a cynical attempt to get you to on side with their creation, but they're not putting in, like, any real effort. But now it's, like, actually just a thing that they can do reliably to make money. Like, Baby Yoda has made Disney so much money. There's so I, much merchandise. I ain't out here, I ain't out here buying... Nick's keychains and plushes and saying the game's good or anything like that. I I no. think that <laughs> you, know, it's, it's you keep talking about you know? Nick's being awesome. He's not. I think he's a cute guy and There's I like him. There's nothing about him. That's the thing. Like that's what's that's that's like the frustrating thing. There's nothing it's it's not like they they like put in the the It's just like he's cute. That's it. You like, like when girls see ball. um Baby Yoda, they go nuts. They like they're just like, oh my god, he's amazing. You're like, no, stop. Yeah, like Resist. the only difference is whether or not it's a particular aesthetic that like just grabs you more so than like, hey, what if it was like a cool aesthetic and they like kind of went above and beyond in terms of creating a character? And you know, we've talked about it before, but yeah, the Salacious B Crumb, if if that was a companion, that would be way cooler. Yeah, he has to work to get you to like him because he's an yeah. ugly critter. <laughs> so. Exactly. If that's the bold choice, that would be the daring choice, is to get you to have that guy sitting on your shoulder and getting you to be really passionate about him. Stab him. Stab him, Kay. Get him. Get his money. <laughs> <laughs> Take his legs. It would be, it's the same, by the way, if we just kept saying um, Andy is awesome, and all we ever said was he has a trench coat. Yeah. He's not awesome. He's kind of cringy in the fact that they relied solely on his trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People, he can sneak through stuff and open up vents. He just opens doors for me randomly. He also gives you eagle vision. I don't know how they just find that one. Yeah, was it like randomly? And this little mini game is fun. And the other cool thing here on Kajimi is there's a secret sabak table that you can find if you listen closely enough. Kessel sabak is a popular card game. In Actually, uh, I, I don't know if you guys did it, but if you're if you're doing the eating mini game and you fail, it just goes infinitely. Mm -hmm. You can sit there and like tug of war with Nyx over the food for like a half an hour. Where you were you an hour close. ago? <laughs> oh, oops, sorry. <laughs> I was probably looking up stuff about that. that we were beaming game. about this. this was, yeah, yeah, you missed oh, it. <laughs> my bad. Star Wars universe that I think is their version of like poker or something. See, as a famous outlaw, you got to be good at gambling. So naturally, I played a shit ton of this. Basically, how it works say, is you're giving. I'm offended on behalf of poker, but. <laughs> these two cards and you have to make the them into of an a idea. pair of the lowest numbers possible while also keeping as many of your coins as possible and every time you draw a card you have to deposit a coin and you can either draw a card from the main pile or the discard pile not all the cards are numbered cards though some of them are specialty cards like for example there's one that will match the number in your other hand so say you had a two in your right hand and you had yeah. that card in your Man, yeah. I feel like so much of this to... review is just being describing, like, systems as they exist, not, like, providing yeah. analysis of them. For the record, yeah, it's... I'm fine with describing them as details you want if you had analysis to back it up. As in, like, equal amounts, if not more, of analysis.
but no, most of it has been just describing it. Yeah, um, Sabak is the beginning of a cool idea. Uh, it's not like it was neat the first time as I was learning it. And then when you get to the end of the learning process and you're like, oh, this is the entire game. It's like, oh, that's it. Hmm. And then here are some I, I, cheats I, 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 to make it even more insanely OP. I'm like, oh, shit. And here are tokens to, to where that are just built into the game that you could use to even be more powerful. Or like, oh, oh, OK. So. I, I didn't actually, uh, I, like, I, I played, like, one hand of it, and I kind of moved on, didn't really do anything with it. But I always thought, just for the, you know, the 30 seconds that I was in the screen, and maybe they do this, because, you know, I don't know. But I always thought that it'd be interesting if you could have Nyx, since, since Nyx is all-powerful anyway, to have him go around and, like, look at people's hands for you. He does. <laughs> yeah, he does? that's okay. one of the yeah, things right. that... That's yeah. the cheat, right. that's part of the cheat thing, yeah. Because there's you basically have two different side abilities. You have your, like, power tokens that other players can actually use. They're part of the game, and you unlock more as you play the game, and they just give you stuff like you can get a coin back, or everyone else has to deposit a coin, or you don't have to pay for a draw. Um, just little things like that, but you can just keep using them over and over. And then you have cheats, which is like Nick's looking at people's cards and stuff. And it's just another um, layer of your power. Some of those cards you were describing, like the power ones or event ones, whatever they're called, uh, some of them are just better than others, as in you can unlock ones that are yeah. like, refund two, and then the next one you unlock is refund three, so it's like, oh, well, like, I'll have the three one, <laughs> that's just better. Um, I think even at the, even like the default ones you just start with, like, some of them are just better than others. And then uh, with the cheats, yeah, you can see everyone's cards, you can draw an extra card, as in you'll have three in your hand at all times, or uh, the final cheat is then um, uh, uh, getting the dice to roll whatever you want. You can use them well, all as many times as you want, beautiful. and you can use them all at the same time. Challenging. Yeah, really. I played the game once, and I was bored, and I didn't bother. Like, yeah, oh. I find it pretty boring. I tried it the one time, it's like, oh, boring. And then they made me play it one more time to get uh, Flimbo's coin back. And then, yeah, that was that. Very cool. Very exciting. Your left hand, that would mean you had two twos. And then there's another card that's like a dice roll. So if you have that card at the end, you get to roll three D6s and pick whichever number you want. Two, the game's pretty simple and straightforward, but it gets more right? complicated mm -hmm. when you add in the like assist cards. I don't know exactly what you call them, but you can buy them from vendors and stuff, and they can let you do things like make someone else deposit multiple coins or let you get all your coins back. I only ever used those base ones, but one time I was playing with another guy and he used uh, an assist card that switched our hands over and then somehow he still lost that's another thing about this game because he took a risk because you don't have a way of seeing other people's hands so it's just i have a shitty hand it's better if i just take a gamble on what another person's hand is because well yeah bad. that's the funny thing though they don't you can you can look at everyone's cards and then choose which one you want to steal because of the cheat right yeah so oh yeah i guess so yeah. i mean it just ruins the game not that there was much of a game to begin with it's just like well that's that it's very easy. It almost feels like sometimes you win and you probably shouldn't have. And then there's the fact that your 30 pound dog can run over behind somebody, sit on their shoulder, and tell you what cards they have. I don't think anybody's going to oh, notice that. Crazy. He helps people cheat in <laughs> card games. Well, yeah. also, he's clearly on the chair, not the shoulder. Yeah. So fucking good at Sabak. How does she do it? The thing is, I don't normally like these kind of card games that are shoehorned in the open worlds, right? Like in. Honestly, nothing comes it's... to mind to me for shoehorned in card games and open world games. They, they, I usually welcome them if they're good. I'm assuming yeah, you're going to talk about Gwent. I mean, they made a whole Gwent game based off of the is that like, a whole standalone Gwent game. I don't think so, no. but I think that's what he's going to suggest. You that's can the completely only thing ignore Gwent yeah. if you want to ignore Gwent, which or I maybe did participate in Gwent, and you can get spies and break it. <laughs> maybe like Liar's Dice or, or you know, some of the, the Azak, dead games. I guess. Maybe. I, I don't know what he, like, I don't think any of those are shoehorned, but I bet he mentions at least one of them. I don't know what he even means by shoehorned is the problem. Well, yeah, I hope he tells me why maybe, that shoehorned and this isn't. Maybe when he says shoehorned, he's talking about a game where you have to at least play one round of the card game to advance the main story. And you mean you, like Sabak? It's like, well, that, that kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah, like Sabak. Yeah, you... well, yeah, that, that sucks anyway, yeah. Do you have to play Sabak to finish yes. the main story? Yeah, more than once. 
I only remember playing it the one time. Maybe I just yeah, same. That. I don't remember playing it once. Yeah, but just at the beginning because of curiosity. I don't. Um. Well, you definitely have to at least play it once for um. I know there's of... like a side quest line yeah. for doing all the Sabak stuff. I think. Um. But I don't remember the main story requiring you to play it. I'm almost certain you're required once, but even if I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind that. Like, uh, <clears throat> there's a way to introduce you. Especially if the story the witch... uh, or that mission had different endings based off of you winning or losing. Yeah, here we go. The Witcher Three. I really did not like Gwent. They always oh. wanted me to play yep. goddamn Gwent. I don't want to play Gwent. But it doesn't. In this it... one, it I like it because I think it makes sense. If if that makes sense. In most games, you have some. Witcher Even... Three is very like non-insistent about Gwent. Yeah, just every there. once in a while, someone will ask, "You want to play Gwent?" And you see people playing it, and you can join in if you want. And I played it a little bit, and Gwent is way more complex than this. Gwent's got a lot more going for it than the the problem with Sabak is that it's like like I said, it's the beginning of an idea. Um, mm -hmm. It's so simplistic, and it makes you too powerful at it. Well, um, we need more coins, more rounds. There needs to be there just needs um... to be more to it to make it fleshed out. Is Gwent, like, Gwent's totally made up, right? Like, it was invented for The Witcher, or is it based yeah. on a game? I believe it was completely made up. Yeah. Okay, right. Um, I guess that's the interesting thing, is that when it's, when, because in, like, obviously in Red Dead, you can play poker, and it's like, oh, well, that's, that's like a real card game. Right. A card yeah. game that you probably already know the rules to. Um, that or Blackjack, or, you know, any, any of these sorts of yeah. things. And if it was like any time that you ask somebody to learn a new card game that you've invented already, it's like, all right, so now you've got to like cross that bridge of people even wanting to be willing to learn the rules of a new card game. The more complex it gets, the more that that can be like an obstacle to doing it. Uh, I suppose it's funny in this case, it's kind of like, that's not really the problem with Sabak. It's, it's just like not very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I was like, when I only played like two games because I wanted to learn it, but then you learn it so quick and you basically, you... Like, you solve the game shockingly quickly. Because that's it. It just kind of, you stop learning things because that's the extent of the game. And so you're like, well, I'm, then I'm done. I've experienced all of Sabak after, like, two games. This is it. This is I the game. I am all the Sabak. <laughs> I am all the Sabak. <laughs> Big pressing objective, and there's no reason to sit down and play, I don't know, a board game. But... In this one, I mean, you're playing as an outlaw. This is kind of something that outlaws do. I'm a role player at heart. But playing it's cards and gambling is kind so of like something like outlaws do. That's you something like that's marked. Do witches but, play but, card but, games or no? <laughs> I guess it's a person. I, I people it's play like, card where's games. The, where's the appeal to the actual mechanics of Sabak rather than like, well, you know, whatever the game is, I just want to role play as, a, as an outlaw, so I'm going to be playing card games. That's a weird way to praise a card game. It's like, yeah, but I want to role play. Yeah. What, shouldn't it just be fun? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just be it? No. Nice pen, look at it. See, look at what I can make it do. And I make it wiggle in front of him. Ah! Gambling does come second what to the What was that? I don't like know. Role joke play? No. Uh, possibly, because yeah, I don't maybe get maybe it. Maybe a channel meme or something. It's the thing where if you hold a pencil or a pen and you move your hand up and down, the optical illusion mm -hmm. is that it looks like it's bending when it really isn't. It's like what you learn. It's like when you're like six years old, you learn about it, and that's what they were talking about. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm now more confused. <laughs> what was the scream for? I don't know what the scream was for. <laughs> okay. Quest though, and that picks Moving up on. <laughs> when the queen's daughter and the leader of Crimson. Dawn also, that's it for Sabak, I guess, yeah. Um, that's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. We I mean, I described that it exists. And that it, it, you, there should be a card game because you're an outlaw. Yeah. I, I guess it's one of those things where if you if you just do a game that already exists, like if you're playing Yakuza and there's, you, can, you can play Mahjong in Yakuza, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a real game you can play in real life. You don't, you don't have to like invent a new game. You just, well, if you like Mahjong, you like Mahjong, and it's in the game. It's okay. Or if you play Go or something, or if you, you know, you're playing poker, like you said, Fringy. Um, but if you have to, if you're inventing a completely new game, it has to like ha it has to be more interesting, I guess, than than a game that actually exists. If that makes sense, because it's now now it's a mini game in a video game, and there should be a reason to play it. So, if if you look at like the you know the Final Fantasy card games, they're usually pretty pretty high quality. Whether you're talking like the like Queen's Blood or Tetra Master or whatever, um, if if you're not just doing a game that already exists just for the novelty of it, you have to make a a decent mini game, and this one just wasn't. 
Dawn wants you to steal something called the Origin Strand. I'm still not exactly sure what it is, but it seems like whoever has it controls the hive. Once you grab it and bring it back to the Ashiga base, you have to walk through all this wreckage death and destruction that this uprising has caused, an uprising that you were involved in, and it really makes you think about what you've done up to this point and in no, the it uh, no, no, it does. Come on, <laughs> no. Stop Come it. on now. Come on. Stop it. Why you were hook, line, and sinker. People need to stop falling for the shit in games, man. You can do so much more to actually <laughs> make the players, the consequences of the players' actions feel like them being made manifest. See, look, There's the a... whole story is totally different. What will the repercussions of this be? Is like it's all empty. There's there's no changes. Nothing happens as a result of this. There's no point in going either way. It's a bunch of people you don't care about and shouldn't care about doing things that ultimately are meaningless. No, nah, there's man, nothing it behind really this. makes you think, Rags. What are you talking about? We live in a society, bro. We do live in a society. It doesn't have to be so thin. <laughs> <laughs> it really reminds me of Karl Marx, really. Just so mention an old meme here do with it from here inside the palace are the two would-be rulers the original queen of the ashiga and her daughter you have the option to give the origin strand to either one of them giving it to the daughter will increase your rep with crimson dawn and giving it to the mother will increase your rep with the ashiga i decided to give it to the original queen i don't really want to get mixed up in all this but at the second that i did i mean it's funny there's nothing to get mixed up there's nothing <laughs> to get mixed up in the, the nope. idea that this entire like power struggle thing boils down to you have a stick that you can hand to one of two people to put <laughs> them in charge. <laughs> That's for you to figure out. I say figure out, it's just... The decision you get to make. The decision is just, oh, where do you want the, uh, the, the, the thing to have to... Not the reputation. Reputation. God, I'm fucking so, stupid. Did I see that right? Does it, does it show you reputation changes when you... Uh, take an option. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. As in, like, Sometimes. before sure. you before you commit to a choice, it tells oh, you yeah, this yeah, is it how it will you. affect you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm a fan of that because that tends to like the re the problem with uh, morality or reputational faction systems like that when they're made <laughs> explicit to you before the point of making a decision is that they can have a tendency to boil decision making processes down to optimizing the right number that you mm. want to go up. Yes. Yep. Like, if I'm playing, like, let's say Renegade Paragon, for example, I can end up in a position where I'm not, like, making the decisions that I would want to make. I'm pressing the Renegade button because I'm doing the Renegade run or yeah, something correct. to that effect. A hundred percent, that is what this game is. Yep. I've right been on playing the... you from the start. We are all the hive. We are all the hive. Even you, drop your weapon, daughter. How spooky. Don't... Oh, shit. It's some family drama I really did not need to get mixed up in, but hey, you know- I kind of- what I appreciate about this is he's saying, you know, like, Oh god, I didn't even really understand the stakes of what was happening here. It's like, yeah, you wouldn't. <laughs> if, if you knew everything, yeah, you wouldn't. Yeah, because you don't get anything. <laughs> what what unfolds is just, oh, well, that, that's unfolding. There it goes. Alright, and then nothing changes going forward. So so what... You get the mission, it's like, hey, grab the thing. It's like, okay, I got the thing. Now give it to me, or to me. Oh, okay, why would I do this? Because then I'm the queen. No, I'm the queen. And I was like, uh, okay. Yeah, it was crazy. I don't what a, care. What a crazy thing. It was like Game of Thrones. Wow. Yep. Yeah, you, who gives you me more money? Really... <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't learn the two characters well enough to actually care who, who sits on the throne. So it's just like, oh, well, whatever fits my meters. All and the funny, work. the interesting thing is, if this would be like an actual game where you're an actual renegade, that could actually kind of work in a way. It's like, oh yeah, I don't really care. Who's gonna make me a better offer here? And then you can fucking hash it out because I actually don't give a shit. But that's we don't really Imagine do that. If you could make decisions like that, and if they would then yeah. reflect upon later interactions people have with you, like I, I'm not going to put any loyalty in you to you know do things that would benefit my cause because you've made abundantly clear through your actions that you're only out for your own gain. Yeah, or you just go like, oh, I have the stick now. I'm the king, the, the, yeah. the queen. Fuck off. Kill them both. Wouldn't that be interesting? And the act of loyalty was enough to buy Aang's freedom, and now she can come with me back to the Trailblazer and join up as a permanent crew member. There's plenty of other stuff to do on Kajimi, different side activities, and a lot more what? to those Tell main me. missions, but <laughs> there are a lot of other planets. Oh, we're moving this. on. We're done with Kajimi. No, it's been too long there anyway. Explore. And the next one that I chose was Tatooine. Don't do another. Oh, Don't fuck do it. Sake. <laughs> 
Tatooine, baby. You guys ever see Tatooine before? Look this at is the sandy one. Look at, yeah. look at how the stormtrooper kind of kept jutting over to the left there. <laughs> the pathfinding isn't very good. It's just so, like the... an NPC looking also... at something and nothing else because that's the only thing that they can do. Damn. Just, just look at the, the polygons on. Is that a mirror on the side or something? Or, and there are the pipes. Oh, the, shit. Yeah. Roof, oh, like... What is that thing? Uh, you Whatever know, it is, it's it not could be a lot of things. I don't think. <laughs> like you get a mirror because you have no clue. <laughs> I have no fucking idea. But it's just yeah, it's Tatooine. We know what Tatooine is, man. Been here for fucking years. At this we point. keep <laughs> coming here to this one fucking place on this huge ass planet. At least go to another place. Fuck. Look at all those NPCs that you can't interact with. You can interact with them. Which you can. I mean, you could what to buy stuff. Yeah, merchant boy. Yeah. But you can't talk to any of the other ones. You can't do anything. Oh, job is Star Wars movies. Then this. Whoa. What happens if you try to shoot one of those banthers? <laughs> what happens? <laughs> you know what happens? Nothing. Oh, nothing. It may have been worse. Like they're made of metal. <laughs> it may have been worth a consideration for the developers of this game that Tatooine is quite literally supposed to be a dust bowl where nothing fucking happens. And may maybe it would be worth thinking about that as a place to set part of your big open world adventure game. I don't know. There was it never... is actually the most exciting plan ever. It was never going to be everything's there. An open world Star Wars game doesn't fucking have Tatooine in it. That, that's probably one of the no. things yeah, that no, like, but... absolutely have to. No choice. And you gotta have Luke's house in the uh, and you gotta have people acknowledge it's Luke's house. They gotta be like, oh, it's so nasty that the people here died. Shluke. Did you see the movie? Yeah, I saw the movie. <laughs> I remember that. Planet it makes and the world feel of... so small. The stuff on it is going to be very familiar. I mean, this is the planet where Luke Skywalker started his journey. Wow. It is. Oh, wow. <laughs> you got, you oh, my goodness gracious. Wow. Did you what guys is... know about this? Hang on a <laughs> Wait, minute. They made... <laughs> Wait a second. They made movies for Star Wars? I think so. There was one I in think like, was the, like three or four of them, the right? 50s or something, but yeah. Mm. Oh, okay. Some so it's probably really shitty. His head, right? That was oh, really dude, it is so old and silly. Uh, I'm so glad yeah. now we have like. Someone bonked stuff. their head there, so now it's all comedy and doesn't make sense. Uh, uh. Yeah, if you look closely, you can make out the clown nose on Luke Skywalker there. Yeah. <laughs> honk honk, motherfucker. <laughs> New Hope, and it's also the opposite of Kajimi with these huge open because seas it's warm and open world. Sand. Little to no life actually roaming the surface. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Little yeah, to no kinda... code roaming. <laughs> it's it's really boring. I, I'd rather go someplace else. You know, you can have deserts that are interesting. No, nope. deserts aren't actually just rocks and sands. They can be full of all kinds of different creatures and life and cultures and everything. But this mm. is boring desert. I said before I don't oh, like when right. open worlds are needlessly big, and that's actually a reason why I love this planet. Yeah, it's big, open, and empty, but that's for a purpose. Riding your speeder fast yeah. through the desolate sands of Tatooine creates such a distinct feeling. Especially I don't want to hear it. it. <laughs> I, I don't want to hear it. Man. I would okay. find any, a way to express actually, myself right now. Yeah, there is no <laughs> experiential <laughs> value to riding a speeder through the deserts of Tatooine in this fucking video game. Actually, the fact that it's shitty and barren and empty and boring is a good thing. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't know, I find it offensive because it, I, I know this isn't actually what he's saying, but it almost feels like he's trying to put it in the category of things like Journey. You know what I mean? Yeah, what was Shadow of the Colossus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. idea that like movement through a location and just the, the quiet, like, the quietness of just that experience can be something valuable in and of itself. Not in this game, shut up. If if you want to have good downtime in between peaks, that's great, but you have to have peaks. You have to have little Clara. bumps, even. ...to other parts of the game, like navigating the tight streets of Kijimi. Now, we're not here for nothing, though. Our second crewmate that we're looking for is a guy named Hulse. This guy's reputation is pretty widely known, and he's also outrunning a death mark at the moment. So, we are not the only ones trying... Which means we instantly found him. <laughs> in, okay. <laughs> All right. 
Hey, you have to get the sheriff who gets you, the other bounty hunter who gets you, the tracker fob who gets you to the, uh, that K, K, whatever area with the, um, why am I blanking there? Fucking Tuscan Raiders who then get you on the mission to go get the pill. And then you get Hoss. And then you lose Nyx. And then you have to go to Java. But then he goes right, and then he dies. But, right, but in between there, he goes right back to gambling at a cantina. Mm -hmm. Like, he doesn't have a death mark on him. So, yep. he just he just certainly doesn't act like he's got a death mark on him. It's great. There's a slew of bounty hunters looking for Hoss. Rather than landing in the main city of Mos Eisley, I, don't, I feel like if Kay can do it, anyone can do it, you know? The main city of Mos Eisley. The main city. It's it's ma you may as well, they need to rename Mos so, Eisley to Tatooine. Tatooine's a planet. <laughs> I understand that, to an extent, there is a difficulty with depicting planets in all forms of fiction due to the fact that planets are, from what I've heard, quite large. They're rather a bit bigger than even a country, which we struggle with in terms of depiction, mm. but having the big desert planet where we only ever go to one part of it, but the whole rest of it is just insinuated to be the desert planet, and then there's the cold planet, the jungle planet. This is a little bit... I, I understand why it is this way, but it's not exactly true to the way biomes tend to come to exist. I don't know. Well, I mean, if there's yeah, any but... indication, we have cold yeah. places, hot places, like wet places... <laughs> Mountainous places. Whoa. If Earth showed up in some sci-fi thing, it would be the ocean planet, and everywhere would be water, and you'd only ever land on like <laughs> remote Pacific <laughs> islands. Yeah. the The problem is, is that the audience is stupid, and I mean that's just kind of how it is. I know. Uh, but early in the development of Mass Effect One, they actually tried to make Noveria not a snow planet. They had like a temperate area. And basically everyone who playtested it said, I don't remember going to a new planet when they got down to the forest. Uh, they're like, oh, fuck. Okay, we'll just make it all snow. Fuck. I, I want to be kind of charitable because I, I think it is a problem developer side as well in terms of, I think it's a problem just in terms of how we conceptualize new places in large part due to the fact that we haven't found another like planet that we live on yet as such. Or we don't know of biomes on other planets as such. So it can be difficult to extrapolate in that way. And even then, even more difficult to extrapolate in a way that an audience can understand as meaningfully distinct places that all still feel like the same place in some way. Like multiple different parts of a planet still feeling like part of that planet and not two different planets. If you're gonna make forests on different planets then make the trees a different color or so you gotta do something it, it has a mistiness to it or there's there's something because you might forget if you make them too <laughs> similar and also they are on different planets you, you probably should make them different you know it's a yeah. totally different planet completely different evolutionary ecosystem rags you, rags, you have to make the snow salt Ooh. Oh yeah, that's right. It's salt. I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. fucking salt planet. Uh, the best part being the, the ground. Oh. Yeah, that yeah. He, uh, tells us all. It's definitely not snow. <laughs> like, all right, Jerry, did you just eat the ground? <laughs> yeah, no, it's salty. It's down in the desolate outskirts, in a little town that only has a single person left in it, which is a cool sheriff lady. We help her take out a couple of guys, gunslinger style, and is she, she tells cool? us pretty much the same thing Very she's told cool. every bounty uh, hunter that's come here looking for hoss. She gives us a vague direction, and all we've got to do is follow the trail of dead bounty hunters until we eventually find it. And this trail takes us into a moisture farm, up around into, the into a loading zone, through a little mm -hmm. crevice, and to a familiar group of raiders. Don't do it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't want to yeah, yeah. I love how bad the lighting is in this right. shot. Look at this. Yeah. They've been what? guarding that crevice all day just in case someone waddles on through. That hoss is being yeah. held by the Tusken Raiders. If you've never heard of them, if you haven't watched enough Star Wars, go watch the damn movies. The Raiders you don't haven't watched enough Star Hoss Wars. You haven't watched the first Why? one. They're in, <laughs> what, two of the films? <laughs> yeah, they're in one a little bit and another one a little bit. Hey, Anakin did not slaughter the Tusken Raiders of their family for you to forget them, okay? <laughs> Isn't it interesting that instead of using game information to explain to us what they're like, he says, just go watch the movies? <laughs> Analysis. 
So we've got to mm. go and do some little quest for them. It's pretty simple. You go and you get a thing for them and you bring it back and they let them go. I... God, you make it sound even less interesting than it was. <laughs> like... <laughs> when they say you collect a great dragon them. pearl, it's like, whoa, what are you doing? It's like, yeah, it's just a thing in a place. Wow. <laughs> I, as KVS, a person looking for a whole lot of money, whatever could I possibly do with this crate dragon pearl that mm. is apparently very, very rare slash sacred mm. slash extremely well, valuable? But if you, Rags, if you don't give it to the Tuscan Raiders, you might be forced to kill them or something? That'd be crazy. Oh. You'd never choose to do that. Oh, good, because it's always morally acceptable <laughs> to kill Tuscan Raiders. <laughs> That's what Boba Fett taught me. <laughs> <laughs> Admired the That's developers of Star talk, Wars man. Outlaws for going out of their way to provide a new perspective on the Star Wars galaxy. I think that is exactly what we needed from an open world Star Wars game. But I do appreciate a that new we get perspective what is, what on is the Star new Wars with the Tatooine. What's the new perspective? Why, what's the new? Yeah, what is the new perspective? Where? What? What is it? Is it that the Empire are cartoonishly evil? Is it that, like, what? what's the new perspective? This is a pretty common perspective from what I'm seeing in just about every regard. I am ready to learn. I'm on Tatooine as well with all the references to the movies and other bits of lore. And trust me, there are new perspectives by referencing by all referencing. the old lore I don't lore understand and what's happening in this section. What's, what, what am I supposed to be impressed by? <laughs> a lot of references and characters so many references. you familiar with. If you're not that familiar with Star Wars, this ain't gonna make a ton of sense, but just stick with me. These are a couple of the references I found. What does this have to what? do with the... This is insane. <laughs> <laughs> we, need, we get all these new perspectives. I don't care. What the fuck? Is from the movies. <laughs> <laughs> what? We need, what a we fucking need... stupid statement. <laughs> it's not even a new perspective because in the Kenobi show they went to the fucking Skywalker moisture farm. So we've already done that. It's not even new. What Wait, what, what is happening? I just grabbed something to drink. I just heard M through my head. But I heard M metal, it's, in it's my good. kitchen through you my head. You gotta bring it back for metal. It's not M one. <laughs> <laughs> so what is happening? You haven't heard of them? You haven't watched enough Star Wars? Go watch the damn movies. The Raiders don't plan on. Oh, you're gonna go gonna, so okay. Easy, so we've gotta go. We, we rolled it back for you, fuck. Yeah, we rolled it back. We played it. <laughs> no, I was you responding jerk. to what he was saying. Yeah, like, oh, we rolled it back us, to show you what he was laughing at. <laughs> fuck. Yeah, no, I'm talking to the guy. The <laughs> video we're watching all about. Metal, shut up and watch it. What are you talking about? I, 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 Get out, Metal. <laughs> <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Go and do some little quest for them. It's pretty simple. You go and you get a thing for them and you bring it back and they let them go. I admire the developers of Star Wars Outlaws for going out of their way to provide a new perspective on the Star Wars galaxy. I think that is exactly what we needed from an open okay. world Star Wars game. But I do appreciate that we get all this time on Tatooine as well with all the references to the movies and Wait, what you, no, not a and trust me, No, you said you said new things. I've, <laughs> so he, he acts like... I Maybe he's acting as if all of the things he's been describing are new perspectives on star wars when he he mentioned yeah there's a shitty card game there's some wow. bugs on kajimi or kashinki or kajimi whatever it's called there's um wow there's a food mini game wow <laughs> uh, there is it's there's so a little stupid. there's wordle yeah. We need to get perspective a new perspective on they, and lore. They, they massively expanded out the backstory of that one guy from episode 7. That's, yeah, yeah, sure did. Yeah, you didn't get that before this, so fuck you. Now let's talk about all the references. Like, what do you... What, what are you <laughs> and characters you might be familiar with. If you're not that familiar with Star Wars... I swear, if you're actually about to go, look, it's Boba Fett, look, it's Vader, look, it, like, I... Oh... <laughs> it's, that's it's, that's, that's, that's actually going. pathetic. Please, please spare me. Of course, this ain't gonna make a ton of sense, but just stick with me. These are a couple of the references I found. So number one, in A New Hope, Luke and his family live on Tatooine. Oh my god! <laughs> Whoa! Oh, you, dude. <laughs> Wait, they do? On I've, Tatooine Did he already itself? say this? <laughs> and they have this is actually... Alarm, which does. <laughs> this is actually sadder than a guy just saying references. This is a guy who's explaining to someone who doesn't know Star Wars that, we're at the that point are references. <laughs> we're, at, we're at the point where the Star Wars shills are all like, you probably haven't seen these old as fuck movies, so I'll have to explain it to you. And we're sitting, you're like, oh, I'm, what? I'm just imagining cutting to like him mid-conversation with someone excitedly saying, and then it turns out that Vader is Luke's father. <laughs> <laughs> you probably don't know, Vader oh is this God. guy from these movies. I need movies. to explain it. 
is like he's trying to explain <laughs> to you why all of these things in the game are actually really amazing. And he's just gonna like, tell actually, us where they're from. Really That's cool it. Because the movie, the movie, right? Star Wars, the movie. It had this guy named Luke, and he lived at a place, and this is that place. Isn't that super cool? Wow. What will they think yeah. of next? <laughs> wow. <laughs> that They'll do it again. They'll go to his house twice again. <laughs> What's funny to me is we're almost at the level of cynical that when they were putting these things in, they were like, imagine all the YouTube videos where they point these things out. Or, like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Whoa exactly what it sounds like they harvest moisture from the atmosphere because there's really no oh other moisture God. on that's crazy anyway, in the really movie, the moisture not farm gets blown. moisture farming it... oh, oh my God. What? you know what's really what? one of the things that's... It from dune it's okay <laughs> wouldn't it be weird it's i one of the things that did strike me as a bit odd is when i was playing um nd5 explains to k that she has to go to a moisture farm i don't think she has any reason to even know what that is a mm. moisture farm what is that it's a little bit self-explanatory by the term, but she'd be like, well, tell me about it. Like, because here on Tatooine, they need to get moisture, so they farm it and from the air and stuff. But this this instant acceptance of, like, moisture farms and being on a new world that's unlike her own, it just happens so quick and casually. It's like, yep, another opportunity wasted to explore Star Wars and perspectives. Point. We never really get, other than, you know, like, when those we do those Nyx collectibles where it ends with her going like, oh, wow, look at the landscape. Like, she never does that when she arrives in any way. They were like, whoa. Yeah, it makes a comment on, like, whoa, what, it, like, when you first get to Akiva, and you're like, oh, wow, this is, like, a big, lush jungle place, and aesthetically, it's pretty neat, I guess, and he's like, hey, there's no real commentary on it. This is so much different than, ho than home, yeah. or this is way different than, like, especially depending on the order of planets. Like, after you leave Kajimi, she could say, God, I'm so happy to get out of that cold, frigid hellhole, well, and I'm here in this nice jungle world. Remember they did yeah, it? there's no connection, though. Once upon a time, because there was a flicker of hope in in TFA that something substantive might happen, that when Ray first went to to Jumbo, whatever the planet was, she was like, "Oh my god, I've never seen so much green." Like, oh look, oh yeah, the the water, yeah. She sees like the the water, like yeah, the big lake or the ocean, and she's like, "Holy shit!" Like, because she's from Jakku, and that, that was that would that would stun that somebody. That was something. Yeah. Look at them go. That was a thing. Mm. That was many years ago up and his aunt and uncle just get fried and in the game you can actually go to that moisture farm where you can see the scavenged remains even talking to some npcs mentioning how whoa you can even talk wow. to like wow. npcs Ooh, this place wow. has been picked clean and there's nothing left to loot mm. number two you can find the sarlacc pit from return oh, which was funny yeah. because people oh. huh it was I think it was funny that they said there's nothing left to loot, and I was watching someone's playthrough, and they jump in, and there's instantly things yeah. to loot. <laughs> yeah. I was like, loot. oh, okay. Number two, you can find the Sarlacc pit from Return of the Jedi. <laughs> Number three, you can... No, because this is before Return of the Jedi. Yeah, so... Uh oh, was, he that, even yeah. fucked that up. <laughs> that's it was not just even... like Sarlacc pit. That's, yeah, he, he just... He referenced so hard in his brain that he just assumes if you see a Sarlacc pit, it is the Sarlacc pit from... Return they saw the Jedi. They saw lag. <laughs> it's saw lag. How come he explained moisture farming and where Luke was from, but then he's just like, and the star, you know, the pit, and then he moves on immediately. He didn't do anything meaningful for the the Laws homestead, though. He just said that's from that movie where that thing happened in that movie, that movie <laughs> called did, Star Wars, and then it's here. That's he, all he said. He did do the explanation part of it, though. Sure, it's but weird, like, right? The equivalent would have been if you guys don't know, in a film called Return of the Jedi, really old, is the, this little monster thing in the beginning called the Salak, and it's in the Salak pit, and and they do that. Yes, in uh, this. Why inconsistent is all I'm asking. I don't know. <clears throat> Cool little side quest with the Jawas. Number four, the main quest takes you to Jabba's it's Palace, cool. which has a ton of cool stuff that I will show you when we get there. Number five, the game specifically places you on the outskirts of Mos Eisley so that you can ride in on your speeder similarly to how they did in the movie. Number six. Is it like oh, a movie? <laughs> well, no, that's, that's actually uh, well, that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Because Mos Eisley is a spaceport. Aww. Why would you not just fly into Moss Eisley and land there? Because it's like in the movies, Rags. Is, is oh, it, I think because okay. you have to go speak to Sheriff Dumbass first. So she's in. Uh... Yeah. Oh, okay. It, it's it's just it's kicking a can down the road, really. 
Yeah. Six, you can go to the cantina that they went to, and even go to the booth oh, where Han Solo please. sat and got shot at. And uh, there's a ton of dialogue. Oh my god, there's a reference to it. You can see talk about wow. how someone got shot where Greedo sat. Oh, blah, 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 blah. oh my goodness! It, motherfucker is spending that. longer on the references than he has on any game. The mechanics. mechanics. Has he even mentioned that you can't pick up guns and keep them? <laughs> Maybe he will. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Don't sit there, that booth is cursed. Shut up. Uh, 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 <laughs> so painful. Well, wait a second. <sighs> Wasn't Han on the left and Greedo was on the right? The yeah, other but... booth would be cursed. Yeah. Yeah, but it's that that well, I the guess I booth. guess he's referring to the it's whole booth. Yeah. The, the entirety thing, of the yeah. Oh, because it wasn't cursed for one of them. Also, is no, his like hair is his hair tentacle thing clipping through the, the seat? Probably. Probably. Unironically, probably, probably, because there was there's a lot of instances where people because they only have a set couple of poses for like people sitting down, but there's a yeah. lot of different designs for chairs, and they do not always match up. Sometimes people will just be leaning in midair because the chair is like short backed or it's really flat and low. But I mean that they've got their they got their sitting animation, so that's that. Super cool stuff, but number seven. Whoa, Lando. That's right. He's in the game and he serves a purpose. So yeah. I didn't mention. Um, I didn't do the Lando part. Is his voice Billy D. Williams? No, no, no. No, no it's very noticeably not him. Okay. Mentioned it before, but how this game lets you like level up your skills and stuff is super interesting, and you do it through. Oh uh, yes, because it's the expert. Yes, super expert. interesting. Instead please tell me why tree, it's interesting. Please. Instead of a skill tree. You actually do missions, so there's a story and a, a purpose. Uh, uh, Name two of the experts right now. Rufus and uh. Rainfeld. <laughs> oh my god, those are my two favorites. How did you know? They were so great. Rufus and Rainfeld. Find throughout the world. You go and find people, and they'll teach you how to do stuff. And Lando is one of them, but only Whoa. if you can beat him in a game of Sabacc. I think we're all tired of Star Wars relying on nostalgia to keep people interested, but I and yet, why did you do this? <laughs> he said, "But he said, but okay, but, he's gonna, he's gonna but. get, he's, he's gonna he's make fighting the good fight against make it. Make sense any second now. He's gonna make this. No, make he's sense. already not allowed. Just <laughs> 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 to keep people interested, but I think this is a tasteful use of nostalgia and familiar. Nah. So you just went through you a go, full uh... list, and only for Lando did you say, and it serves a purpose. I don't know if you guys caught that. When he, the Lando in the list is the only one where he says, and it serves a purpose." Cool. Which is funny. Well, yeah, because the other one is nothing. Well, you you could argue the Sarlacc serves a purpose beyond just referencing the Sarlacc, but like I don't, I, I find all this incredibly cynical. The Lars Homestead is just is just tacky as fuck. I mean, there's so much more. It seems like all of it is just tacky, to be honest. I mean, yeah. even the you know the cursed Han Solo seat, like ooh, don't sit there, and that just like what the fuck? Why? The yeah. point of it in the here, movie, as you know, far as here, I was here. concerned, was that it's not a particularly crazy event to have happen in that cantina. No, nobody cared. Yeah. They didn't even... Yeah. They, just, like, they all got on with going. their day. So, so if you actually wanted to reference it, what you could do is, like, put... On, on, on one of the empty tables, put, like, five credits. Because Han, like, flips a coin when, at the end of the scene. You can just put it there and be like, this is the table that it happened at. But don't say anything. Just have the credits on the table. And that'll be the reference. Because then it's, like very minimalistic, and you're not, like, saying it. You're not shoving it in someone's face. It's just, oh, okay, there you go. I get it now. The cursed booth. Ooh. <laughs> Greedo's ghost. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Greedo's ghost is a quest giver. Yeah. Put me to rest. He's an expert. You can Ooh. unlock missions and stuff perspectives to gain <laughs> on the Star Wars universe. So this here doesn't feel like a cheap marketing ploy, but more of an homage. Now the main mission with Hoss is pretty cookie cutter. You do the thing for the Tusken Raiders, they let him free and then he's gonna come with you. But things take a turn when you go to the place where you were supposed to meet him and he stands you up. See, Hoss thought it'd be a better idea to spend his time gambling. Only problem uh -huh. is he's not very good at it. And without any money in his pocket, he finds another way to pay his debts. It's yours. This is weird. <laughs> They grab this her is a bizarre so story quickly, sequence. like as though they know yeah. what's gonna happen next. <laughs> exactly, it's so weird. <laughs> oh, it's such a this is another one of these places where you're just like, why? Why is this? Why are they? What? I just got here. Why is? Why is he getting my pet? At what? What? Also, oh, okay, it's I guess. Such we're a good. strange turn of yeah. events. The I only mean, like, time in the whole fucking campaign that someone is capable of grabbing Nyx, you know, is yeah. <laughs> never again will this be possible. <laughs> <laughs> 
Also, the only time in the campaign when you can't just punch out the entire bar. No, these two are too strong. <laughs> yep. you know? Can't do it. Oh, never mind. You were only allowed after they grab it. Oh, whoops. Oh, At this point, Kay goes full Liam Neeson from Taken to find Nyx. Oh, 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 come on. Uh, not even close, man. Uh, uh, they fucking wish. You, you can't do anything interesting. You just... And they force you to be negative on the huts too. It's just uh... Nix has been sold to Jabba and is being taken to his palace and thrown in with his exotic animal yeah. collection. Naturally, we again, gotta break in, a place where it's like, oh, I have super duper good relations with the huts. Oh, it was well. like, hey, they got my pet. He actually grabbed that. Can you just fucking shoot him in the face and I can have my pet back? Or you know, they would know who Nix is. It's like. Uh, that's this belongs to one of our best agents, one of our exactly. best uh, contractors. That's kind of weird. We should let them know that he's here. And since yeah. you're here, hey, um, we actually, you want to help get revenge on those guys who stole him? Well, turns out we don't like him either, and our interests align. And then that's a quest that you only get if you're aligned well with the huts. Mm -hmm. When the Hosk is brought to um, Jabba, right? It would be like a cool moment yeah, if um, your reputation is high enough that Jabba gives you Hoss as a gift. It's like, yeah, fuck it's him like, up I was want. wondering when Kves would come to my palace herself, as like, I could see her face to face. Oh, you've done a really good job. Jabba yep. takes care of his loyal, uh, his loyal workers and and members. I'll give you what you want. Haas doesn't serve me anything. Here you go. Looking forward to seeing you again, K. Oh well. Nope. 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 Skull, stop for a second to admire how well they built Jabba's palace. I mean, this place just looks Yeah, Jabba's palace it. looks like Jabba's palace. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah. Whoa. They, they just copied it from the people who actually made it. Also, you can just climb over some fine, rocks and yeah. then you're right in there. It's just yep. very easy. Right in. Looks awesome. And then we sneak our way in. Where? In the vents. If you take your time and uh, look around, you might look, see... Look, it's Boba Fett. Boom. Boba. And after that, we notice another familiar bounty hunter has showed up trying to track down Kay. This girl really won't let it go. Of course, we Batman our way through Jabba's palace and save Nyx, but... I don't have to. I mean, you just kill everybody. Uh, yeah. Yep. Jabba finds out, and he's not exactly thrilled with what we've been doing, so Kay... No, yeah, he's not thrilled with it until you do more damage to him. Then he's very thrilled. And then he thinks you're awesome. <laughs> you I'm impressed. Chain just goes through the floor. Oh, I like the Look. cut of your jib. And then you see the Rancor. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Rancor was in... He shows up in Return of the Jedi. <laughs> One of them older films when Luke gets the tossed past. into the pit. Yeah. Yeah. You probably don't know what movies are. Yeah. Let's all get dropped down in the hole with the beasts. And then they kill Hoss. And yeah. neither of them help. They just watch. Yep. Better you than me. I like how his, his oh. thing just comes off. Yeah, both of them could have helped. They could have helped. Thank God, Hoss. They they let him die. They had guns. Yeah, I don't, they had yeah. guns. There are all the reasons to keep him alive. Pragmatism being one of the obvious ones, but oh well. Yep. That's what he deserved. But now we're stuck down here with. What Vail. he deserves? Yeah, what he deserves? What? <laughs> sure. He doesn't. Does he deserve <clears throat> death? He deserves. He, he did. Steal, a, he stole Nex rags. People. I don't right. care about this. <laughs> and for that, he deserves to be eaten to death. Okay, I don't know about that. <laughs> Trying to escape. It all leads to a boss fight where you and Vale have to kill a Rancor just like the one in the movie. I... Oh, yeah. Dude. Oh, oh my gosh, just, oh, like, yeah. the just like, like the one in the movie. Gotta be honest, I wish this was not in the game. It's just so stupid. It was not fun to do. Why do you not want this one in, but all the other stuff? How, yeah, how does this work? Tell me. What are your secrets? I did not understand. Like, you gotta have some serious video game logic to have bombs on a conveyor belt on the ceiling to be dropped down onto the guy. What could that thing possibly exist for? What Transport. Transportation, yeah, because this is the hangar where they bring in cargo, so it actually makes a lot of sense that there are these cargo trolley lines. Oh my like, god. Lines it's up. very oh my god. It's not we have been, to justify We have been made to compliment or otherwise <laughs> defend Star Wars but, Outlaws yeah, from this We said there is a logical <laughs> reason why this thing exists in this universe. And they don't, as, as people I mean, point out, they would, don't even would, drop, you have to shoot them. Yeah. It would make a bit more sense if they were like, like missiles or something, because they're like loading into a ship. Well, I like assume I they're just that. fuel or something, right? Yeah, it's just fuel or something. Or fuel, yeah, yeah. Volatile, yeah. Or if they what were on, the... like, a... Yeah. 
purpose. Yeah. It really is like Batman Arkham because all you got to do is goad him into running at you and then move out of the way so he hits his head on the wall. But it's a whole lot easier because you're not some weakling like Batman. No, you're Kay Vess. And once we get out, oh, whoa, you saved Vale's life. So now she's got a newfound respect for Kay. And also, Jabba saw the whole thing and thought it was freaking hilarious. So now everybody's friends. Just like Jabba in oh. Return of the Jedi thought Luke was freaking hilarious when he killed Pretty the Rancor. Mm -hmm. No, but no, but that's that hmm. didn't work. That's not, that's not how it went down. That's crazy. Wait, who's Luke? <laughs> he's that one. Oh, Luke. He's the, <laughs> he's the he's one in that movie. Of, uh, Return of the Jedi. Oh, yeah, that's right. Those movies that came out. That in movie, the yeah. Woo. We hug and we go about our merry way. You don't really gain anything from all this stuff on Tatooine. If anything, you've just kind of lost time. Are you going to tell us how retarded that actually is? is or he, yeah, is he going to talk about how it's like, <laughs> so we all of that, we did it, we lost Hoss, so now what? And it, what's funny is, like, wouldn't Vale be the obvious sort of thing that we gain from the story? But they can't do that because she does the flip at the end. So they're just like, well, fuck it, we're done with Tatooine. You're like, oh. Remind me, do we ever get an actual replacement for him? I no, don't think so. We what just do it ourselves, says right? is that Kay, Kay has proven that she's good enough as a heavy. They don't need... Right, yeah, course. okay, yeah, that, that was it. What is what a, a heavy? Just a person... Someone who shoots a yeah. lot, I think. A muscle, yeah. yeah. Who wears no armor and has a pistol. Right, this is Kay heavy. fucking oh, actually, vest. Actually, Have some respect. <laughs> I'm so respect. sorry, Kay, don't do to See, me what you do to Nyx. Bigotry. I thought yeah. I thought that was the logic in the end for spoilers, guys. Uh, them bringing in Kay's mother. She's not a heavy. They, they, she's they, a slicer. She's the slicer. Yeah, yeah but they, they, the they, they were slicer. down one person though, and they're like, "Well, Kay can be the heavy." And then, well, sure, but being the she was explicitly then, yeah. brought in for slicing. Hoss wasn't a slicer. Yeah. Vale was going to fill Acker the role man. of Hoss, who uh, died. But nope. We come away from it with no new crew members, and once we get back to the Trailblazer, we talk to Jalen over the hollow uh, phone thingy-majig, and he says he is going to find a replacement. Well, we go to the final planet, Akiva. I mean, I'm oh, almost well, certain he says it. we don't need a replacement because you're good yeah, enough you're for the too, heavy. Yeah, yeah, you're amazing. The, the, yeah, you got the mum thing. Face. The mum thing is a huge surprise. Like the, he's, like, I, I think Andy is like, I told him not to, but he brought your mum in, and then he says we need another slicer. Mm. You need a slicer. Look, everyone. Akiva, or in yeah, water planet, the jungle Akiva. place. Uh, yeah, 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 it's a, it's mm -hmm. a location. It is a location. That's true. To be fair, I, I did like this location most of all of all of them. Yeah, I think it's my, yeah, it's my favorite in terms of its aesthetics. Visually speaking, I feel like I've seen this location in five other games before. I was I was just thinking to myself like what's my favorite I don't even know I, I don't really I don't know why I would pick any in particular really you know like Tatooine is Tatooine and it's like yeah this is the forest one and then oh yeah there's the, the game, like the cold snowy one. For one gameplay if it's for gameplay I think Tashara all kind of samey for gameplay aren't they. Yeah, I think because yeah. I'm essentially thinking about what's the easiest to navigate. It's like, well, Akiva's not that. Kajimi's not like really like, applicable. Is the easiest to navigate. Yeah, I guess Probably, it's yeah. big, big and open. Big yeah. power, which might actually make it my favorite. It was the easiest to get from one place to the other. <laughs> <laughs> Less road bumps between me and the boring quests I had to yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah, that might. Yeah, that really is the, the deal breaker. All the effort for getting Each those shots and I just spot after the to first end. one seems to represent a different biome. And this one, with its lush green forests and open bodies of water, is wouldn't it be cool if they were blue forests? All of the trees were blue. Yep. No. Or they had a lot of like there were like half the trees were this and that, or like it was an autumn, an autumn theme to it. Yeah. So everything was kind of golden and that'd brown and yellow. Like that, that would be that'd be really cool. Yeah. Imagine if there was, like, actual wildlife that you had to, like, worry about for real, you know, in certain <laughs> environments. Well, there's like, that one... Like, you or something. That one throws spikes from its tail onto Shara. Oh. Uh. <laughs> there's somebody yeah. in the chat who says, but, why is yeah. he stating the very, very obvious? <laughs> well... And it's yeah, like, well, that's this whole it, fucking like, video. Yeah, at least part of his perception is that's what his job is. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, he just he really does. It's just dude. He hasn't mentioned Vader yet. Obvious. He's gonna go nuts over that part, isn't he? 
Mm-hmm. Now, in case you didn't know, Darth Vader is no. yeah, who is, who is that? <laughs> oh, I think I've heard of him before. Feeling, and I think it just interested me the most to go and explore. And where the oh, last three planets before this represented the home bases of the different syndicates. Why are you so like tiny? The first one represented the Pikes, <laughs> the second one the Ashiga, and the last one the Huts. Akiva's more yeah. focused on the presence of the Empire than anything. I've already mentioned that I don't like how Star Wars Outlaws makes the Empire. You just these this big bunch of incompetent weirdos, but I do like that. Tell me, who are the competent tasty. people in this world? Yeah, Pavis. Other than the player, <laughs> uh. <laughs> here on Akiva, you almost get to see a different side to the Empire, which is what exactly people in the city uh. talking about joining up with the Empire, and then as soon as you get off the ship, you can see an Imperial recruiting booth. You can't do anything with, even though they tell you, you to go there to do stuff with, and you can't do stuff yeah. with. It's, it's all there, hollow. Just, it's all fake. I don't even, rem I don't even remember stupid that. stupid and cartoonishly evil there as well. It's about the spaceport. There's a little booth, and the guy's like, I have all of these qualifications of science and everything. Like, uh, you're gonna be like a general laborer. Go. Oh, cool. I'm like, oh, that's so <laughs> boring and lame and shitty. It probably took you no seconds to think of that, because the Empire is bad. Okay. We're not here on that kind of business, though. We're here to find the final crew member, which was actually handpicked by Kay. The guy's name is Gadik. He's a droid smith Gadeek. who seems to have a history with Kay. And Gadik is working... Seems to? He does. He does, yeah. He, he, he does also appear to. And he I also just actually does, does, does but then he also does. Yeah, you know. I guess, I guess <laughs> that's he does true. Both. If he does have it, then he does have Technically both. Have it. That's true. That's a good point. <laughs> Mm. He seems to be a Rodian. <laughs> yeah. He also is, but he does seem to be one as well. <laughs> that is apparently how. <laughs> on an Imperial base here on Akiva, which is actually Kay's fault. From what I gathered, Kay and Gadik were on a job together a long time ago, and they got into a little bit of trouble, and Kay ditched him. So Gadik had the option of either going to jail. Yeah, what a piece of shit we are, huh? And when mm -hmm. we break into the Imperial facility to find him, it's clear he's not exactly stoked to see Kay. Holy shit, was it just me or the graphics fuck up again there? I was not looking at the footage, to be honest. It was a lightning save. Yeah, you yeah. see that? Look at your head. What the fuck? Yeah, that. Yeah, oh, yeah like the, the top plop. of the. Oh, just going yeah. on. Yeah, the, the lighting. The it's this weird reflection. The of the, yeah. It's this weird reflection thing where you have like a weird aura around you and reflections yes. that you don't have anything to do with. Silent Hill 2 Remake has the same problem. I don't know what that's called, but I've seen it in games here and there. Yeah. Kadik! Long time no see. Luckily. Christ, the uh, lips. You're here because of yeah. <laughs> It's speaking a stylistic of lighting, choice because of anime, actually. Uh, yeah. Speaking of lighting, the, the lighting was terrible on Kay's face in that shot. Yeah, that was, that was Holy hideous. Fuck. Also, just talk about plot armor right there. God damn, mm. imagine if it just shot her in the face. Dude, yeah, I would have laughed my ass off. Yeah, that that would have been really funny. It would have been hilarious. Then you have to switch to playing as Kadeek for the rest of the game. Yeah. Could you imagine? The problem is, he won't help you until you help him. Whoa, we've done this whole song and dance before. We gotta go. She betrayed him. She betrayed him. Shut up. And if you remember, his mission is righteous. He wants yeah. to stop a Viper droid that he gave to the Empire because it's killing people. Yep. Oh. And Nix is like, oh, I guess we'll do it if you really want me to. Nix is? <laughs> Nix says that? I don't think Nix said that. My god. Gosh, Rax, defend your boy. Yeah, Nix would be thrilled to say to do the right thing. <laughs> Nix would be like, oh, sweet, sweet, maybe Kay will get fucking killed by these droids and I can be free. Well, I can be free. He can <laughs> run away free. anytime he wants. He enjoys no. the destruction. He has a track, he has a key, she has a key fob on him and he can never get away, ever. Oh my god. She has to die. <laughs> why why would he set that grenade on her then? Why doesn't Kay he just Vess do that? Must, uh, because then there's a because there's a reason for it. Ah, you got him pretty nice. <laughs> no, I just said there was a reason. Nailed it. <laughs> While we were in the Empire, Gadik developed a new kind of droid called the Viper Droid. And before leaving Akiva, he wants to make sure that the Empire cannot use the Viper Droids to hurt anyone else. Now, well, a Viper, that, that is the most interesting, interesting thing that ever happens with a quest of just, you. I won't help you until you help me. It's the most reasonable one. 
He doesn't want to leave the planet until he makes up for his mistakes. Everyone else is just like, I want a fucking thing. Give me a thing, yep. and I'll give you a thing. And to do that, we gotta go do a whole bunch of shenanigans, do a bunch of quests, blah, blah, blah. Exploring each of these planets is so fun because they all have a unique... So, you sure did make it sound fun, just so then. Fun. <laughs> yeah. It really... I, f I feel like it has to be stated that there is no meaningful difference between the way that you interact with the these planets in terms of the... It's it's aesthetics. It They're all big aesthetic. empty spaces. They're all big empty spaces. It's just some of them have grass and some of them have <laughs> trees. That's it. Even, I even sure love grass. Planets, well, these planets are extremely different in terms of the biomes that you visit, so you would think that they yep. should lean really hard into the fact that this is like an unforgiving, super harsh, cold climate. This is an arid desert where very few things can live. This is a lush jungle world that's constantly wet and raining, and so the quests and things that you do there might relate to it, or there'd be gameplay impacts because you're in completely well, yeah. different areas. I mean, uh, no, mean, not really at all. And I know I keep comparing it, but I got to. Like, in Red Dead Redemption 2, there's a difference between the places that you go to, and it changes how you navigate those areas. Like, if you're in New Hanover, it's like, yeah, it's big, massive plains. But, like, if you're up in the mountains, it's mountains. It's harder to move around. It's difficult to traverse. If you're going through the snow, it's kind of harder to move around. You have to stick to mountain trails. That's what makes Akiva my least favorite place, is that even though aesthetically I would say it's my favorite, it's navigating is a pain in the ass. There's the the, the fast travel point is not really helpful if you even get to it. Um, it it's just, just, it's so, it's just a pain in the ass to navigate. I mean, at least about... Jaunt's Hope was at a decently useful place for fast travel on Tashara, so it was easy to get to places, and it was, it's mostly easy to, 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 to navigate with the roads. I mean, I noticed being missing, and it was very evident watching everyone play on Akiva. It was a, I don't know what you'd call it, you know, like a mini mini map where it would like the, you know, like a car one where it's like a circle or a compass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mini map, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess you call it a mini map, yeah. Um, the a direction, yeah. Uh, directions. That was sorely missed in Akiva because all of us are moving like meters at a time through roads and then rechecking the main map and then going back, mm -hmm. and, then Mahler, back and then back the and then map back. lies. Mm -hmm. The map lies to you. The map literally has roads that do not exist on it. If it's you, not if, even... When you get to my stream, you'll watch that. But there's like a point where I, you're like, I, oh, I'll go this way. And you get there and it's like literally there's not a road. But the map says there's clearly a road, but a road doesn't exist there. The, mi the map lies to you. The way they've built Akiva, it's so fucking easy to go anywhere and end up in completely the wrong place. And you're just like, oh, fuck. This is where I was going. So, um... Yeah, watching all of us pull open the fucking map and close it every five seconds, uh, I was yeah. watching it just like, ugh, so badly made. <laughs> I find it That's... interesting, his use of the of the word explore here, because it's doing so much heavy lifting. He said it several times throughout this video, right? He keeps saying, oh, it, it's so much fun to explore. And I, I feel that what he means is to look at things, right? Like, because you're not interacting with anything in this game. So what, what kind of exploration is it other than just enter room, see room exists? Look around. Yeah. Well, what if you walk up to a guy aesthetic. who says, I would like to buy a droid. Can you find out where I can buy a droid? And then you go to the Pike District and they say, we sell droids. Can you tell the guy we sell droids? And then you go back to the guy and he says, yes, I will buy one from the Pikes. I don't know. See, th there's the map of Akiva. You see all those treasure chests on it? Yeah. Uh, the orange ones? That's what you're exploring. Um, which is though. <laughs> which is like which would be fine if the pursuit of those treasure chests were at interesting places that felt different and they were full of interesting cool things that made my character different and or better. But they aren't. That's the thing. It's just like some more some more goodies that you already have a pile of anyway. No, it's there's it's never anything meaningful or interesting. You don't pull out a super cool new like set of armor or helmet or sword or gun or blaster or cool upgrade that you can apply to something that you already have that changes things that keeps you going, hey, maybe in this next chest, I'll get something really awesome and I'll carry it around for a while or it'll change my play style. No, it's all just random shit you don't need. Also it, don't it's like... usually like it's usually money or what's it, Durasteel or whatever, just like the yeah, crafting Dura materials. Yeah, Quadranium, something boring. I also feel like uh, Akiva cheats quite a bit. Can you see how much uh, filled space there is with nothing in it to make you feel like the whole place is so much bigger than it actually is? Because we've got the main hut area, main pike area, main empire area, 
and then where you spawn in that town. It's essentially yep. glorified tunnels. Yeah. And, but because when you see it like this, you're like, oh, wow, look at this whole place. It's like, mm, it's not. No, that's not, yeah, this isn't like DayZ or anything. This isn't like, you know, The Witcher, or this isn't like Far Cry. You just can't go places. You you have a very small, it, yeah, if you, it would look like a, like a, like a blood vessel system of the places that, were, where you're allowed to actually go on this. You can't, you can't stray and away so from So much them. of, um, straying off will it's get you, roads, yeah. uh, into the out of bound shit. You're just like, fuck you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Surprising. Why not terrible. put Mira in the middle and then build the whole map outwards from Mira? That could just be a thing you could choose to do because the the, the planet doesn't away. stop. The, the planet doesn't stop there. So uh sphere. And that's largely due to the killer music in this game. Also, the wait a second, hold killer. on. So not, it's not only just put, put Mira in the middle of the map, just in terms of how this world is laid out, why would you have Mira right there? When the when like why wouldn't you put it on the coast? Like why wouldn't it be a port city? I don't know. I don't know enough about Mira and why it was founded. I guess the river the rivers do <laughs> connect it, but that's like a a lore. So they don't get you. Have you don't have until impacts. completed several. Bit. Like that should just be something you have immediately. It's already so annoying. Or they should be like the like kind of like the first thing you have to do when you get to um a or Kajimi is get like clothing and everything for the the for the for the weather. Maybe every time you land on a planet, you have to do like a mission that preps you for that planet, gets you ready to, you know, highlight the distinct differences between it and other biomes. Yeah. And that could be the one for Mira. And yeah, you it, it could even be optional, but you just notice as a player, there's so much water everywhere. The rivers could become roads if you have the repulsor. There's big lakes you can cross, the shortcuts. Mira has like a lake on one side that would be really cool to traverse across so that you're just sort of encouraged to get it because it would be really useful. Or not. <laughs> is incredibly idea. well done. Thanks to the work of some really talented musicians, the main one being Wilbert Roger, who's done soundtracks for a ton of Star Wars games, as well as more recently doing the music for Helldivers 2. I can't imagine what kind of work... I love the three tracks in Helldivers 2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it goes into making I like the music track. in Helldivers. It's cool. No, I do. I do like the music in Helldivers 2. <laughs> There's just, like... Many. There's so yeah. few of them. I've turned off the music actually. I think it makes it <laughs> neat, decently atmospheric, but I just I can't handle the oh same goodness. songs over and over and over and over and over and over. This sounded like you said I, I don't I don't want to hear the Sneem songs over and over again. Oh, I would love to hear the Sneem songs. <laughs> the Sneem songs. Sneem, Sneem, Sneem is play me good. a tune. Sneem, Sneem. <laughs> theme of Sneem. <laughs> so uh, Wilbert uh, Roger the second is someone I actually know. He's actually a pretty nice guy. He's done some pretty good work over the years on the games he's worked on, so good for him. Hmm. But luckily, we don't have to imagine. See, I've pulled some strings and was able to organize an interview with Wilbert Roger himself. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh my gosh, is that what you did, Dev? You pulled you some pulled strings? strings? No, I did not. Robert, Robert Lozier and then get his interview. Strings. String puller you. String puller you. Pretty big oh, deal, so without further ado, Let's talk to Will himself. Hey, Will, uh, how's it going? So glad to have you on here. Just want to ask, how was your experience working on the music? He really got dressed up for this interview. He really, <laughs> you know, he really <laughs> got himself looking nice and <laughs> he put on his best old T-shirt and then Fuck yeah. figured out. It's been, I've, I showered last week. He didn't put week. a light fine, on his whatever. face. <laughs> like the light's behind him and that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's because he's been that's working like on his light... green thing back there. Yeah, that's where the light is. But, but at least is. put, like, a light on on your face. <laughs> no. Or you think that just a, a bright screen would lighten up enough, you know? Star Wars Outlaws. Pretty good. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> all right. Yeah, yep. That, that's well, for the record, I think <laughs> this video is just like it, the style is totally fine. It's the substance of it all. It, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. A shitty review, but it's got good, you know, production value and some. I mean, you can see that there's places. been effort that's been put into the presentation. Yeah, I feel like yes. it cares, but I wish. A good deal of effort. Yeah. You would, Stuff uh... like the restaurant quality factor. I don't know. It's... Stuff and well, it's just the, the, I don't know, it's like the the overall, I just feel like so much of the video is just essentially like describing the systems or the mechanics or the events of the story, but like not with, 
but it, it'll be like one minute of describing it and then maybe a five or ten second remark that would pass for the criticism. So it's like, even though it's actually quite long, I feel like I'm not getting much out of it. I think much more, he feels like he cares way more about the video than the game. Than the game. Yeah, I think I know what you mean. Revolve around you upgrading your speeder so that you can ride it on water, which I actually really like. A lot of people don't like the fact that in really this game... Like... Well, because you'd always, you would have assumed nobody would like being able to ride the speeder on water. Oh, yeah, Everyone of course, would hate but that. he's like, yeah, he actually, actually likes it, yeah. I enjoy oh, this, even though okay. it's... Uh... Yeah, most people would mostly hate the idea of being able to like ski and stuff. I'm just, would I'm just that. drawing attention to the fact that people yeah. say actually when they just give an opinion that would obviously be the generally regarded accepted well, view. On actually, something. once you're done, we can we'll just carry <laughs> the video on. Wait, <laughs> we actually we will. Oh my. God. Well, actually, I think Dev about to speak. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> You cannot yeah. swim. And frankly, I find the way they handled not letting you swim to be a little goofy, but I do yeah, understand terrible. the trade off. It's stupid. Yeah. It's a little goofy. It's the worst. Like, I, actually, it's a little it's, goofy. It, yeah. It's um, <laughs> it, like Grand Theft Auto 3, they felt compelled to have animations for like not being able to swim. Here it's That's just like, oh, poop. Just have that water. be the case. I never learned how to swim. What? I grew up on wherever place or where there wasn't much water or whatever, blah, blah, blah. So I can't swim. So that's why you can't get in water because KVS cannot swim. Yeah, but like it's, it's, it's as if she weighs like 2,000 kilograms. She just like <laughs> drops straight into the water. Well, actually, like, we're it's... not animated. We're real. So it's actually more realistic for her to just drop in. Ah, uh, I see. I can't you tell can't if me. you're using actually th that way on purpose anymore. There's too many actuallys. <laughs> you just said actually twice. So... Actually! <laughs> of That's not letting you swim the, uh, in favor uh, of making you build up your speeder so you can travel across the water. Build up. This is, I mean, you get what upgrade is fine. I do think they could have handled it a little bit better. You know, like maybe make there be a stamina limit to how long you can swim so you can't use that to travel and you still have to upgrade the speeder to get where you need to go. I don't know. There are a lot of potential solutions here and I feel like they're all better than just falling into the void. But hey, you know what? Yeah, I'm of not course they are. <laughs> That's no, crazy. No, 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 no. Don't, don't go doing that, okay? It's not whether or not you're a game dev. Games have been able to solve yeah. these problems for decades. <laughs> well, actually, it. he's not a game dev, to be fair. Yeah. So. <laughs> I appreciate the humility. I respect it, but like, <laughs> come on, ha yeah, have a little bit more a confidence. Solid... Yeah, get in there. Say the devs suck. Do it. Reason that they couldn't do the thing that games have been doing for over twenty years. Long story short, uh, yeah, we see, even, yeah, exactly. There we go. There yeah, we go. all right. There we go. Able the droids, and we get a little help from the rebels because it turns oh, out. Oh God, this that. um. Man, this. it's funny, because he's racing through it, but, like, in this particular section, because it was, um, you had, like, the Rebels with you, I decided when I was playing it, I'm just gonna sit here and see what happens. Same. And they, they can't fight each other. They actually can't do it. They just will sort of stand there and awkwardly shoot at each other. I think it took, like, three or four minutes for them to finally start making progress. Yes, the, they don't they, do... They, they don't deal any damage yeah. to each other. It's insane. Well, they do, it's, but it's, it's like 0.01% it, it, of what you Very low, yeah. Score. It's so low that it takes like 50 shots. Like the game cannot handle friendly and enemy enemy NPCs. They they can't do it. The game the game just cannot. It can't it's handle. Like the it. meme of they're all shooting at each other and they they like side eyeing at the main player. Like please interact with us. Yeah, we on, can't dude, do this on do our own. <laughs> we can, we're gonna stuck here forever. Actually working with the rebels. Now I kind of go back and forth on whether or not I like Kay, but one thing I will say about her is that she stands uh, on what she says. Kay has been shit talking these rebels since day one. Every time. Yeah, it's really stupid. It makes no sense uh, a lot of the time, especially since she was the one. She keeps shitting on him for that opening decision, as if she made zero mistakes in it, and then she keeps coming across yeah. them doing hum like humanitarian missions, and she makes fun of them for it. Like, oh, look at me! I'm gonna well, save a person. She doesn't understand anything like that. She's completely selfish. And she's like, Gadeek, look at you with your friends being the rebels. It's like, yes, you're the thief. You're better than these people saving people. It makes no fucking sense at all. <laughs> Try to keep... It reminds me of the stupid droid thing that uh, they gave Mando in Season 1. It's just like, how can you maintain this? You deal with droids constantly. 
time a rebel shows up, she is just running her mouth, cannot stand these guys. When the rebels came up again, I was kind of worried that she was going to see their point and end up joining the rebels and it was going to be a- Which would be better considering I mean... she should. Not join up with them, but to see that they're- Like, she's meeting them on missions where they're saving people and she's still an asshole to them. I don't get it. Remember when they offer it, it a chance like it really to save more people and she's like, oh, you're just like all the syndicates. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think it really is just a case of, tr oh, yeah, there'll be conflict because she'll eventually come around in the end. And, and they don't realize that, like, there are better ways to write characters than that. She also I, I puts her life on like, the line well, to save them, so she definitely comes around on them by the end. I think I am, um, like, there. there is a degree to which it is almost, like, shocking that, that, um, that not only would a substantial number of the developers felt that Kay was a good character, but that there have been plenty of reviews that have said that she's a good character. I find that absolutely baffling, like, the, the how, how low the standards have sunk, like, and evaporated for, for what it means to create, like, a compelling character. Mm -hmm. It's just unbelievable to me. One of those boring cookie-cutter stories, but I'm happy to report... That never happens. It did not go the cookie. I'm so sorry. I'm so tired of like the fucking quippy characters. Yeah. It's so it's so tired. Oh, I hate the way she talks for the whole game. It sucks. Don't take anything seriously. And, and constantly being like, uh, uh you, you know, like, oh hey, you're not deceiving me, are you? It, no, 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 I'm, no, I'm not. Mm -hmm. It's just why can't the characters and of course it speaks to a broader problem I have with Star Wars, which is let me play as an alien! Let me play as a robot! Let me, let, like, let me actually participate in the, like, far-flung science fiction elements of this science fiction world. No. Instead of having everybody no, be a boring, lame not. human. It will never. And not only a, not only a human, but, like, the lame, uh, just a lame person, right? Like, not, it, it couldn't be, like, a human who's got, like, prosthetics or something, like, Adam Jensen-esque. <laughs> like, some <laughs> hor horrific accident happened, and now he's got a whole bunch of robotic parts. Like, it's always... <sighs> Or, or even, like, a, a human hailing from, like, I guess what you could call, like, a more um, unfamiliar sort of society or cultural background. It's it's always, like, I don't know. if it, it, Lame. It's lame. That's all. It's lame. I, sorry. <laughs> it's, 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 I expected. I'm not a so and lame. I enjoyed that. All that business with the droids gets settled, and Gadeek joins the crew, letting us enter the final act of this. Fucking graphics keep loading in in all of his cutscenes. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when I said before that Jalen was going to find so a replacement beautiful. for the crew? Well, when you get back to the Trailblazer, Jalen is there with two new crew members. One, Asara from the Rebels. Don't know why we're keeping this guy around, but whatever. And He's on the team. He says <laughs> he's here because they wanted more firepower. He's explicit about it. She asks why, and he says, he says. He's the heavy, okay. Two, a woman named Rico. If she looks a bit familiar, it's because she has a slight resemblance to Kay, maybe a little bit, because that's her mama. Yeah. Throughout Star Wars Out. I thought she was adopted anyway. I didn't I, like him. I didn't realize they were biologically mom and daughter. All of the women in this game have a resemblance <laughs> to all the women in this game. Uh -huh. These all kind of look the samey. Laws, you get like an incest to a whole new level. Various flashbacks no. to moments of young Kay learning how. Remember, she abandons it. Says <laughs> the yeah. lesson is yeah. that you always be abandoned. <laughs> It's so badly written, because had she <laughs> stolen the thing successfully, there'd be no lesson. She bumps into the fucking cops. If she hadn't done that, she would have gone home and been like, so what lesson do you learn? She'd be like, I'm I know, good I'm really at stealing good at stuff, stealing. yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate that scene, this is stupid. To be a thief from an older woman named Rico. It's implied that this is her mother, and she starts out by teaching Kay stuff, but eventually it's revealed that she abandoned Kay when she was very young, and left her with only a casino chip and a blaster. And now, after all these years, Jalen has forcefully reunited them for this job. She goes off on the guy trying to tell him that this was not cool, but he just kind of says, oh, do you want money? Do you want money? Do what I say. And yeah, that's all Jalen's capable of, because that's the character he is. Do you guys remember when um, they find out the job is, like, way more insane by the end because it's t connected to the ISB? And he goes, oh, yeah? Like, all of them are like, oh, we're not doing this. And he goes, yeah, well, you all want money, don't you? So, yeah, you're going to do the I job. I want to live. Well, that, that's my point, is that <laughs> it's like, do you want to do this job? What do we get? Money. Cool. Then they find out it's connected to the ISB, so they'll go, whoa, we're not doing that. And he goes, yeah, but you guys want money. And they're like, oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah we do. <laughs> really good point. And she listens, I guess. I'm gonna be so honest with you. I think this subplot with her mother 
did not need to be in the game. I mean, she just adds absolutely nothing to the story. I think maybe but there the was other characters a lot of people anything. would tell you that's the heart of the story. <laughs> the heart of the story. <laughs> oh, well, because it is shit. I agree. Some version of this game where her mother added more or was more relevant to the plot. But it, at this point, she just feels like a strange addition. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to reference her at all for the rest of the video. She is in the rest of the game, but that just goes to show you she is not important whatsoever because the rest of the story will sound exactly the same without her being mentioned once. The heist starts off No, she's just like hacking for you so you can get to places. He's right, right though. You can summarize the, the problem is he's more right than he realizes. You can summarize all the events without mentioning much at all. It's I mean that's true, yeah. It's all very... Nothing of note happens. It's yeah. all K-based. She does everything. Because the game doesn't know how to make it so that she doesn't do all of the things. They make jokes about it in the game a couple of times. It's like, oh, do you want to use the droid? And she's like, no, I'll do it myself. Oh, do you want to work with, uh, what's her name, Vale? And it's like, no, you'll do it all for me or I'll kill you. Oh, do you want to work with uh, Rico? And then it's like, yes, okay, let's do it. And then she goes, I'm going to stay here. You do everything. You're like, oh, okay. It's... The game awkwardly tries to work around you having a companion at any point because it can't handle it. We saw what happens. Every time you have a companion, they break. Like, in very funny ways. They don't react to the, uh... The AI don't work well in opposition to each other, if that makes no, sense. No, no. Hacking Slero down to an Imperial base. Oh my god, this is the cutscene! He's about to Vader! Oh, yes! Around, and then, the big twist of this game... Don't say it's revealed. cool, I'm Zarek gonna fall it. is not just some random crime syndicate. It is a branch of the Imperial Security Bureau. Oh, that's, Basically, that's they're the a part twist. of the Empire. Oh. And Slero oh. answers oh. to none other oh. than... Who? Ain't no damn one. This is a surprise? Oh. It's not a surprise at all. Whoa. they can't fucking help themselves. Oh. Yep, I know who that Anyone is. Anyone know who that is? Because I'm not sure. Uh, so if you don't know, there's like these that's movies. That's Black Helmet Man. Whores. <laughs> oh, Dark Helmet from Spaceballs. I know him. <laughs> no, he's Black Helmet Man Great. from Thumb Wars. Oh my god, there's so many. The Emperor has my report. Zurich Bear Syndicate has infiltrated the underworld into the farthest reaches of the galaxy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are on the verge of uncovering the Rebel Network. This is an unqualified success for the... He's gonna play the... <laughs> At this I mean, point, I, I guess it's just, uh, you just gonna play the whole thing. All right, fair yeah, enough. Zarek Besh has not found us. I, I, uh, Sounds so bad. Sounds so it's not awful. Vader. It's terrible. Really not bad. a good Vader. Not even not close. Who, who did they get for it anyway? So I actually watched Some Star Wars Theory boy, talk about this. Um, they mm. have the same voice actor who did Vader from. I think he's in Survivor as well. And uh, he didn't believe it at first, and I thought maybe he was, like, fondly remembering the Vader from Survivor. But he plays the clips back-to-back. -back. He sounds way better in Survivor. And at this point, it's just a matter of the people who filtered Voiced, him in this one yeah. fucked up. I, I don't know what else to say. Because the apparently it is the same voice actor, but, like, this just doesn't sound like Vader to me at all. Hmm. A single member of the Rebel Alliance. <laughs> That's nonsense. Without Rebels, Zarek Besh is a failure. And it's weird, too, because he just got done saying, okay, we've done all of this insane prep work to do exactly the thing that you want us to do. It took us a lot of time and effort. We're going to start uncovering Rebels. And he's like, you haven't uncovered Rebels. <laughs> well, we, I just explained, well, the... we, we just did the thing to get us to... We just... Uh, the end of the scene, right? He's like, find some Rebels. Bye. Like, that's literally <laughs> my intention. Thing is so and fucking the next thing. thing. Non-specific. Like... You'd think the pitch of this entire thing would be infiltrate the underworld and uncover the rebel network, like when they're discussing, you know, the action plan, right? And so then when he, Vader walks into the room and he's told, we have infiltrated the criminal underworld and we're looking for the rebel network. It's like, yeah, we discussed that that's what we were going to do. What's actually happened since we last spoke? It's just really, really shoddy also, exposition in that regard. Uh, they make it explicit Vader has come here specifically for this conversation. No fucking way Vader would waste this time just to say, do your job. You, you, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's like Why would he take all this effort? He would just do it over the phone. And he would strangle him over the phone, too. Do you remember when Vader was just kind of over the phone? Do you remember when Vader was kind of just a guy? Like, he was, yep. he was an enforcer of the Empire in, like, the first film? 
Oh, and every days. time he's on the screen, he doesn't have this enormous fanfare like, oh my god, guys, it's Darth Vader again. <laughs> Can you believe wow. it? He's just kind of a, a strong thimble, you know? You, Director Barsha, are a failure. Failure? Oh, man. The ISB has created the most groundbreaking intelligence network the Empire He is just going to play the whole cutscene, huh? Yeah, it's just the whole thing. Crazy, or was the lip the flat that just Imperial army. An army. But that makes me angry because of that insanely good thing you did for me. Yeah, but Rags, he's, he's being in support. He should be on his knees saying, Yes, Lord Vader, I am a pussy. Ooh. Uh, strangle me, daddy. Oh, no way. Oh, <laughs> I will say, that was a, like a retarded thing to say to fucking Darth Vader. He's like, Yo, Yeah, this is a yeah. really dumb thing. SB, that will win this war. Oh. Ugh. I'm so close. Man, like, playing all of this with such little context and analysis is just funny, because it's like, you know what you're doing, guy who made this video. You're like, look how cool Vader is! Vader. Look, look at him! Look at him. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> Lord Vader. It's just cringe. Then I suggest you find some rebels, director. <laughs> I love that. It's so stupid. The Emperor is waiting. That's all he came to tell him. Find some rebels, yeah. loser. That's it. What are the odds so the case or this? This information yeah. makes the job a little bit more complicated, and the crew is honestly ready you know, to jump ship. I, I, uh, Jalen. Uh, oops. I, I don't know why they didn't keep on the, um, the Chad Vader guy. Because he actually did a pretty good, like, I know, I know it was a joke series, but he actually did a pretty good Darth Vader voice. And they, they got him for a few games. They, they got him for, like, Soul Calibur and, like, 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 a, like, a Lego Star Wars, but they didn't keep him around. Wonder why not? Don't worry, it's we'll better have than... AI yeah. doing it all eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Way they were the TV shows. Waltzes in and does a little bit of sweet talking. I don't know why anyone listens to this guy, but they just do. I don't get the. Why do you keep contextualizing it as a sort of like meme? It's badly written. When he yeah, comes in and hard. tells them they want money, of course they fucking want money. They don't want to mess with the <laughs> ISB. Yep. Appeal. He's just some weirdo with money. Why do they need him at all for this? What is he going to contribute? Secondly, the I'm money. not even sure why Zarek Besh being a part of the Empire makes these people wary of robbing them. I mean, we just broke into an Imperial ship and we have been robbing the Imperials the entire time. What mm, makes this Yeah, they're pretty fucking different? worthless. I was about to say, that that yeah. is actually fair, but that's, that's K has been doing that. The other characters don't want anything to do with it. I just, I feel like there is this strange, loose interpretation of the Empire going on in this game, where when we want something from the Empire and we don't want it to be high stakes, the Empire are just these stupid little puppets that you can sneak in and like do anything you want to and they're not going to stop you. But then we'll randomly pretend like they are the most high stakes enemy oh my to make. god, look just... at the table freaking out. Wait, what? Wait, uh, what? the main is table? Is that only on my end? Yeah, no, uh, one just on the right. Maybe that was just mine. Like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh my god. Oh my god. The pixel is like, what do we do? What do we do? Oh my god, it's our key. It's our key. Oh, 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 Jerry, get into your spot. Everyone, positions. Is this, is this, is this life? Simply pretend like they are the most high stakes enemy to make. It just doesn't make. A lot of sense. These are just two of True. Good job. Agreed. Posing yeah. ideas of what the Empire is, and they flip flop between them at their leisure. Though it doesn't really matter, they decide to go and do the job anyway, and the mission's pretty cool. You use pretty much every skill you've gained so far to. Okay. It's... What are you uh, talking what, about? I was gonna say, I, I like, just find the. Shooting people the... and slicing, which we had since fucking hour one. I find the scene before this so embarrassing. It was like, hey, do you want to talk to all of your friends in the team uh -huh. that you bonded so deeply? It was like, not really, but I guess no, I'll hear what they have to them say. Completely for the whole game after you get them. <laughs> this was yeah, also the segment up. where you're not allowed to raise the alarm, which means that you could massacre everyone as long as no one raises an alarm. Yep. <laughs> oh, by which the way, what I did, I just went around and kill everybody. If you immediately talk to Andy, it says like, hey, hey, don't you want to talk to people? And you can then talk to everyone, go back to him, and then he'll say, whoa, whoa, whoa don't you want to talk to your friends? And you're like, what? <laughs> can't you at least pretend there's some dynamism here that you can recognize that I have exhausted all dialogue options in the area and therefore do not give me that option? But all right. 
get through Zarek Besh's upgraded security, fighting your way all the way through. Eventually, you make it back to that vault from the beginning of the game, Whoa. where it turns out Slero was expecting you the entire time. <laughs> oh my god! Slero knew you were coming, and that's why he all let right. you get into the fucking vault. Yeah. <laughs> and then to see if you could do it. He just loses immediately. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. <laughs> Lucky he chose Vale, huh? If if it was everyone other than that, if it wasn't him, him there. <sighs> what a clever boy. He knew the whole time. That's why he didn't stop you up until now. And he opens up the vault and you can see he and Vale have been waiting inside. Good thing Vale is my motherfucking dog and she is about ready oh, to wow, go to war she? for Kay. I don't know how you convince a how? bounty hunter that you're... Like what she's a, wait, oh wait he thinks she's a character yeah <laughs> i i thought she was gonna show up on all of the planets but she only showed up on tatooine like when she was out i thought oh the reason why she's gonna let her go is because she's gonna be more antagonistic on the encounters on other planets but no she just doesn't show up again until like here yep and she decides to side with the randy that she was on one mission with yep. instead of the isb and the zarek besh and the empire well, also, we saved her once, kind of, a little bit, and uh -huh. now we're really cool with them, and we're bestest of friends, because and that's the, how writing works. He says, oh, I don't want a, I don't want a dead ISP officer on my, like, I don't want to have killed one. Yeah. But I'll happily have one who's furious at me. Yeah. She'll and like she that. won't kill him here, when she could just kill him now and end all of this, she doesn't him, do yeah. it. Yeah, 100%. And to just, you know, work with you, uh, but Kay does it. And Vale's just like, yeah, give me a percentage. And then knocks out Slero. It's awesome. I mean, it's dumb. Wow, knocks awesome. him out. Kay, it's, it's dumb. Awesome? It's, wow. it's awesome. <laughs> she, she knocks him out. That's really That's so awesome. great. Yeah. Vess is literally like if Batman were chill as fucking like a vibe. I just... What? What does he see? What? What, does he, what does he see? I don't even understand. Vale's the... like a nobody uh. character. She, in fact, she's kind of shitty and stupid. But I... Well, yeah, we see her do nothing he, competent. I, like ever. She kills yeah, this fucking is Walker, one... but a, a, a gust of wind could have done that. So I don't even know why the fuck we care. But she won't kill Slero here. Now nah, we better knock him out so that he can death mark us and follow us around for the rest of our lives. Instead of just killing him here and being done with it and ending it all. Plus I mean, personal reasons. Dumb, but it's awesome. k Vess is literally oh. like if Batman were chill as fucking like a vibe. After Slero gets knocked out, the crew takes the money. Did Batman reference this video? Yeah. That, I don't I'm even know what to say to it. Means. I just, I just... Yeah back to the trailblazer. They get inside and they open it up only to learn that there were actually no credits inside. You Whoa. See, Kay has a character. Wow, we should have checked. Of I can't believe this people. tiny thing had not all the credits we ever need to live forever and ever. <laughs> well, the thing is, that's really not the, the size um... of it or if it's a data bank of them. Well, no, that's, that's, it's not even, that's not the, the way he's saying this isn't how it goes. That's not the, riv the, the betrayal that there's no credits in there. It's fine that there's no credits in there because they've got something more valuable than... Almost any. It, it's remember. Yeah. It's, it's information on every single officer in the empire, or something like that. It's like this is immense uh, leverage, and it's like all of Slero's personal codes and data that relates to everything. So yeah, this is better than a load of credits. The problem comes in that they stun shot Asara because they're betraying the rebel side, and then they say we're going to use this as leverage with the empire to gain control of Zarek Besh, and then that's why she's like, "Oh my God, you're just the same as all the syndicates." Wah, 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 wah. When she has absolutely no reason to trust them. She's like the definition of fool me once, shame on you, fool me five kajillion times and maybe you have some kind of mental deficiency. I think we all knew Jalen was up to a little bit of shenan, some light shenanigans. Literally no one thought he was a good guy. <laughs> like, no, obviously he'll, he'll be a bad guy. guy. If you will. But I honestly wished this wasn't the case and there was actually going to be some money, but Yep, kind of saw that twist coming a mile away. What they got from the vault was it's actually... It's not a twist, though. That's the thing, right? Like, it's not a, he's not portrayed as the nice guy. He is forcing you to do this at gunpoint with a, a, robot, with a robot assassin. Yeah. Yes, right? Yeah. That will kill you like, if you go it, off trail. In no way is this a, a, a surprise. It's not a twist. He is the bad guy. And then, well, and or then, I guess uh, an then, antagonist to you. Sure, yeah. The the twist, because the funny thing is, you're ultimately just trying to steal. You're not exactly the good guy. <laughs> like that's your whole job. <laughs> what? But I'm the protagonist. I'm always the good guy. Secret data that Zarek Besh had been building up to use for a rainy day. Dirt on every single one of the cartels, as well as the Imperials. Jalen didn't want 
the credits. He wanted Zarek Besh, and with all of this information, he could now take it. Jalen assures Kay that he will. He's just describing this like it's a Game of Thrones. I don't understand. Yeah, it's really <laughs> weird. Can we, can we talk about how Kay just gives her gun away to her mom for no reason? It's like, remember that? Where she loses all of her leverage and expects to be killed, probably? God, I hated that part. Will erase her it's not as stupid, though, as fucking Jalen giving up his meat shield at the end. That was even stupider. The uh, game keeps surprising you. Death mark, and then immediately after, orders ND5 to stun K, leaving her unconscious. Oh, Ank and Gagin no. find K unconscious. The drama! Plan... You see how it... Because um, we can't kill her. We I don't can't believe just kill her and be done with it. Putting as much thought into what he's emphasizing, it's just he's on like a generic mode, because he said, uh, uh, Ank and Gadik find K. Like, he mm -hmm. like emotionally mm -hmm. boosted the word find. Find. <laughs> find. Like, okay. They found her. It just feels he's like he's okay, on... guys. It's gonna be okay. He's got a summary to read, and he's just boosting random words emotionally to make it sound more interesting. Mark, and then immediately after, orders ND5 to stun K, leaving her unconscious. Ank and Gadik find K unconscious and plan to flee, but then K makes the same Boring. decision I actually yeah, liked bored. in this game, and it's to go back and save ND5 from. Really stupid to try and do it here, where you're completely out of your league. And you have to fight an entire fucking Empire Star Destroyer if you want to uh, get him out once you've been found. As opposed to, of course, tracking them and waiting for a time where Endy's on his own, and then capturing him and saving him. That would have been way smarter. Mm -hmm. From Jalen. See, Endy5 has something in him called a restraining bolt, which means he has to do whatever Jalen says. K wants to find him and free him, but the only way to do that is to pull a classic Star Wars. Works every time. You can't do throughout the rest of the game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Dressing up like a stormtrooper allows God, Kay to get all the way up to the bridge of this star destroyer, where Jalen, ND5, and Slero are when all they, together. When they fucking did this, the whole disguise, I was mad because like, oh, now we do this because the first time we went on one of these ships, like, oh, can we get like one of these? Yep. You know, stormtrooper outfits because we have an imperial ship we just used to get on here. So like, Look, yeah. the entire element of <laughs> using disguises, outfits, ships, and things to get into restricted areas that just doesn't. It's just not a thing. Don't even. Don't oh, even. okay. So my my bad. No, I thought no, I thought probably. it was pretty smart to do if you want to do something like that. But no, no. no. It must have been my uh, situation of disability. Sorry. Yeah, another twist. It turns out, boom, boom, boom. Jalen is Slero's brother. Wow. Apparently, why does that matter at all? Like, well, this I, fucking good scene reveal. Good for them, I guess. Yeah. This this was the scene when that played. That's the scene where I just started laughing and losing my mind. I was like, what am I? What is happening? Why am I watching them feuding you just about? To go further and for Vader to be like, <laughs> I am your mother to these guys. I am your. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just keep going, fuck it. I didn't kill your so, mother, brother. It's just so funny because... I am because, your mother. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so funny because they, they have like this beef apparently and you just stand there it's like, I don't know anything about this. Why is this being revealed to me? I don't give a shit. <laughs> it's like with the with the scepter. It's like, I don't know. I don't, you have it. I don't care. Slero betrayed their entire family and all of this has been a revenge plot from Jalen to get back at his brother as wow. well as take Zarek Besh out from under him. Boom, 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 boom. He straight up kills Slero. I mean, fully wins that one. Frankly, we're not focused on that at the moment. I'm just trying to get my guy and get yeah, up out I... of here. But oh wait, Kay reveals herself for no reason at all and then ND5 <laughs> is sent to go and attack her. And this leads to wow. a boss fight between Kay and ND5. You've got to power the music. Up Holy shit. I, 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 <laughs> Boss, the boss. Yeah, but like, Jesus isn't it so Christ, weird man. to summarize it with this boss kind of enthusiasm event. while also throwing in that it's retarded every once in a while? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Generators while hiding from ND5, because let's face it, there is no fighting that tank of a man. And you Turn the music down. Fuck. <laughs> Use the power from both of them to stun him long enough to break the restraining bolt or whatever he uh, does. She shoots it. She just shoots it with yeah. a blaster. She just shoots the restraining <laughs> bolt, which kind of undoes all of this. The freedom spike, yep. the stunning him, everything. <laughs> she could just shoot him with a blaster and he's safe. That's what that was. Same. Yeah. I can't really tell. But oh no, it seems like it doesn't work. I'm Jalen's here. Oh my goodness. No, he didn't. Get, she, you didn't get to try. Did, she, you, she just shot him with a blaster. She shot him. Yeah. Because it looks like he, it's like a last that just, oh god, I, I guess I have to kill him now. And then I, I, I'm pretty sure this, this happens by accident. She's like, oh, I'm going to have to shoot the glowy bird so I don't die. And then it's just like, oh, well, we won. That's fine. Well, she shot off the restraining bolt, right? 
Yeah, but I don't think it wasn't on purpose. I think that was just you her think she trying to shoot him to the gap and hit his restraining ball by accident. I I think so. It didn't look like it was on purpose. She was like to me. She couldn't least. be closer to him, so I'm assuming we're supposed to believe she did that. Oh, no, because I thought she was just trying to hit this inside, like the the scar thing he has there or the breach. Just shoot in there because otherwise she would die. Like I'd that was assume, the read I got. I'd assume the read they would want you to have is that Kay took that final decision to put everything on the line to save her friend Andy. Yeah, yeah, good lady. But then by then that worked out for her by not destroying him, but actually just getting well, rid of the I think bolt. It just feels <clears throat> silly that you could have just shot him oh, yeah, at any sure. moment and that would have been it. Yeah, what exactly. Is going on? For sure. It turns out it did work. ND5 is free. And the first thing ND5 does with his newfound freedom is to shoot the hell out of man. This fucking music. <laughs> yeah, well, on this fun. summary, <laughs> do you see that? He it's... gets rid of his meat shield, which would have kept him alive here. Yeah, why did he do that? Yeah. It's not a very smart Why would move. he do that? It doesn't admit, make... Not a smart I don't care. <laughs> oh, well. Jaylen... Do you remember, dude, oh one God. of the funniest lines of the campaign is when uh, he says, what is, okay, what are you doing here? And she says, I'm here to save Ed D. And him, I guess. To, to the and fucking... him, I guess. <laughs> yeah. To Asara, who's like entirely innocent. He's just like, oh, cool, thanks. Yeah, I'm here too. Is there any reason I, I also... why he wouldn't just be able to squeeze off a shot, though? Like, it's, oh, it hits him, so now he can't do anything. Like, it, surely he'd just be able to fire right now, you know? No, it, whenever you've been shot, work, just cause, it know. disables all of your abilities. <laughs> yeah. I see, yeah, okay. I cannot move. I can I only think. scream. One thing, one thing I'm noticing about about this uh, this game is whenever whenever K is on the screen, but she's n but she's yeah we'll call yes obviously <laughs> whenever whenever K is on screen and she's not the focus of the shot, her face just like it just derps. Like look at that. Yeah, she looks pretty just... happy that. It sounds like a lot okay. of work though to animate people's faces based off of like a cutscene and what's happening and you know just. If if the people's eyes are probably not on her face, they're on something that's actually really quite close to her face. Her face is literally in between the two other characters, so I don't I don't know. It's <laughs> you think you'd animate her face here especially because I think it's not this a engine example. it takes a lot more processing power to underp them, so they let them do it. Yeah. yeah, you can't have multiple yeah. animations in like one, which is actually weird because she has the only face in the the cutscene because Indy Five doesn't have like expressions. It, this guy's face in the other way. And she's, hmm, yeah, I got nothing. Yeah. Also, I know you guys spoke about the ND5 uh, freedom arc a little bit earlier, but just, just real quick. I, I recall a cutscene specifically where he says that his entire personality is in the restraining bolt. Do you guys remember that? Or basically he says that, like, the restraining oh, bolt not, on, not only restrains oh. him, but, like, it, it gives him his personality. And without it, he reverts to his Imperial programming. So I, I, I was under the impression you can't just shoot it off. No, I don't. I don't think they were saying the restraining bolt gives him the personality. You got the baseline droid, and then you've got the d personality like in Star Wars that develops over time. They've been very vague about that in almost everything to do with Star Wars because they don't want to answer that question as to what it means consciousness-wise. And then the restraining mm. bolt makes it so that they have to follow orders from their owner. I think that's just that's the three elements of his personality. Yeah, see, I, I do recall that from um from from the movies, but for some reason, I'm I'm just. My memory is saying that there was a cutscene where he said that the restraining bolt has given him his current personality, and if he loses the restraining bolt, he loses his personality. And I thought that was going to be a thing. I don't Maybe I'm just think so. It like, yeah, I can't remember that being the case. I know that obviously it comes up with the when he's losing, like in the in the droid factory part, he's like losing his personality and reverting. But I, I can't remember them saying the restraining bolt is tied to his uh, personality or not. I'd have to check. Mm. I don't think so though. Yeah. God bless America. God bless our troops. Just what a good day. Overall. Now we get ND5 and also the rebel guy. I guess Bro, the music, music is way too loud. It's way too loud. Blast off. But the ba -da -da, problem ba -da -da, is this Star Destroyer is in the orbit of Akiva and is planning to blow up the big group of rebels. And also probably like a bunch of other people. Now Asara, the one rebel guy, is on the comms trying to... Well, you don't think they'd ever blow up Kajimi, would you? No. No. Okay, because that would be catastrophic Dude, to the Ashiga clan. I'll be like blowing up Hosnan it's, it's, Prime or something. The music is so loud. <laughs> it's intense. This is an amazing ending to the video. This is the crescendo. Wow. To warn the rebels on he didn't even go nuts over Vader's second appearance. I guess there's just nothing of, of note happened in it. So. 
Akiva, but he's not able to get a message. This is when both ND5 and K make the decision to stick back what? and fight. <laughs> this is the final battle of the entire game. Yeah, that's it also is stupid. The final battle. Uh, wait, what, what are you, what's he about to say about it? It's I... super cool. Not only because the right. space combat is right. actually really super cool. I We're only now, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. now talking combat. about yeah. space combat, which I fucking hate. Two it's fine. I forgot about it too. The video left. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it. it's just been a while. Long, but... Since he said anything that we can do anything with, too. Like, most of it's just been yeah. this happens, yeah. this happens. I mean, it's this just happens. been recapping just a, the I, the end. Yeah. yeah, it's mostly a poor recap of the story and events and mechanics and features. And okay, narrative. Mahler, I, I no. found what I was talking about. I found it. Do so it. here. Click on this video here. Head over okay. to 1702 and watch for, like, 15 seconds. I can't, I'm hosting a stream of... <laughs> oh, cool. yeah, but you can do okay. it through watch together. You can just put it into watch together, and we could all. Well, then, I mean, if you yeah, want, can should do we do that after we finish this after. video? Sure, yeah. sure, 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 sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. Really fun in this game, but also because just the sense of scale is awesome, and you get to call in a favor from the faction that you had the highest reputation. My best reputation. You get to call in a favor. It just sort of like happens hilariously, <laughs> and it makes no sense. So, the way that you phrase it is. Not accurate. Yeah, you but get to call in is already. Is... It's all very. This is what I mean about how it automatically about this game. does it. Yeah. Mission was with the Ashiga. So after K puts out the call, a whole group of the Ashiga ships show up. Listen, blasting. he really identify with K. Okay. He <laughs> uh, really, yeah. really feels this character. Yeah, she's great. Yeah. So much wrong with it's like looking moment. in a mirror. And as was mentioned earlier, right? Like the Ashiga coming in to attack the Empire for you, as if, as if. Star Destroyer, as well as a couple of rebels show up, and it's awesome. It's a huge, large Whoa. scale Star Wars space battle. And with the help of everyone, we disable the shields and we can help explode everyone. the Star Destroyer. Wow. The trailblazer yeah, that's crazy. That's, that's, that's not insane to you that you did that just now? <laughs> the rebels are shitty for having to, like, really try hard to destroy these things and not wanting to engage them in a fight. Don't you know that just some random asshole? And some mm -hmm. Ashiga people randomly can just blow it's them really up It's really just you. You do the shields, you yeah. do the life yeah. support, yeah, you do it the is engines, all you. boom, 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 done. There, she just called them in to witness her incredible feat. <laughs> yep. That's all That's all she did. Like, witness me. How many people did you just kill? Space oh, like <laughs> thousands. There are They're all evil, though, it's fine. There are enemy combatants, they're valid targets. Even the... I mean, sure. Don't, I just, you know? Mm. No, fuck all this Imperial you'd think janitor, that You would dude. think that you'd think about it, though. Yeah. You know? You you would be like, hmm, like I'm morally I'm in the clear, but like I should reflect on what I've just done so that I don't become a psycho killer. <laughs> I need that little guy. How do you that guy in the back of my chariot? All right. <laughs> the entire crew goes back planet side and then K and ND5 sit back down in the cockpit of the trailblazer. So, uh -huh. OK, where do we go next? Second start of the right and straight until Anywhere morning. We want ND. Or that. Where though? Star Wars Outlaws 2, baby! What if, what if, wouldn't it be better if she asked him, now that he's got a newfound freedom, wouldn't it be better if she said, where do you want to go, Indy 5? And, he's, and he, like, he says a place, and then that's like implied to be their next thing instead of this like this empty thing. Like actually take advantage of the fact that no. Indy 5 is now like free of his restraining bolt. Go away with okay. your ideas. All right. <laughs> and that was Star Wars Outlaws. That the game wow. that a lot of people seem to hate. Now, yeah, that's really shit. shit. You, you avoided talking about a lot of the weird shit. You didn't spend much time at all Did on... he even mention, yeah, you know, like, the stealth mechanics? Did he, like, say anything everything, about them? Everything Did got mention... A little bit, but not yeah, much. Not much. And so, like, the combat, the stealth, and the AI, like, so little was talked about how fucking horrific they all are. Now, I guess the question here is, is that hate justified? Yes. I'm gonna say no. But also, yes, in like a lot of areas. There's a lot of goofy moments so, in this game. I don't answer I mean, the <laughs> goofy, is, that is true. There are a lot of goofy moments, but that's because they're terrible and broken and bad and don't function. The stealth does not function correctly. It yeah, does not work. That's the annoying part is you don't just rely on, oh, it's buggy and people are overhating on it because of the bugs. No, 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 no. On like a brutally fundamental level, the game is poorly designed. It's ill-conceived and incomplete. This game it's, could it, have it, 
no zero buggy. bugs whatsoever. It would it, it could be, be a completely yeah. It would still be sub four. Like mm -hmm. buggy mm -hmm. is a binary. Yeah. It has bugs or it does not have bugs. <clears throat> this has bugs, and many games have it bugs. Has. The bugs normal. affect the gameplay. The day to day, moment to moment gameplay is affected by the bugs. It's not like oh this random thing might happen or <clears throat> hey this is a silly thing you could get every once in a while. It's constant all the way. It gets in the way of entire stealth doesn't function properly because of how un i don't even know how to describe it like the ai is just not intuitive i'll whistle over here and they'll randomly go and check to the spot in the random part of the room where i'm hiding as a result like i i don't understand it doesn't make any sense there's no logic to anything that they do and it ruins a whole set of mechanics or it actually does work and you just didn't understand how you'd fucked up have you thought about I getting guess that's good at the game? Yeah. Skill issue. It is One a day. skill issue. You plan on, uh, <laughs> you're, you're doing another stream of it, right? Three more, I think you said? Three more full campaigns of it? You said you really liked it? You wanted to do all the difficulty? Reputation? Unlock all the characters, the abilities, and all the costumes, and all the locations, and play all the DLCs, I think you said? You would mention that very casually, yeah? Yeah, Rex. Can't yeah. wait to I see I haven't uninstalled that. it, because... Oh, <laughs> I, I figured maybe maybe I'll need to log in and do something or do a test or maybe Mahler will be like, hey, guys, we're going to do a super fun challenge with outlaws. First one, like a speed run to kill yourself or whatever. Um, but, I win. I yeah, win. I, I just haven't <laughs> uninstalled it yet. Can't bring himself to rid to rid of that that wonderful love. I will. I now that we've done this stream, I know I can get rid of it. It doesn't have to. This or Ubisoft Connect doesn't have to be on my computer any mm. fucking longer. Right. And if you wanted to, it'd be super easy to grab a quick little clip and portray this game in a very unfair. What about a thousand clips? Yeah, Is it, it, fair would then? it would be really clips. easy. Yeah. What if someone collected literally 5,000 fucking clips of things going wrong in this game for every single possible way you can imagine? What about that? Hmm. <laughs> but why in the world would anyone do that? It's not like hating on something gets a lot of engagement stop. and stop. Stop why doing this, oh, come man. On. Okay, come we'll on. just throw it back. Manage. You could do it in both ways, right? You could say uh, you're only praising <sighs> it to get the the clicks for praising it. And then you, you could also say you're only middle of the roading it to try and benefit from both sides of the conversation. It's like, yeah, you could do this with everything. Fuck off. Boring. Boring, boring, boring. Oh, if you spend more than five minutes in Star Wars Outlaws, it gets you'll worse. see that there's some real passion here. And this is a passion. great Star Wars game. <laughs> Where's so the passion? Tell me where a the passion great is. great Star Wars game. The great. Oh, I can explain great. where the passion is. You know, you may not have seen these movies, but back in the 50s, they had a Star Wars film where there was like a Luke Skywalker's protagonist. And his main home is in this game. It's actually in the Tatooine, the planet. <laughs> so they could have not had that in there. But because they had passion, they had that in there. Also oh, Vader. that was. Oh, I didn't. I didn't realize uh, that. I didn't know about uh, that. What did you say his name is, was? There is a quite passionate Vader scene. Uh, this is the point in the video where you should play the whole thing again, just to make sure we understand how passionate yeah. it is. Mm. <laughs> Happens to be a little rough around the edges. I would like to make a, a little, little still, rough around little the edges. Rough around <laughs> this is like slimy at this point. Like, come on, it, you can't well, not we, know. You you've played Theo, this much of the game. Them. You the, have to know. This guy is just like. Uh, I, it, this is a shitty review that is basically lying. It yeah. is completely sweeping all of the problems under the rug. It's not being honest. He said Factor was a restaurant quality meal service. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we go. It's like point one. <laughs> um, it's like the most obvious thing to breach into the I need you to understand this guy's a liar. He's a liar. That's what oh, he is. He don't, is lying don't cry about this game. Um, Star Wars didn't come out in the 50s. It was the 30s. Yeah, sorry. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I think the book was written in the 30s, and then they made the mid-40s movie that had to be delayed because we entered the war. Didn't they? So oh, it wasn't yeah, done until like yeah. I think it wasn't done until 47. 47? They always, that's what that's we always refer to it as, Star Wars 47. Sorry, my bad. In saying, yes, I did get this game early, and frankly, yes, that is awesome. I don't You couldn't do that in one sentence, you fuck? <laughs> Leave him oh, alone, Rex. You've angered, you've him. angered no! the rags. You've we angered need the to rags. Snip this in the bud. We need to ridicule people who can't say one sentence without having to cut and interject. Say <laughs> it's not a, it's not a lot to ask to be able to say one sentence without having to cut and edit yourself. A sentence. It's not much to ask. It really isn't.
enough for that, but this was really fun and I was all over it. But I also did not get paid to talk about the game highly or anything like that. We have to have this conversation again. <laughs> you just get, yeah, right. Yes, we know they didn't well, literally write you a check. He needs to mention how that's illegal, and the, that's why that doesn't happen, is because if mm -hmm. it did happen, it would be not legal, and that's why it doesn't happen. I'm not making a bag off of talking good about this game. As a matter of fact, I'm sure I'm just going to get shit on in the comments. I just to be good, you are a channel with 209,000 subs. You probably make a decent amount of views no matter what you say on it. Um, the fact mm. that this is a contentious title is already going to probably get you a fair amount of clicks mm -hmm. alone. And also, you've kind of been like jerking this game off way too much anyway. When you got a, so. got a free copy sent to him from Ubisoft. So, like, thanks, Ubisoft. Yeah, I was just saying. This fucking. Something he hasn't bait. said, he's only put in text uh, in the intro. I'm just saying. You could maybe, maybe mention this it. This rage bait too. engagement mm -hmm. farming thing is so tiresome. I know it doesn't bear going into too much, but. I just think it's worth remarking on the number of videos you will see pop up in your feed that are like, here's the cool thing you didn't know about X, or like, what makes Y the most special thing in the universe. Just, you know, the exact opposite sort of rage bait stuff, where it's just like, here's something really cool about something you may or may not know anything about whatsoever. That shit's just as popular. Yep. Mm -hmm. Happy bait. Yeah. Just honestly liked this game and i would go so far as to say it's probably my favorite game oh no it's only probably favorite, wait, favorite no, game no. of the year yeah. Hold really? on. favorite game of the oh, year uh, what are we really damn i mean seller blade came out this year what else well, came out i'm this sorry year? astro really bot fucking clears that, this in a heartbeat yeah it's astro really bot is yeah. really really <laughs> great <laughs> Got um, to contend with wukong like, yeah, wukong helldivers yeah. 2 sanjo um, 2 remake oh the new zelda game yeah that's pretty good then the that Prince of Persia year. game come out. Was pretty good. One. And then a new one. Yeah. Space oh, Marine well. Two. Yep. To be fair. Yeah, Space Marine Two. Some people are highlighting. You might not have played anything else. Oh, if, if this was the like only the game that I played this year, therefore, <laughs> therefore, it is an accurate statement. <laughs> <It's a> good... <laughs> well, we can go to his channel and we could do his Fallout London Resident Evil Minecraft user bio. Yeah, he talks about. Just video games, yeah, he gets a lot of views on him. I hope the- I hope- I'm sure his other games are better than this trash fire. Get on in the comments. I just honestly liked this game, and I would go so far as to say it's probably my favorite game this year so far. And this ending Jesus felt Christ, more man. like a beginning to me, and I really hope that they get a chance to do a no sequel, way. because I feel I'd be what the fucking way. I'd be for even more. <laughs> Look, so you're- I'm... I just- I just think you- I just think you're compromised, my dude. I mean, it's I, either, <laughs> either one of two things has happened. You're totally compromised, or you have the shittest opinions ever. I would have gone as far as saying this thing shouldn't have been released to the public yet. It's like an ill-made, spiteful little product. It's not like, like a scam, <laughs> but it's immoral. You know? <laughs> like, it's that line. It's it's not complete. They know it's not complete. They're trying to fix it desperately uh, while also having matched, like, you know expected sales try to boost it up rely ex on people like this making videos like this when the reality is much worse than it's just so funny right star wars outlaws is better than you've been told it's like you're doing fucking propaganda for the game at this point <laughs> basically this is a propaganda video yes for ubisoft <laughs> like that would give them an opportunity to iron out some of the kings. Yeah, man, let's give them another game so they can make an actual game next time. That'd be neat. There let's we go. Cool. Yeah, yeah, they only had four years and $200 million. You know, they just need a second chance to really polish it up and refine their idea. You know, they just, no. you know, just a little indie startup company with a small budget and they had to make it in a rush. Why do they get and licensed would... to just put up these absolute funeral pyres of money? Yeah. I, don't, I don't get it. <laughs> Play the hell out of a sequel. Anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Click the card right here. Watch another one of my videos. Yeah, it's a fucking trash video. Like this one? You should be ashamed of yourself. Let's find out if that's oh, true. Jesus. Thank you for almost 200,000 <laughs> subscribers. That's Snap crazy. Editing, I honestly though. did not think we would get there that quickly. But thank you so much. Please click the other video. Goodbye. So, uh, goodbye. The, uh, the, uh, first of all, the, the video was a plot summary, which is weird. Because who is this is weird. for? Right, like it's not gonna make me want to buy it his now. His relationship with Ubisoft. Yeah, you did spoil forward. the whole story. <laughs> you spoiled yeah, the yeah. whole game. Like 
a 40 hour game is completely spoiled now, right? Why would I pay for this? You've told me everything. And in fact, it was kind of negative, mostly negative. Yeah, all in of the fact. positive stuff, the compliments were like, that's cool. It's cool. That's interesting. Yeah, I like that. it's neat. I love that. Right? And this is the best Star Wars game. Like, this is such a strange video. He even acknowledges at the end that the hate for this game is justified. <laughs> I don't understand this video. Um, he got a free copy. I, but 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 it's like there's no Talking consistency, the and who's the audience? Right, like the person who so wants to watch this is somebody who basically Ruby people soft. very unfamiliar with the game, unfamiliar with the game. They've heard bad things, and then it's like, "Ooh, better than I've been told." I wonder what secret wisdom well, I'm mm -hmm. going to be with about, the, about this game and this video. The appeal to cynically saying, "Like, you know what? You could say, like, yeah, you do the. You guys are just going to rant on the game and not be fair to appeal to people who hate stuff, and, like, and you're going to shill hyper because you just want to shill for the company. Me, on the other hand, I'm going to be reasonable and do a video that gets me access to both." fads like both sides of it <laughs> mm -hmm. it's like why why can't you be seen as the worst one the one that straddles the line doesn't <laughs> actually take a, a, a position ultimately because you don't want to piss off either side instead you want to benefit from either side like yeah it, it feels to me like he knows the game is shit i mean he I said like he said really significant it, parts of it suck yeah right so so well, do you think that he knows the game is shit or do you think that he actually thinks it's good he's just like a big star wars fan he's like oh my god it's amazing and they just didn't it think might, about it it might be the two the, the the two points of he's got extremely low standards or he went in wanting to enjoy it reality be damned um and then the whole or like ubisoft sent me a copy you know the ubisoft wow you know um but I, anyone who watches this is going to be insanely disappointed with the game that they get, and they'll be wondering, why didn't he tell me that I can't carry a gun with me? How, there's, uh, how come there are all these insane limitations? How come the story is actually shit? How come the game looks so the bad? The freezing or the falling through the floor. <laughs> the freezing or the glitch. Yeah, like some of the glitches are, just to remind everyone, this blue screened my PC while I was <laughs> um, <laughs> streaming it. And it was the game's fault this time. It wasn't my weird issue that had just popped up a couple of days ago. But like, yeah, this is... Ah, uh, and you have, to, we... you have to get like Ubisoft Connect and... Uh... We can maybe mention, you know, the game freaking out constantly in this background footage. Oh, the like at all yeah, times, the lighting <laughs> going crazy, all fucked up. Yeah, literally the place. Which they have, they have acknowledged and said that we're fixing with every update. It'll get better. It's like, mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> yeah, it probably it'll won't be get fixed worse. when no one's playing it anymore, which is already <laughs> the case. Yeah, the ten years yep. from now, so we'll be like, I like that Outlaws game. I played it yesterday. It's okay. And you're like, uh, yeah. great. <laughs> Uh, when in this uh, video did you want us to go to, Dave? Right. Uh, 1702. And just watch for like 15 seconds or so. You're okay. Did I hurt you? Even if did you did, you were broken. No, it's me. Without Jalen's restraining bolt functioning, I'm just a battle droid. Infiltrate and terminate. Nothing else. <laughs> that was yeah, see, so that, this is a scene where I thought that, like, basically his personality is is because of the of the bolt, which is why I thought, hey, listen, if you shoot that off, like, you're gonna lose him. I don't get to be honest with you. That is actually scene. kind of a strange line. Yeah, that yeah. is because he weird. makes it, he's explicit nothing else. It's like, well, you know, that's not yeah. true. Even if you did, you were broken. No, it's me. Without Jalen's restraining bolt functioning, I'm just a battle droid. Just a just a battle droid, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Because to be honest with you, yeah, when he's malfunctioning in the in the factory, the restraining bolt should work. Because that's not malfunctioning. It's the his inner workings, so to speak, are malfunctioning. Mm-hmm. Um I'm not hmm. entirely sure what they were thinking with this one, because of course you shoot the bolt off and then he's like normal or rather not loyal to Jalen, so are we supposed to believe maybe that he's like it's a lie Jalen told him? But I, I, I don't think that makes sense. So I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I got nothing for you. I don't know why he said it this, this yeah. way. <laughs> it, just, it just doesn't make sense. Which I'm. We're honest with you. What a lot of things they say in this game doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Put it on the pile. Mm -hmm. Well, that was our uh, second foray. We did it. An EFAP episode into the world of Outlaws. As you can see, we have uh, covered the initial sort of like coping of, of how the game should be taken. And now we've seen a full breakdown of how it's really good and better than you thought. Uh, I wish for the cycle to end because this game is pathetic and worthless. <laughs> but uh, we get we'll get in there, I'm sure. Um, anything else you guys want to say uh, about about Outlaws before we transition over to exiting on this wonderful night? I, I, well, I, I think, I think we've established enough. pretty yeah pretty clearly <laughs> that this is definitely a certified 7 out of 10 video game. <laughs> it's just a wonderfully detestable game because there's very little to say about it at the end of the day. I just always find a lot of you know the fact that we're we're looking to the people who like really like it to defend it. This is this is all like I feel like we do a better job defending the game than they do. The best they seem to be able to muster is description of it, and then like yeah, this guy was constantly he would elaborate upon flaws, but any time it came to a positive, it was the vague description that like sounds really nice. It's the elevator pitch. The used car salesman is like <laughs> he's trying to sell you something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, you know what we can have a look at? Oh, what can we get a oh. look at, Mahler? That thing that was said by Stevie <gasps> Chassard. Stevie Chassard. Uh, what? You remember this? He's the director oh, of this. Ubisoft. So, the monetization director at Ubisoft. I rarely Wait, post on stop, social. Stop, stop. What? He's a Frenchman. You have to read it in a French accent. <laughs> yeah, please do. <laughs> I rarely post on social media, <laughs> but today I am sad, ashamed oh, no. and sad. The oh, gaming no. industry in is rough at the moment. <laughs> we a, all that's know a it. Episode of Efab. We've done but it. But seeing how right. uh, gamers <laughs> react on social medias, wishing ill fates to companies and people alike, <laughs> is sad. Oh, and no, not no, only please. toward Ubisoft, <gasps> even though it is always uh, the vocal <laughs> minority that express themselves on social media, I was helped, helped and shamed to be a part of this community. Shamed. <laughs> what is even more Silence. revolting is coming on LinkedIn and seeing the same commenters from people within the industry. On top of exposing yourself as a clearly non decent human being, you are affecting thousands of employees that are already impacted by the hate despite doing their best to in deliver incredible experiences. How can you wish a company to fail? Simply because they do not cater to you, or that the product does not place you is beyond me. We are all on the same boat. Please, please, please! Stop spreading the hate. We should all uplift each other instead of bringing each other down. <laughs> oh, Get out of my boat. Oh, oh, why are you dude, good at this? Feet. That was oh, incroyable. <laughs> I don't think any French person chat was happy with that. <laughs> I, I, I'm the, the opinions of the French do not concern me. Uh, um, so now I'm going to read this again because I was just laughing. Uh, <laughs> what? I just what? have to read this for myself because I was just laughing about what was happening. <laughs> Listen, it's, it's Stevie Chasered, right? Is He's a really... He just wants the hate to stop. He's, this is a positive message that we should all be mm -hmm. able to get behind. Right? It's not that we made a terrible game and charged you a bunch of yeah. money for it. A bunch of money for it. A bunch of money for it. It's that you guys are just like, we're working hard. Like, yeah, but we, we have, we, this is a financial transaction. We're not mm -hmm. friends. All right? We're not doing favors for each other. We're not bros. You're, you've got a product that you've advertised to me as being a thing. I've given you my money that I had to work for and earn. We're not like pals, no. Stevi Chassard. <laughs> I worked hard on exams in school too, and then I still fail sometimes Aww. because I fucked it up. That's <laughs> 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 just how this works. It, it, it kind of reminds me of, of recently. Um, Velma was canceled, right? That that terrible TV show, the cartoon show, and people were yeah. saying you you shouldn't you shouldn't be laughing at this, even though the show was bad, because animators lost their jobs. And it's like, okay, I understand the empathy. It sucks when animators lose their jobs, but you still made a bad show and it got canceled. Like, yeah. what do you want me to say? Though, like, like, people are not making posts saying, yes, loads of innocent people lost their jobs. <laughs> they're Finally. saying, yes, the shitty show that no one should ever have had to watch is dead. That's what they're talking <laughs> about. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, de definitely. And, and just also the idea that because someone's livelihood is affected, we should just subsidize everything all the time is just it's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, so they got paid for that project. They're just going to move on to another project, right? So they have to yep. find a new one. I don't know how it works in animation work, but isn't that just like I a just, thing where you I think it's uh, pretty disgusting hire people? Mr. Monetization Director at Ubisoft to decide to like hang all of this over the gamers heads. <laughs> Fucking <Yeah>. gamers. <laughs> the gamer. Most oppressed. It, it, That's what we say. It's true. <laughs> yeah. It, it, there's like, there, there's a conversation to be had about, well, how much it, it, like how, how much is it that the game is bad and how much is it that you don't like the game? Because sometimes people say this game sucks and they just don't like a game and it's otherwise good. It's just not for them. That does happen. So I understand it. But this conflation between the two is it has has been ridiculous now for at least a decade, well, if not longer. As well, you know, like the whole how can you wish a company to fail simply because they do not cater to you or the product does not please you? It's like, would you wish for a company to fail, let's say a restaurant that was selling rotted food? I would. I would <laughs> yes. hope they fail. <laughs> I would really want rotted them to fail. The news upon them you, failing, I'd be like, yes! And then you go, didn't you know... people who love rotted food? <laughs> you know, Billy yeah. Bob over in but, that restaurant, the janitor, he was great, he was working real hard, now he's lost his job. I'd be like, yeah, that, yeah, I guess so. Sucks. Go get a different job. A better Maybe place. they should have thought about that before <laughs> making a terrible product that would get him fired. It's not my obligation. It is. The, it's not my obligation as an audience member or as a consumer to keep people employed. It is within the best interest and the obligation, far more so, of the employer to keep their employees employed. The employee. Employee? I don't even disagree with you there, Rags. I, I, I think, you know, empathy makes sense. I'm sad that somebody lost their job, you know, as much as I am that uh, I'm sad about any other person experiencing, you know, some sort of misery. Uh, but yeah, if you made something bad, then that just kind of is what it is, my guy. Like, yep. you made a bad thing, and you got the consequences of that bad. Well, now thing. no one, no one can get fired ever, right? Like, so, exactly. like so bad. Pro so no <clears throat> one can get fired for making bad, shitty products ever again. Because think of the employees. You, you also might be the worst There's... person ever to make this point. When people say, see, monetization director at Ubisoft, everyone's automatically like, <laughs> first of all, I didn't even know that fucking role existed necessarily, but now I hate it. And I hate Oh, you. yeah, by the way, monetization director at Ubisoft, yeah, I do hope you get fired and never get a job <laughs> in the industry again, actually. I hope you fall in the, what's the river in... Sticks. Paris, the sticks. The I hope sticks. you fall in the river. I thought about sticks as well immediately. I don't know. Hope you fall I hope into you the, fall river. In the sticks. fucking river sticks. <laughs> so there, there's like there's a long, lame political conversation underneath all of this, but like the the, the TLDR of it basically is people. The way some of these people think is you shouldn't be getting fired because your product sucks. You should be getting fired because you have the wrong political views, which is and we've seen that happen before. So. That's that's basically where this goes. If you if you dig down deep enough, poor guy must have gotten so many messages about how shit the game was. <laughs> how shit the industry that helps to produce it is. Well, you, I mean, I don't. Know, there's just no excuses. Yeah, you had four probably four or so years. You had two hundred million dollars to make a video game. Like, if you can't, if you guys can't make a good game with that, then you just shouldn't be making games. I don't know. I don't know what oh, else. Right, to say. Right. You shouldn't had, be making games. Had the Sarlacc pit in it. Had Boba Fett. Oh yeah. Vader. It had Luke Skywalker's house. Oh, Vader. Vader. Who, who's that? Who's you know, it didn't even. That? It, it didn't commit. It should have had the charred corpses of Owen and Aunt Beru. <laughs> just still, just still, laying <laughs> still skeletons. Yeah. <laughs> and you can, can clean this up. You can like, no collect way. This them. Looks nasty. And they could be your costumes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can. Yeah. You can put like a. You can put like a skull on Nyx. Yeah. He's, he's got like Aunt Beru's skull on his. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Like a Q bone. Uh, I would have pushed to a uh, yeah. two out of ten for me. Easily would have pushed it, yeah. Easily. Too. So while, while Rags was seven word is. while Rags was disconnected and we went over that that magazine article that I pulled up. The, the, oh. the fact that they that they spent that much money making a Nyx model or like a Nyx puppet to puppeteer mm -hmm. around and then get the mocap off of the puppet to make it seem puppet like, right? Like there's, when you when you listen to that sentence or that idea, you're just thinking how much fucking money was wasted to do this. You could just like make an animal, 
in well, in your computer. You know what I mean? One of the like, one like, of the things that you could do is um, when Daisy added a whole bunch of animals because they're Bohemian Interactive, they don't typically do that sort of thing. Oftentimes, mm -hmm. they outsource the animal animations and behavior to people who were more experienced with it, and so that's why the animals' animations and behavior is really good in the game because they were like, oh, this we know our limitations. We can use our, our money to hire people for this particular project and credit them and add it, you know, to the game. So this is an interesting path to doing that, I guess. Kind of weird, um, but I guess that's the thing. I don't know how much that sort of thing does cost. Does the article say how much that cost for them to do that? It doesn't. No, this is it was a, it was an article just like how the game was made that someone had sent me uh, while you were DC'd. And I, I skimmed through it for a couple interesting points, and I, I settled on that one because it just sounded so ridiculous. Like, let, let's make a Jim Henson model and then mocap the model and put it in the game. Like, what the fuck are you doing with your money? Well, Rolling out the window. Yeah, well, the thing is, though, like, did they actually make... It wasn't animatronic, it was just a puppet. Because the thing is, he doesn't move like a puppet in the game. That's what um, Spring was if, bringing up before, yeah, as well. Yeah. I don't think he yeah. moves like a puppet at all. His animations are not puppet-like. They're, I mean, animal-like, like a skittish, like a critter. So yeah. so maybe they, they spent, like, a year trying to get that shit to work and they just abandoned it? I don't know. I'd be curious. To and they just have a puppet now in the corner of the office? It's like, oh, okay. Um... All right, I did find this. I, I did find this as well in the article. I'll, I'd, rather than having you look at the whole thing, I'll just zoomed into the one part. Um, the developers compared the character to... Not just Han Solo, but Indiana Jones, James Bond, and Jack Sparrow. Yeah, <laughs> I've read this one before as well. Who, who, wait, who remember uh, that? When, when, you're, when you think of a scoundrel, your mind goes to Han Solo, goes to Lando, goes to Indiana Jones, James Bond, Sparrow. Those were all inspirations here. But yeah, Massive just... needed to find a fresh niche. Its answer was someone a little bit more relatable. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing relatable about, about k -Vest. Like, I, I guess it's like, I know what it's like to have arms i guess and a nose so but mm. but like i i don't want to be con you don't want to create that disconnect between you and the character you're controlling like oh walk is obviously gonna betray you he's evil bad vibes shoot him or kick him away get be, be done with him don't cooperate with him he's obviously up to no good you're, you're screaming this at the character but you're just like nope sorry you you are totally mm -hmm. on the rails of k's stupid decisions her constant stupid decisions Mm -hmm. Can we can we also talk about how you're the uh, quote this little fish in a colossal pond dealing with sharks and barracudas? But in this case, because of the way the game works out, you're a little fish with a rail gun. Yeah. <laughs> you just yeah. shoot yep. the sharks and barracudas. They can't yep. do anything to you in game terms. Also, I'm really tired of this shit where it's like, hey Vess, you know, I want to make it like a Han Solo, and a Lando, Indiana Jones, James Bond, Jack Sparrow. You're like, what the fuck are you doing? You can't have all of them. What are you talking about? <laughs> you mainly you, you want to be one of them, maybe with like a variant of how you'd want the character to look. But it's like imagine combining Indiana Jones and Jack Sparrow and James Bond. Like what? <laughs> what does that look like? I don't know. Apparently, K Vess. <laughs> K Vess. Yeah. Okay. Sure. 100%. You know, because because she's so clever and charismatic and witty and has a fun boat. and uh. Uh, they're all protagonists <laughs> so the only just thing said, she's good at by the is way, like all gameplay male, like the player stuff references a single <laughs> female oh, yeah. character whoops hmm. Hmm. well it worked out great yes yeah, so uh, I mm -hmm. think yeah. they did a, yeah. Really yeah. a game yeah. of all time they did it okay the way that they did it right sure I don't think you sure thing you don't, sound, you don't sound very enthusiastic um, I, um, that's your thing, man. There I, we go. Uh, wow, man. K Vest, the, one of the characters of my favorite times of Earth. Yeah, there you go. Well, one of my favorite eat, times of Earth. Eat Factor. I believe him. Eat Factor. True. <laughs> eat Factor. Eat factor. <laughs> yeah. It's a Do restaurant that. quality meal that you can refrigerate in your, your in, or you microwave in your very own kitchen. <laughs> It's like going to a restaurant, you peel the plastic wow. off the top, and it's like, ah, uh, it's just like, um, what's a famous restaurant? Um, Gusto's. Gusto's? Yeah, it's a famous <laughs> restaurant. Well, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. 
So, um, well, before we go, why don't we have a chat here with all of our guest arenas, see what they're up to. Theo, have you, have you, been, have you made another video? Oh, look at you. I did uh, video uh, making. An, another what? video like uh, a week ago or so. It's about a little case study from a Joseph Anderson video about Darkest Dungeon, about variants, you know, stuff like that. Um, you give it a watch. Uh, I think it was pretty cool. Uh, small little thing, and there's there's more in the pipeline. Further off this time though, so no promises whatsoever. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, darkest dungeon and luck related mechanics aficionados, welcome to check out that video. Good stuff. Metal, what about you? What are you up to? You little you little goblin. Goblin? That's uh, rude. You, you little troll. Whoa, troll goblin! Is that better or worse than goblin? Better, right? I I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, I mean, you you got the four rings of power videos to watch. Obviously, uh, number five is on the way. Uh, work's been kicking my ass, so this is going a bit slower than I would like to. But hopefully, that's gonna come out very soon. Uh, I'm currently playing Silent Hill Two Remake. Uh, I'm gonna be finishing that tomorrow. At least that's a plan. That's still a bunch of game left but i'm gonna start nice and early so yeah no forge tomorrow uh something came up for mark so we had to move it by a week wow, uh yeah i know right uh yeah the, the the this was supposed to be terrifier 3 that's gonna be next week then so but you can go check out the forge from last week which was on terrifier 1 and 2 wow so if you uh want some some commentary on that we we did a whole stream on it it was great it was fun stuff go check it out and, uh, yeah, only about 250 subs away from 10,000. So Yo! I'm very excited for that. So subscribe. Yeah, there you go. There's my Metal blog. Metal gets to 10,000 subs. He will stream Star Wars Outlaws. Naked. No, not again. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Damn it. Don't give them ideas. But, yeah, with the 10,000, that guarantees uh, everyone here to see a Dark Souls 2 stream with me oh. and Mahler, actually. Oh, my goodness. Oh, You're it. dragging Mahler into All it, too. To oh, no. Yeah, that's been the plan for a very long time <laughs> to do that. Like so four years or something. <laughs> yeah, for, for a while. And now I started making videos. And <laughs> would, would you believe it? People start subscribing when you have content on your channel. So that, <gasps> that's yeah. insane. Crazy. I found Can't the secret confirm. to YouTube, guys. Just make videos. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, that's that's happening. Long stream tomorrow, uh, and then back to the editing minds with Rings of Power. So hopefully, I'll get that all done because I I'm sick of Rings of Power. I don't mm -hmm. want to do it anymore. <laughs> all right, Mrs. Borealis, yeah, what is this that you're up to? Hmm? Yeah, not a whole lot. Um, wow. I've got I've got a whole bunch of content I'm working on, but um, I am. I'm going to get sued over one of these, so I'm being very careful about it. Um, but I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be very interesting. And I think I'm going to, um, I think people are going to know me from this one. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get sued. Ooh, oh, you better not I'm big time us something once, meme once you've made here. it, once you're in Hollywood, you best not, best pick up the phone. Yeah, no, like, I think I think this is the big one for me, um, but I'm actually. He's about to make a name for himself. I'm actually going to get sued. <laughs> How could you? Oh no! How could you not do the Cajun accent, Rags? You got to throw that in when you do that line. Um, well, that's really more of a French accent, like a, a French Creole accent. So maybe you should do it because you have experience with the French accents and you're really good at it. It was so good. It was perfect. It was I mean, the yeah, best but French I want to hear you do. I've it. Ever heard. Like the like he says in the movie. Do it. He says, "Oh, I'm about to make myself a." I'm about to make a name for my name for my myself. Make myself a name for myself. Mata make a make a name for myself. I'm about to make a name for myself. Would you like some crawfish? That is the second best French accent I've heard today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I made that to make a name for myself. <laughs> you see what I'm doing? Well, <laughs> welcome to the <laughs> muted. I'm sense. about to make myself a name for myself. Are we are about to finish this stream. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh no, the the connection it is it is dropped. <laughs> oh, no, my internet. <laughs> ah no, it, it is taking a dump on this game. 
Ew, a dimp. Well, that a sounds dimp. very excited. We will be sure to let people know <laughs> when this controversial video comes out and when you go to jail. We'll be like, hey, we can call you from there. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dev, what about you? So, since I'm a political guy and the election is two and a half weeks away, I think, I'm doing nothing but politics content. Oh, the election's is... coming up, is it? Yep. Yep. So, I mean, I mean, like, after the election, I'm going to have, like, the Dustborn videos kind of in the chamber and ready to go, and I'm probably going to do a video on this game, Star Wars Outlaws, and, you know, other fun stuff, but right now it's all election content. Um, I did a vi My most recent video was on Bayesian inference, which is not even an election topic, but I think it's important to put out because it's just, uh, you know, how, how to think critically, you know, in a, in a scientific way. Oh, I thought it was, like, so a city like a in Star Wars or something. But okay. Oh. I really I liked nope. your last video about the the the, the, the Bayesian stuff. Yeah, I I thought that oh, was a really you. good video. I think it's a very useful video, just in general, for people to look at, to keep in mind as they think and look for information and try to arrive at the close, you know, the best conclusions they can, and to be able to amend their thinking as they go. I think it's a good thing to put out there. It, it's it's like a it's a video. It's like a, it's like a set of tools on basically just how to examine evidence. You know, so. Mm -hmm. I'll put that out there. And the reason I did that specifically is because my next video, which is about 80% complete, is going to be on the validity of the 2020 election. So I wanted to basically, you know, lay out the tools that I use to analyze evidence, and I'm going to lay out the evidence in the next video. So for me, it's all politics content, which is not quite the wheelhouse of EFAP. But after that, I'll be doing video game stuff. Beautiful. Ooh, video games. Wonderful. And non-controversial, of course. Rags and Fringy, what about you guys? Anything you guys want to mention? <laughs> Any politics um, coming up? <laughs> I'm work working on a new video. Hopefully, trying to get at least one done before November. Maybe two. Mm. Um, but uh, I'm going to try to go for one. Uh, then I'm going to do a bunker stream sometime yeah. around yeah, Halloween. Baby. Amnesia, the bunker. Um, hopefully, this weird computer issue will not affect my rendering because it used to do that or it's a similar issue used to affect being able to render things. Uh, but hopefully that won't be a problem, but I've got some people, a friend of mine who can probably help out a great deal. So fingers crossed, but at least I can work on videos and that process isn't um, going to be affected by this. So um, yeah, hopefully a video before November and then uh, the bunker stream. Then again, if I can't fix this fucking issue, I can't play games. Because I'll crash or blue screen all the time. So Let's hopefully think optimistically. Woo! Fixed. Yay! We're gonna play it. Yeah, yay, I, I, I plan on it. I plan on it. I've got it fixed before. So. Ba, ba, da, ba. Ne, 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 ne. Uh oh yeah right. Uh, I'm just, I'm just working. Uh, but yeah, I'll be playing Emnes of the Dark Descent at some point this month. Don't know when yet, because now I'm playing oh, Astro yeah. Bot at the moment. So I want to beat that first and then do that. So yay, you know, yeah, I was Astro Bot. Yeah. Well, I only played it for about three hours, but I have nothing bad to say about it at all. It's all positive. It's, like, exclusively positive. I had nothing but fun with that game. Nice. Which is nice, as a change of pace from having played Outlaws. <laughs> I got some fun games in the, in, the, in the chamber for when I'm done with the Halloween stuff. Got Astro Bot, got Wukong, gotta play all those. Yeah. It's going to be fun stuff. It's gaming ahead. Well, before we go, everyone, you should be made aware, if you weren't already aware, because awareness is all over the place with these wonderful little guys, but maybe you, you truly missed all of it. We are doing plushes for the wonderful month of Halloween. Yeah, month. Yeah. Yeah, month. Halloween yes. month. It's, 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 it's yeah. how it works. Um, here they are. Look at them. Beautiful set. Uh, you, oh, yeah. Access to a whole variety of horrifying and cuddly monsters. Um, creatures. That's probably the nice way to put it, right? Because I'd be happily call myself a monster. Wolf probably as well. But I don't know if the raven would want to be considered a monster. And then Rag's probably like, no, nah, like I'm a cuddly little doggo. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just a dog and a yeah. pumpkin. I'm just a fun dog and a pumpkin <laughs> having a great time. I love autumn. It's wonderful. Gourds are amazing clothing. Now, something I want to make people um, aware of, because I've shown it on other streams at this point, is uh, people wondering what the original Wolf version looked like. And he's been dubbed, lovingly, uh, Derp Wolf at this point. 
Thought we would, uh... <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> I, they actually made a prototype of it too. That's right. There Look he is. Uh, so there this was is. their first uh, result, and of course we were like, some some notes, <laughs> some some notes we want to give you. There were a few <laughs> asterisks on our some changes That's to be funny. made. You know, but, uh, yeah, it worked out a little different. This this guy, he's uh, he's in our hearts. But he's not in the store. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> we couldn't quite make it. But you know what? Uh, it, it's it's just a wonderful little journey he went on to become the much more handsome werewolf you the see before you The man he is now. today. Yes. The werewolf he is today. Now, do you, grabbing... uh, do you have one of those, actually? <laughs> no, I don't think anyone has that. Um, so. Oh, okay. If... Oh, maybe we should email him and say, "Hey, if you still have, if you haven't thrown it in the incinerator, um, <laughs> you should. Could you like send that to us? Because we auctioned it off name. as like a charity thing. <laughs> Dip wolf, the proto prototype <laughs> dirt wolf. Um, yeah, unironically, email him and ask him uh, if they I want to ask, do that. Yeah, I could ask. Yeah, I could ask about it. Uh, yeah, ask him. So, with the way these work, is you can pick one up if you'd like, but if you pick a second one up, like two at the same time, you get five percent off, and then three, you get ten. Four, you get fifteen. Getting all five together gives you 25% off, and that Sizable discount. adds to the overall units sold. That, and I have this on pretty good word, okay? If each of the plushies, the four here, get to 1,000 units, which they're well on the way to, Wolf is going to do a playthrough of Lord of Ring Golem on stream. A game that he feverishly wanted to avoid, but has decided this yeah. would probably be a fun thing to attach. Rags has said he'll do the same if the hoodie reaches 1,000 units, which is oh uh, well on the way to as well. And then, uh, yeah, if the hoodie gets to 1,000 the bounties. I'll stream, uh, I'll stream Gollum. <laughs> and not to speak, Fufring, I believe you have your uh, version of this as well. Wow, well, initially it was 1,500 uh, for the whole set, and I'll play Gollum, but I'm feeling generous, so now it's going to be 1,250 of each for the whole set. So the whole set gets to... 1,250, or, you know, 1,250. It's, I've noticed it's a very long, like, word to describe a number. But in any case, <laughs> if the whole set reaches 1,250, then I'll play Gollum on stream. Holy shit, some of Gollum so content. Nice. I'm so kind. I'm being generous here. Uh, for those who did not know, because of course the, uh, we did full playthroughs of uh, Outlaws, as has been part of the reason why we were doing these videos as well, is these episodes. And uh, Rags, Theory, myself, Bringy, and Metal's playthroughs all got uh, put into a supercut made by Joe Danger that's um, available if you guys want to check it out. I've uh, chatted with him, and I've said, would he be interested in doing one when the Gollum streams eventually arrive? We'll likely <laughs> watch that one on, uh, on an evening episode. I'm also um, I'm in the process of commissioning, right? So we're gonna try and we're gonna see about moving the uh, the outlaw supercut over to Mueller, and then I can just get him to make supercuts of other things, hopefully. So uh, sick. Because I don't know if I have the time with some other stuff I'm up to, but yes, the yeah. supercut is that's, rather that's, hilarious. I started watching it. I watched like a, a bit of it, and it's pretty pretty good. It's pretty good stuff. Yes. Um. So yeah, all of that on the way. If we can just uh, pump those numbers, as Matthew McConaughey would say, you gotta. The numbers and uh, boom, one two five zero, as was mentioned, and you get three new playthroughs of Lord of Ring Golem because me and Mel never have to do that again. No, but uh, I have you said, got your own thing that you're doing, right? Yeah. Well, Dark Souls Two is going to be more miserable <laughs> than Lord of Ring Golem, I guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we're gonna we're gonna be sitting in the same right. room. We're gonna get drunk. It's gonna be great. It's yeah. It's gonna be more fantastic. than one night. We're not doing that in one. It's gonna take forever. Yeah. Yeah. To kill yeah. Oh, we're gonna have to do a DLC. <laughs> oh, shit. On <laughs> ahead. Well, that's about that. Link in the description to the EFAP set if you want to check it out. And um, well, before we go, mm -hmm. is there anything else anyone wants to say before we bottle off? Don't know. You know, I, I got nothing. nothing. I think I'm done. I think I'm done. Well, all right. Set you it. got um, next Elm Street is. Uh, Wes Craven's new nightmare, then Freddy vs. Jason. In between, you're gonna get, um, we've got another few catch ups coming out. We're trying to get them recorded along with recording next year's arc, along with recording some other stuff for the next days that are on the way. You know how it goes, <clears throat> lots of stuff, but uh, oh yeah, it's probably worth mentioning where uh, once October's cleared, we'll be doing Agatha on the 2nd of November, the second half, and then I think we're, uh, we're gonna try and take a week off, all right? We can, um, 
do Excited something to see other than, than you guys actually taking a day off. Yeah, well, I'm I'm actually <laughs> going to try and I think take the week off, as in I probably won't be on Real BBC, Open Bar, or EFAP that week. Because oh October's been a little heavy. I'm going to be honest with you. What are you going to even do with hours? yourself? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I might stare out a window. I'm not going to go outside. <laughs> oh, is this the outside? <laughs> Just open Is the there Star Wars bit. out there? Go... <laughs> <laughs> There's no Star Wars outside, Bob. What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> but uh, yeah, all right. Well, thank you all so much. Oh, Arcane is going to be the fifteenth, so we're okay. Oh, but unless my baby. wait, is that right? That is right, isn't it? That means that that'll line up fine. The that will be the second week, I believe. Is that no, that yeah. without yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. So that's that's fine. It'll be chill. Well, don't worry. We'll we'll we're covering the fuck out of that. Don't you worry. Oh, yes. <laughs> Ain't no way right. they're stopping us from covering arcade. Okay. No. Nobody. <laughs> uh, there we, yeah. Okay. Anyway, we're gonna be yapping about it regardless. <laughs> well, yes, yapping will be had. So, thank you all so much. We're gonna head out now. Bye bye. Bye everybody. Bye everyone. Bye. 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 bye.